are hopefully live. And today's episode is all about Fallout. I've watched the first three episodes. It's been an amazing first three episodes. Man, oh. Scotty, thanks, <laughs> thanks for tuning me into that show. Are we, are we going to do a Fallout episode? I mean, I, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Let's do it. Um, because I, I too really, really liked it. My chat, my chat's not working. Uh, that's, I, it doesn't matter. You have to pin all the pin all the chat. I can see yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I just working. can't. I can't see Kick. Oh, I see YouTube on mine. I didn't see any Kick on on there either yet. Hmm. Is Kick on? No. Oh yeah, yeah. No, oh, we, are we you are on, on Facebook both. again. No, no, no. We're we're on we're on on both. That's cool. Uh, there's just something going wrong my end, but I'll I'll work that out as we uh, as we as we go along. So welcome, hello everyone, hello guys, cast, hello hello, cast and crew. Oh, hi. Uh, we got an unexpected unexpected late joiner who no one will like not already be familiar with. But Majay, how are you doing? I'm tired, but trying to stay up and uh, glad for the distraction. If I'm honest. Yeah, well, I mean, you uh, you got your invite about 15 minutes ago, didn't you? <laughs> I was like, oh, hello, Jay. How are you? Do you want to come on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, normally it's, uh, I'm going to bed now, leave me alone. Um, but, you know, tonight, slightly different. Cool, cool. And Carrot, obviously, we had a very extensive introduction into you in the last episode. So that's why it was like, no, we need to get Carrot back and we need to now really go in hard on a topic without too much fluff so how are you doing i am grand i i finally got bloody fallen rush on my hunter only three weeks before the end of the bloody expansion but i got it so i'm happy and that's my hunter pretty much done now cool but uh, yeah that's that's me i'm just happy i got the bloody crossbow at long last <laughs> and, and go how are you Oh, I've been scrolling through the YouTube comments as always, and the hmm. biggest thing that I've seen about Carrot was no. Everybody loved everything Carrot had to say, except for that he started playing WoW at four years old. Nobody can fucking believe it. Everybody's like, "No, no, there's there's no shot." The thing with that is when you say you started playing at four, people think you landed, ran all the way to max level, started raiding, cleared all the content, and was some sort of PVE god. I wasn't. I was a proxy four-year-old running around a hunter, taming pets and gathering mounts. And I didn't start raiding properly until the end of TBC. Well, I say properly. I pugged a few random raids. And guild raiding wasn't until, like, casually. So, yeah, like, I did start at four. I wasn't doing what I'm doing now at the age of four. It... <laughs> Well, thanks for clarifying, because it, it was bothering me. I was like, man, like you guys watched this whole show, and that's what you had to comment about? Was he four-year-old? Like, come on. Is that, is that, what, is that what the majority of the comments were, were they? <laughs> at, at least 90%. <laughs> well, enough, my missus pointed that out, because she was watching downstairs. Um, and she was like, oh, yeah, someone pointed out that, um, you know, you started at, at the age of four, and they couldn't believe it. And I was like, well, believe it. You've met my dad. You know exactly what I started doing at four. And it was this. And yeah, it was, it was one of those things. My dad let me play any sort of game that he had, which he kind of really shouldn't. I mean, I was playing GTA San Andreas, which of the time maybe shouldn't have been, but it was just like, oh, I'm playing that game. There's the controller. I'm going away now. And that was just kind of it with WoW. I saw it on the screen. I was like, I want to play that. And I did. Yeah, I, I, I believe and, it. Yeah. I believe it, mate. Because when I was four, I, I was. I did too. Yeah, I, I, when I was four, I was working two jobs and starting a business. So. <laughs> you know, like uh, the fact that you was playing WoW, well, I, I, to I totally get it. Uh, two, hang on. Oh, no, no, because I got my third job when I was six. Yeah, so I was only working two jobs, uh, four, but... <laughs> Smoking 40 a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it was a stress... One of the jobs was particularly stressful. <laughs> yeah, I was doing like a bottle of gin and 40 fags a day. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> at four. But that's just, that was just how I rolled, and I've not changed since, apart from I don't smoke anymore. Outside of that, nothing's changed. Uh, cool. Four-year-olds are just built different nowadays. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not as hardcore as we was when we was four. Uh, let's right again, guys that are watching live, or if you're watching the vod back, I don't want you to panic. Tonight is not going to be one of those podcasts where we sit and just have a general chat for you know two hours. We we want to get into the information quite quickly, but obviously. I personally want to know what these guys have been doing. And like, so we'll do a quick round of table, maybe five, 10 minutes max. 
to, to see what we've been doing, especially like regarding the beta. I'm more bothered about Cata than anything else, but if you've been playing Season of Discovery, it's not a banned word here. Like like Cataclysm is on the Season of Discovery podcast. You can talk about it as much as you want, but I want us to keep it brief. Um, again, that, that gives us five, ten minutes to get more people in, ready for when we actually start on the first, on the first class. Um, but before we just get into that, go slightly different format tonight um and but we're not really slightly different format but you know we're gonna decide what classes we talk about right like do you want to just explain that yeah so uh super chats during the show is how you can show your support hitting the thumbs up button as always you guys know the drill but if you are, want to like if you're here for a couple minutes and you're like oh man i really wish they would talk about this class then any super chat goes towards that class so if it's a dollar, it I'll, I'll I have a little notepad over here. I'll put mage has one dollar. Whatever has the highest when we get through the class that we're on, that'll be the class that we go on to next. So if you're really wanting to hear what we have to say about the class that you are interested in playing, then that's how you can uh, get us to get there ASAP. Yeah. So, but but if not, again, there's no pressure. Don't super chat. You haven't got. To. We're gonna get through all the classes and we're gonna give you a good overview of the big systematic changes for each class, the big new abilities that get added for each class. And I would guess sort of 12, 13 minutes ish on each class. So yes, we're not going to, it's not a deep dive. We're not going to go in huge detail, but like go said, if like we're talking about Hunter and you're like, man, why ain't they spoke about Paladin next? If you put, if you put a super chat in, you can ask a question in the super chat, but just make sure you mention a class in it as well. So you could say, Hey Scott, why are you such an irritating prick? And then in brackets, you could put druid, you know, like whatever. So you can ask a question and get us to move on to your class. Uh, again, a bit different and like you haven't got to. No pressure. We're going to get through them all anyway. And I will actually try to timestamp this one because I think this is quite an important one, if I'm completely Ooh. honest. Yeah, I, I will go out of my way tomorrow to timestamp exactly when we're talking about each class because, yeah, like I, I do think we're going to cover a lot that you'll see in the ultimate class picking guide. You know, so well, I channeled my inner carrot there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. And we've got our first one already. Talk about rogues right now. So we've got 10, 10 minutes max while we just have a little chat. And this is the perfect time. So at the moment, rogue will be the first class we talk about. Cool. Uh, let's start with... Uh, sorry, go. Was there anything else you wanted to add at the intro? Was that cool? I think that was it. I think we covered it all. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, Paladin show tomorrow. If people are just hanging out for a little bit, don't uh, come back tomorrow for Paladin part two. With subtle, gonna be awesome. Really looking forward to it. Shaman, shaman. I mean, we've got Jay here. We've got to talk about shaman while Jay's here. Jay's only here for two hours, but I don't mean the show's only going to be two hours. We will go into all the classes are done. But J Jay has got two hours. And Jay, tell us about your week and why you've only got two hours, you weird Final Fantasy fourteen playing uh, uh, person. <laughs> uh, well, I fancy doing some actual hard content, so I've played a different game. Uh, like, I'm just... Nice. <laughs> I I'm trying not to burn myself out with WoW. I'm really looking forward to Kata, and I want to kind of come back with a bit of fresh energy, so... You know, I've just taken... I'm not, like, breaking. I'm still playing it, but just not going hard in well at the moment. I've uh, just been working on my Priest as my second character, which I'm super enjoying, a lot more than I thought I'd be enjoying. Um, and so ready for pre-patch to come out so I can heal properly and, you know, beat people on DPS meters. But aside from that, like I said, just um, working on Final Fantasy, really. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, Carrot, what, what, what have you been up to? Uh, beta, a fair bit. Well, trying to with these constant uh, outages and whatnot. I want to try and get into the dungeon. Started trying to get some footage for that today and ended up wasting about three or four hours doing it because you can't find a bloody group. And when I finally got into one, the tank pissed off after the first boss and we couldn't find a replacement. So I was like, well, sod this. I'm going to go and play uh wrath before i kill someone um and there i'm just gearing up and sort of prepping my mage and my rogue who are going to be replacing my hunter and my paladin as my main ult okay um and have you found it really irritating that for example two days ago 
uh, the beta went down for nearly 24 hours and then it came back up without an update. Did, did that bother you at all? Or was you like, oh, this is this is cool? Oh, I was massively peeved. <laughs> Molding, mate. <laughs> I just... <laughs> There were nothing bloody changed as far as I could see. Like, I thought there might be something, just something, a little bit, just a teeny tiny. Okay, well, this works now. No, not a sod in thing. It's like, well, what, 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 what was the purpose of 26 hours of outage? Is that because they didn't realise it was broken for 26 hours, or...? It looked, it looked that way to me, I've got to be honest. It, it did look that way. Um, and again, just one of the most irritating things, and I've looked right now just to make sure that I'm not wrong. Um, the update that they did do has now been live for, you know, over 24 hours, and there's still no blue notes actually, you know, telling us what they physically done. I mean, I know most of what they done, because obviously every time the beta gets an update, I'm on and I'm like, right, what is this working? Is that working? How does this work? So... I know they've done class fixes, um, not completely, as in like, I'll use Mage as an example, they fixed it where Fire Blast would now spread dots, but it wouldn't spread Ignite, so that so it was still only half working, uh, Combustion's still not working, um, you know, I'm still, I'm still questioning whether Haste is working properly on dots, dots are not critting, like, th there's... They're still like, but but they are actually actively. It's been a big week for Cat. Let's be honest. You know that, that I want to put it out straight away. We've had pre patch announced, the release announced, the server been down twice, and multiple updates. Even though the I still don't get the twenty four hour downtime. Like what I don't know what they was doing. Um, but like overall, it's good to see that they have actually started to do stuff. You know, we're seeing mm. results. Um, my worry is now it's the weekend and we're going to see absolutely nothing. And now we're going to be waiting till Monday for anything else to change. And, you know, every, every time we reach a Monday, this sounds ridiculous, but bear with me. Every time we reach a Monday, that's another week gone. You know, that weekend where things could have actually been being fixed. It's like well, nothing's being worked on and we're getting very, very, very scarily close to pre-patch. Uh, so... But we spoke about that extensively in the last podcast, so we, like, we don't need to worry about that too much. Um, so, go. what have you been doing? Well, I, I did hop on the beta myself, and I won't drag this on, but just to check to see some things that I've been trying to test, which is quests. The Deep Home quest still bugged, and as soon as that was bugged, I was like, well, what if the Stone Talent quest even is still bugged? So I, I'm kind of half curious to re-level a tune up to Stone Talent, and see if that quest where like you're shooting stuff down, if that's even still bugged. Because if that's bugged, that that'd be insane. But uh, I've been playing a little bit of sod. Did a couple battlegrounds. Uh, did a little bit of RP last night. Well, it's uh, yeah, a little little RP in last night. I'm I'm on an RP PVP server, I think. So yeah, I did, I did a little RP. Carrot got me inspired the other day because he's <laughs> the biggest RP guest that we've had on the show. So I was like, I oh, gotta definitely. I got to put myself in carrot shoes, and those are some weird pointy shoes to fill. But I, I filled them, I think. And we were mostly naked blue dwarf. Mm, I was fully clothed in moonkin form, so I was fully feathered, and RP walked from the horde uh, flight path in hinterlands all the way to Orgrimmar by um, way of the zeppelin in Tears Fall Glades. <laughs> so I, like, I kind of get when someone joins a stream like this and. Like, they hear something and they're like, man, I don't care about this, and they leave. You know, I get that. I feel like it's a bit weird that, like, I'm the co-host of this podcast and I want to leave. Like, is that is that not a little bit strange? And what else I did was I parsed 99s all the way across the board in ICC, heroic, full clear. It was a speed run. It That's was super my boy. High. It was like 37 minutes, no deaths, immortal ICC, minutes. heroic. What was you Come doing? Was, it, was, was there optional bosses you was killing? Why did it take so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, Zach was the tank, so I mean, ah, he, he got distracted. I, I see, I see. Um, okay, all right. So again, briefly, we're gonna we're gonna move on in a sec. There's there's plenty of people here, so we yeah, I, I won't bore you too much. But just remember, currently we are gonna be covering Shaman first, followed by Rogue. Anytime you do a super chat, make sure you mention a class in there that you want us to talk about next. Your super chats will control the order we do the classes. So at the moment we're doing Shaman, then we're doing Rogue. That Shaman because of Ashley's. Super chat and rogue because of Chebs. So cool. 
What have I been doing? Um, so I've been playing that game that we don't like to talk about uh, on, on the Cat podcast. But yeah, I've been playing Season of Discovery um, off stream. So off stream I've been, and I say off stream specifically because uh, no one wants to watch that shit. So I've been leveling my, my paladin on Hammer Dance. Shout out to Hammer Dance. Been a guest on here a couple of times. Amazing guy. We really, really enjoyed watching his raid. Like... Possibly one of my favourite moments on this podcast ever was watching that raid with Go, because I, I, I you need to just see some of the clips. I, I I'm not going to be able to do the moments justice. Like you need to physically see them, but it was an absolute banger. Loved every minute of it. Um, so I'm leveling a paladin on Lone Wolf, uh, NA. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to be raiding with Hammer Dance uh, in Season of Discovery. So still dipping my toe in Season of Discovery, hoping to be 50 by probably Sunday evening, maybe Monday, depending on how much time I get over the weekend. Uh, and then obviously ev every minute I'm live, I'm either on RAF preparing for Kata or I'm on the Kata beta. been doing a lot of dungeons on my palette, like Rep Paladin and absolutely blasting, like really fun. Uh, not blasting so much on my mage, because there's a lot that don't work still you know that that's part of the reason and the other reason is i'm a terrible mage uh so you know you combine both of those and it's not exactly a recipe for success uh but been yeah but I, i've been having a blast on both even started doing archaeology on on the beta i'm not saying i'm gonna max it but there are some things that i want to test and we've been putting some really good sheets together and stuff as well and shout out to chunk Big Chunk plays on Mancrick. Big, big. Uh, he said, "Well, his name's Chunk, so obviously he's a big guy on the stream." Uh, but he's put together a sheet today, which I'll show you you all briefly now. And this will be public soon. But like, there's some other things we're working on. Well, I say we. I'm doing nothing. I mean, I should probably put that out there. I'm doing nothing about this. It's all Chunk. Um, but a lot of us are, uh, you know, part of our preparation for Cata. We're obviously working on being able to maximize the amount of justice points we can get when we ding. Um, and it's kind of a, a bit of a, a weird one because it's like, well, I can get loads of justice points, but I've still got to go and do heroics to be able to get rep. Uh, but obviously, the more justice points you've got, the more gear you can buy, the quicker those heroics are going to go to get the rep faster than other people and then more or less put the heroics behind you quite quickly. Um, so we're obviously we're we're on the Stonekeeper Shard farm, uh, and this sheet that's put together is best case scenario, which is 150 for a commendation. Worst case scenario is 50. Originally in 4.0.1, they was given 50, but for some reason on Wowpedia and and even in the game files at the moment, in game live now on you know on Kata and on Wowhead wherever you look, they're given 150. So we're like, we're, we've got this calculator put together showing how many Stonekeeper shards you've got to how many, how much honor you're going to get to then how much that will convert into justice points and then rounded, obviously, to, to take into consideration that you need 375 honor to get 250 justice points. And then you can tick off exactly what items you're going to be able to get from the vendor. Uh, and then it will tell you how many shards left that you need, etc. Uh, and also then it takes into consideration guild perks. So if you've got honorable men mention rank one, rank two. So like, this, you know, this will be shared. And again, this seems like one of those things where it's like, ah, Blizzard are going to nerf it. Um, they may, but if they nerf it, it will go down to 50. So yeah, it's not going to be something that gets removed because this is not cheesing something. This is exactly how it's always worked. Uh, but they, you know, I I'm hoping we get 150. It could go down to 50. If it does, the effort that you're putting in is is still not wasted because you're still getting more justice points. You're essentially farming your justice points now rather than having to wait until Cata launches. So um, this will be chucked on the, the same sheet as uh, the, the, the faction order, like the order that you should do the factions in. So it's all going to be in one. And then we're also going to put justice points in there from, from emblems, how much gold you should expect when pre-patch launches, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's going to be... a Pretty big sheet and really user friendly and and for everyone. That was it, really. Uh, and you can buy that for forty nine ninety nine, <laughs> <laughs> or you can click the link and it's completely free. Like your choice, your choice. Uh, cool. But yeah, that's me. Just lo loads of Catabata, loads of Raf, 
a, a lot of sod over the last two days if i'm honest i've played more sod than probably anything even though i've been streaming like eight to ten hours a day but um apparently i don't need sleep sleep is for the week 100 percent. i'll sleep when i'm dead so on that we had two super chats one was from ashley which was um more than what chev's was so we'll go on to shaman if everyone's happy yeah, oh no, sure. not shaman. <laughs> mm. So let's uh, let's let's do it like this. We're going to talk about key new abilities, key new talent, and um, yeah, starting with shaman. Uh, we'll show you it all in game. Uh, and Jay, on the basis out of all of us here, Jay is he is the shaman. Um, you know, like what what are the biggest changes for, for shaman? Why should someone play it? This is like. We get a good 12, 13 minutes on each class where you sell Charmin to somebody. Uh, well, it's because it's the best. Done. Like, you don't need much more than that. Uh, no, okay, like... so Rogue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, like, Resto turns into probably the highest skill cap healer. I know people are going to shout at me for that, but their mastery means that they are... They have the abilities to snipe heals, so they actually need to heal a lot less than other classes because their heals start becoming a lot more pro like a lot stronger uh, when people are low health. So like the age of sniping low health targets is just there for Resto Shaman. They get the incredible like atonement AoE raid healing thing that I don't ever see anyone talk about, but is like actually broken for Resto Shaman. Um, enhancement isn't the best class in the game in terms of DPS, but it plays so goddamn good. Lava Lash hits like an absolute truck. Searing Totem gets changed for a quality of life in so many different ways. Uh, you have some of the highest sustained AoE cleave in the game, just period. And then Elemental is literally just the best range DPS in the game with no exceptions like snapshot in your fire elemental for a two minute cooldown that's like incredibly powerful you have you know re you just are a complete turret you have the most mobility of any caster in the game I say say caster any class in the game you have the most mobility for um shaman in general is just a very good class in all aspects in in car so you uh, you said like if we just go back to the the so we'll start with resto just going back to resto I mean let's talk about some of the so the key abilities and talents that get added uh, because yeah I, I like when you said about enhancement like I, I've been doing eighty five heroics and there was a, a a a random pug enhancement shaman that came in and he was pumping like ap and I mean absolutely pumping and I was like this is this is weird why. Is he not elemental? Like, I, I, it, but it, I mean, he was doing some serious damage. More so, yeah. Again, because you were saying about you know with lava lash spreading, spreading flame shark and you know fire nova totem and all of that. It was more so on heavy cleave AOE fights than single target. But but the damage was pretty ludicrous. Yeah, like a hundred percent. Once they get ramped up and they have fire novas, um, or sorry, flame shocks spread to like every target. Uh, their AoE damage is just insane. And like Fire Nova, I think, is like a six second cooldown. It just hits so hard as well. Um, like the AoE rotation isn't, you can't screw it up and it just does so much damage. Okay, so let's let's go with, um, have, have you, so before we just keep talking to Jay, because again, I know Jay is, you know, a, a, a big Shaman player. Um, like carrot, have you got any any experience with shaman? Like anything you want to add in terms of just what, even what you've experienced with shamans, even on the beta? Um, yeah, well, shaman was actually the the reason of the name carrot. I said uh, last stream my name carrot is because my GM butchered my name. It's my shaman's name. I used to main one, um, elemental, and elemental was very close to being my main for this expansion because it is broke. Um, especially by Firelands, you get the Firelands tier, you are going to be a god among men. But I get what you're saying about enhancement, there is just something about it. It's not going to perform as well, but I'd argue it's even more fun. Because when the 
but it came out the class I leveled was Enhancement Shaman. Oh my god. You just rip things apart. Your auto attacks alone just devastate. But when you do get those flame shocks and whatnot spread around, like you say, it just absolutely obliterates. And I believe Healing Rain is coming in this expansion, which I love that spell. It's kind of one of my most beloved healing spells. Before Classic, the last time I played Shaman was uh, BFA uh, in Mythic Nihilotha, and I was arrested when it was good. There's just something about being this elemental god that rains down rain, literally, to save everyone from totems. It is, it's fun. If you like a lot of buttons, Shaman is really good for that. Uh, and probably one of the, 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 I wouldn't say one of, I'd say potentially the strongest raid cooldown as well that anybody can bring. You Spirit know, if Link. you're a Resto Shaman, yeah, with Spirit Link, it is like, inc again, incredibly, oh, I'm not going to say undervalued because people will soon realize when Kata actually launches how strong it is. But no one's like, oh my God, like we need a Resto Shaman for Spirit Link. But it, it really is that powerful, isn't it, Jay? It's it's a weird cooldown because um, some fights you just won't use it at all. Like, it's just not worth anything. And then other fights, it's like having that one button makes the fight five times easier. Mm. Um, I mean, Chimeron is, is a perfect example in, in the raid in the next tier is, you know, you group up heavy AOE damage, everyone's stacked on top of each other, and it's just a survival phase. Spirit Link is just ridiculously strong during that, whereas other fights where you don't get that stack, it's just not as strong. It's kind so, of like... Uh, sorry. It's just kind of like... Um, oh, what is it? The Paladin one. Divine... DSAC. Divine Protection. Uh, DSAC, that's it. Um, like in Wrath, there are fights you just won't touch it. But there are others, like the Lich King, particularly early on before all the, the buffs and what have you, you rely on those decent. And Spirit Link will be in like a similar position there. Um, and that's what's so fun about it. It's just this little thing in your back pocket that's uber powerful. Yeah. So Spirit Link is it's raid wide, not party wide. So like one totem will equalize everybody's health that stood yeah. near to the totem. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty yeah. crazy. I I would have thought that it was like party wide, but raid wide's nuts. <laughs> Uh, and it's yeah, so the damage reduction have... as well. So it's, it's not just equalizing yeah. your health, it's actually reducing the damage you take as well. So it's like half as powerful as a, as a D-Sack um, in terms of damage reduction, but it's then, yeah, equalizing the raid's health amongst everybody as well, which is what makes we it crazy. To... We used to pair it with, like, Warlock cookies and things because you're just healing the raid with it. Yeah. Like a DK with Rune Tap. Anything you can do to heal during that phase, like when you have Spirit Link down, you're healing the entire raid. Yeah. It, it can genuinely make the difference between like hard fights and easy fights. Yeah, I 100% agree. As I said, I think it's incredibly powerful. Um, so let's. Uh, we, we've just had another super chat. Thank you. So Fire Mage. Uh, is my one true love, but I'd like to hear about Paladin as playing with you on the beta watching your ray. It looks very fun. Uh, cheers, Big Chunk. The, the the creator of that sheet that we was looking at. Um, so at the moment, Paladin is in the lead as the next class we talk about, followed by Rogue. Uh, cheers, Chunk. Uh, okay, now let's, uh, again, we want this to be brief. We want it to be like nice, snappy, go from one to the other. Um, what are the new abilities, like key abilities for Resto Shaman? So we've already touched on Healing Rain. Uh, Spirit Link is obviously it, j just in talents as, anyway. Um, and you mentioned, I'm assuming you were talking about Telerik Currents when you were saying about yeah. like the Atonement style. So the, there's two different like play styles for Resto Shaman in the in the next expansion and one is based heavily around maximizing how hard your healing rain hits while doing the most amount of damage with lightning bolt possible so effectively you just maintain healing rain at all times you can use riptide to like spot heal and you are effectively just dpsing to maintain your mana um and it's incredibly strong like i would argue it's probably the strongest aoe raid healer on any fight that you can stack 
uh, I know that on beta I played a lot of Resto Shaman and oh, I'm sorry on beta on White Main I played a lot of Resto Shaman and any fight where people could get reliably in my healing rain or was stacked in it for the whole fight I was heads above any other healer. Um, you then have like the other raid healing thing which uses a lot more chain heal and, and snipe heals and things like that but you have two different play styles which is also kind of what makes it fun is you can switch between based on what fight you're doing yeah cool yeah and cool. and again yeah i i've healed with you and seen exactly that you have when we're on a stack fight you have zero mana issues as well like you're you're out putting damage you're healing the entire raid and it's like what's mana i'm like oh, i'm cool thanks and i'm like innovate innovate uh four innovate number four for me please i'll have I almost need Gracious to come in and go, oh, Innovate 76 or something, whatever he does. Go on, go. Uh, I was going to switch topics. I didn't want to, and then I realized it, so I didn't want to switch. Because we had, uh, you just went over the main spell changes for Resto. So what, is, what does Ellie have that changes to impact their rotation? Are they still dropping like uh, Ellie totems for DPS or what are they doing? So. Ellie gets the grand advantage of not being griefed by fire totems because Totem of Wrath is based on your just having a fire totem down now. Um, so we haven't got to choose between Totem of Wrath or a fire elemental or things like that, which is amazing. Like, it's a really big quality of life change. They also bring the same buff as Demo Warlocks now, which is the 10% spell power buff, which is, you know, nice. We're not suddenly a second-class support for no reason at all we actually bring a strong buff um so it turns into like the base rotation for ellie is really simple really easy you really can't go wrong with it you have fulmination which is added in cataclysm which is every time you cast a lightning spell so lightning bolt chain lightning you have a i'm gonna say 60 percent chance to get a stack of lightning shield and you can expel those stacks of lightning shield at, uh, above three stacks on earth shock to do more damage it's like combo points effectively um you also have fire alley being snapshotable which means that that will be the difference between like average ellie shammies and like good ellie shammies is that you will be able to kind of snapshot with every buff possible this big fire elemental that's just going to be hitting the boss for two minutes yeah, and we also the, don't... Go on, go on, Jay. You're probably I, about I to say what I was going to say. We, we don't take Earthquakes, it's a bad ability, and Blizzard forgot about it. Yeah, that was literally what I was about to say next. Is like, it's one of, uh, one of very, very few specs where you'll put 31 talent points in, but not actually take the last talent, because uh, you, you, you just don't need it. Obviously, this, this Shaman I'm showing you now, I'll just put any points in anywhere. Is that the knockback? Uh, like, no, ability? it's it's a new ability. Okay, go on. You, you, it's a ground targeted effect similar to like Hurricane for Druids. Um, it's a cast and then you put it down so it's not a channel. Uh, it puts like damage underneath the mobs and gives them a chance to be knocked down. Like from a utility aspect, it's really, really helpful. From a DPS perspective, it's just worse than just spamming Chain Lightning. So there's no reason to ever take it. Um, but it is te then... it is technically a new ability. Well, yeah, yeah, from talents. Um, what, I mean, there was one ability that we've not really spoke about, although you briefly touched on it, Jay, which was Spirit Walker's Grace, because it's not it's not really an anything ability, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's like it's not like it's not resto specific. It's not le specific. It's an actual ability that you're going to get from the trainer. Yeah, so it allows you to just cast while moving, which, you know, in itself is fantastic. Um, and you get that as every spec, like Scott said. So it's, you know, enhancement. If you're running around and you're not able to hit the boss, you just need a heal, throw it on, heal yourself, resto if the fight's moving or whatever, you can throw it on and chuck a couple of heals out. Um, one of the other things that gets added in Kata and along the same lines is Glyph of... It's not Glyph of Lightning Bolt, I can't remember what it's actually called, but it allows you to cast Lightning Bolt while you're on the move, which turns Resto and Ellie into, like, one of the most mobile... Well, I, I say one of the... I don't know any other class that can just do everything on the move. 
Not everything. Mage gets close. Yeah. yeah, Mage is close, but not everything. But it's Unleash Lightning. Yeah, is the glyph. The only yeah, glyph that I've got on this character. Because <laughs> Resto Shaman, I'll, I'll give you an example. So Ellie Shaman, you can do most of your rotation then on the move, right? You only have to stop to cast light, uh, Lava Burst, which in Firelands, you don't even have to stop to cast Lava Burst. It's great. Uh, Resto Shaman, you then have Nature Swiftness, Spirit Walker's Grace, and Unleash Lightning. And between unleash elements or your heal or your, your riptides and things like that you can basically do your entire healing rotation on the move and not have to worry about anything um unleash elements is another one that i haven't really mentioned as well um it kind of gets overlooked in cow because it's not a very good ability but it has its uses at times so for ellie it's typically going to be used to buff your fire spells so you can use it with a lava burst and flame shock at the same time to snapshot both. Uh, with resto, it's going to be used typically on your healing rain or your healing wave. Um, and then for enhancement, I think it's used to buff your flame shock from remembering rightly. Yeah, so it, it's it's yeah, like, yeah, based on the imbue. So yeah, it, uh, what, what did you want? So flame shock, uh, buffing flame so shock. So you'd be using, it, you'd be using wind fury, which I believe gives wind fury a higher chance to trigger, which is just more damage. So you use it. Every, I, I believe I've got it macro to flame shock on my enhancement shaman. I, it literally just uses that. Like out on a macro, basically. Yeah, it just unleashes yeah. 175 percent weapon damage. Yeah, to the target enemy and increases the shaman's melee attack speed as well for the next six, six swings. So pr pretty huge, though. You know, as in like yeah, yeah. Having you've got another 15 second cooldown. There, there clearly is a lot of buttons to press as a shaman. Enhancement has always had button bloat. Um, I would argue Ellie and Resto don't feel too bad for Button Bloat because totems are a lot more manageable. That was always the biggest thing, right, is managing 700 totems. So it, it, you don't have to do that so much now. Um, yeah, so it, it's not too bad. But Enhancement, if you like pressing lots of buttons and having a really active rotation, that now also feels good to press buttons. Like Lava Lash, like I said, hits hard. Feral Spirits just makes you feel cool um yeah i mean the, it's a really active rotation so with, with rock bite a weapon so you know obviously on the basis in season of discovery we've got shaman tanks and actually shamans have a proper hard taunt using unleash elements you know if you're using rock bite a weapon it increases your threat by 30 percent and in, uh, and reduces damage taken by five percent i think we might see some crazy crazy enhancement shamans off tanking stuff I mean, they've got an no. actual taunt, you know. No. I, I, yeah, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. But this is, you know, we're going to be play, playing Cat Classic. There's things that have happened in Classic that I, uh, I I never thought I'd see happen either. But it's as if they, they really, in Cat, uh, they actually gave you the ability to almost tank. They did. Um, and it's been something that's kind of, been around shamans ever like, since classic um and people have kind of made it work even outside of season discovery they've made it work i also believe it's actually a ranged taunt as well you might want to check unleash elements but i believe unleash elements is ranged 40 yard yeah 40 yard so 40 yard range yeah taunt. So, so it could be used as like a picking up something and kiting potentially um but in terms of taking a hit like I you're, can't you're imagine gonna they're going to be able to take more than... Yeah, you, you're going to die very quickly with that. Uh, I just thought I'd throw it out there, because I'll be honest with you, I've never really never really thought about it until now. I looked at it, and it's like, hang on, you've actually got a proper taunt. Like, you, you could genuinely actually do something. Um, but okay, cool. So Unleash Elements, that's new. Um, any other new abilities, because we need to move on to the next class. Um, any new ones that we've not covered? I mean, Cleanse Spirit, you know, in terms of our... Yeah, like our our dispels work, but that's going to be more generic for everyone anyway. And and it's talented, which I hate, but it's just like, yeah, some guides will tell you not to take it, but if you don't take it, you are trolling. Uh, bind elemental. 
Uh, yeah, it's just uh, banish, basically. So I know uh, Shaman with uh, Bloodlust has gotten added to other classes like Mage. Uh, I can't think of the other classes, but is there anything that requires you to have like a Shaman in a, a 10 player raid or anything like that? Or you would probably still have one regardless in 25, but you could get all the buffs elsewhere now or how, like how important are Shaman? Uh, Totem of Wrath is pretty huge. 10% spell damage. Um, you can get a lesser version from a lot of different classes. Like all Shamans can bring the 6% spell damage buff. Um, but if you want the 10%, I believe it's still Demo, Warlock, and yeah. Shaman. I'm actually just going to... Like no, that is it. Yeah. That is literally it. It's just those two. Yeah. So if you want the bigger buff, you're going to want one of those. I mean, Ellie also is a very high competitor throughout most of the expansion in terms of being like top five DPS slots. So it's one of those that like, it's not going to be a bad thing to bring either. They also bring the AOE crit buff, which is not brought by particularly many other like sought out classes. So they, they bring a lot by bringing them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can get the buffs from elsewhere as well now. Cool. I mean, uh, uh, unless anyone's got anything extra to add on Shaman, I mean, they're the new abilities. You know, briefly, the things you're going to get from talents we're, we've already spoke about. Uh, you know, yeah, as enhancement, you still got Maelstrom weapon. Like, you know, the, the play styles of, of, I'd say, of alien enhancement, even though, yes, they get extra new things that they can do, like Fulmination. So, you know, you're, you're waiting and then doing like that really big Earth Shock that's going to use your charges from your, your Lightning Shield. Um, but like it, it still plays similar enough to feel familiar. Um, and enhancement sort of kind of the same. Again, I'm I'm not saying it's exactly the same as Wrath, but it, it's similar. Uh, I'd say Resto is probably going to be the biggest. Uh, but I think that's actually going to apply to every healer. When we, when we talk about every healer, I, I I do genuinely believe that every healer in in Cat are the ones that are gonna really feel like they're playing completely different to what they did in Wrath. Would you say that's a fair assumption? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, and we just have an, add another super chat. Thank you. If you guys are wondering why we're seeing more super chats than we normally do, it's because Go is a PR genius. Um, and he was like, I'll tell you what we'll do, Scott. Uh, if people want to actually get to their class first, then let them super chat and, and, you know, say what class they want. So at the moment, it is, I believe, Paladin going next still. No, nope. No, nope. pulled Rogue ahead by 0.02 pound. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're doing Rogue next. So if you want your class, but so you can super chat a question as well. Like, you know, you can stick a question in there. But uh, like, as long as you put a class in brackets or whatever you want to do, then cool. But we are doing Rogue next. And I got to be completely honest. Uh, this is one I'm really excited about. Like I, I do, I I, I want to make sure that we didn't miss anything major. Uh, I I feel like Jay covered pretty much everything shaman related. Um, unless you wanted to just touch on what mastery does, I feel like that's something that we should at least mention for each class. Um, which I, I can just uh, really, I, I can quickly read out. I got it in front of me, or if you have, then I don't have it in front of me. Enhancement, as far as I know, is just elemental damage. It's just like percentage damage. Resto is increases healing done by X amount based on the target's missing health. And Elemental is Overload, which already exists. It's just, you know, has a higher chance to proc um, and becomes completely irrelevant later on in the expansion. And and, and also like uh, works, works with uh, a certain staff that you can get in Firelands. It does double, it can double proc on uh, the staff, which is why you should always give your Ellie Shammies the staff first. I agree, unless unless Scotty J is the mage that's in the group, and then th then we can we can talk about that afterwards. Um, I think we've I think we've just had someone knock Rogue off as the next, and we were no, just about no. to move off. No, the the way it sounds, give the boys their hunter news after Rogue. So I, I think Derek's cool with Rogue going next, and then. This 20 is going for the class after Recover Rogue. Okay, okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, but... 
Okay, no, no, yeah, that, that's what it reads really like to me. Thank and yep, yeah, thank you for the super chat, legend, legend. Okay, well, we're going to go rogue next. Uh, and as I say, th this is one that I'm excited to talk about because this is actually one that I personally am going to level in the pre patch. I've been saving it. Like, I've got a rogue on EU, um, and I raided like Nax, Alduar, uh, and that was it. I don't even think I went into OGC on it, to be fair. Um, and, and I've been like, I am waiting till pre-patch to level a rogue. Me and Jay was talking about it earlier on today because we're going to do something. We don't know what we're going to do exactly yet, but we're doing something for the pre-patch. Nice, big, long drinking stream, like leveling, spamming RDF. Uh, and it's going to be a rogue that I'm doing. So this one, I'm mega excited for. And, and purely, like, they, they are absolutely dominating on the beta at the moment. Like, every rogue I see in a heroic group, they are... They are pumping. Like, I've not seen anything even keep up on multi-target as a combat rogue, single-target burst as a combat rogue, like a nice short fight, uh, and then assassination is also just doing just as well on everything other than, like, you know, two, three-target cleave type thing. Um, Any experience from you guys as a rogue? Thank you for the, another big super chat chunk. Scott wants to discuss his paladin. I, I do, I do. Um, Ghost keeping track of all this, so that that may have just put paladin ahead. So thank you, chunk. Because yes, I do want to talk about paladin. Um, thoughts on rogues, guys? Like real, real brief before, like you know, we we start looking at it in depth. I just remember fighting rogues in arena because all I did really was PvP back in the day. So. I, I know they slap in arena. They still have shadow dance, and I, I don't know if they use shadow dance in PVE at all. Probably not. It's probably combat or assassination. But man, do do rogues just destroy people in arena? Sub is actually amazing in PVE, um, but you've got to be able to play it. And I, I wouldn't say it really comes online until uh, late late firelands is where you, you're actually going to be able to start pulling good numbers but if you go by old school sims like the original sort of 4.3.4 simcraft uh sub is the best dps spec but like, it's just incredibly complex to play and you're relying on pure single target like you know there is no cleave there is no like decent aoe or anything like that so it's not really a all boss friendly spec do you know what i mean it's like it's your patchwork spec well i mean it's your spine of deathwing spec if we if we want to talk, you know, uh, about specific bosses, but it is actually good. Like people are going to shit on, uh, on on sub and be like, "Nah, that's not right." No, like, look at what look at what combat and assassinations doing. You wait, I, I guarantee we're going to see sub doing some crazy things. Um, but uh, Jay, you you done quite a bit as a rogue. Carrot, did you have you you got much rogue experience in Cat? Not really. That's why I want to play one. Um, because I've always looked at the rogue very fondly from afar. And talents in it. Just one of those things that is always cool. And assassination in particular is so simple at its core. Stab thing and stab it hard. And it does that really well whilst having an amazing utility toolkit. Like, you've got Cloak of Shadows, you've got a Misdirect, Tricks of the Trade, you've got Vanish. You can do so much as a rogue. You could essentially wander off and do your own little James Bond mission in a raid if you wanted, and you could do it. And that's what I love about the rogue. Um, and yeah, it's no exception. I cannot wait to get in and mess about thing. Uh, people have been using rogues in Wrath and Sod for, like, trash skips. So <laughs> that's immediately what I thought of when you said going off on their own mission. So I wonder what kind of trash skips rogues will be doing and chebs mentioned smoke bomb it looks like this is uh one of their fresh abilities and i was looking at the patch notes for the changes mm -hmm. and smoke bomb launched with a like a 10 second duration and they they nerfed it down to five seconds so we'll probably get the five second version of smoke bomb but man imagine a 10 second smoke bomb <laughs> so smoke bomb super strong in pvp obviously as you would expect but it actually does have PVE utility, um, and it's not it's not the smoke bomb of MOP onwards. I believe it was MOP where it was changed to the point where it was actually damage reduction. It gave everybody stood in it was like 
10% damage reduction. I don't know if you've got the, the, the change. I, I, I've just I've just been checking it at the moment. It's uh, I don't know what it is in MOP, but it isn't in Kata where it's, it's the extra dam damage reduction. Yeah, there's none it's of that useful. in Kata. Um, but it's useful for gathering casters. Like, because they can't cast into the smoke bomb. Like, putting a smoke bomb down if adds spawn and the adds are casters and you smoke bomb on the tank uh, and essentially whoever's got aggro stands in the smoke bomb, it, it is going to pull casters in. But, you know, I, I'd say in uh, for the majority of circumstances, like, smoke bomb is a very PvP talent. You know, being able to stun lock someone down in a smoke bomb so their healer can't heal them is, like... You know, you know that's huge, like absolutely huge, and it's why Rogue is actually. I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to put people off playing certain classes for PvP, but I do not only here, but remember, uh, Rogues being quite godlike in PvP throughout throughout Cat. I'm not even going to say from patch to patch. I, I mean, just in general, like really strong and Smoke Bomb. It, it is part of that, like five seconds. You know, as a healer. You're not really gonna want to be stood next to a warrior, are you? And the warrior, let's say the warrior and the rogue are on top of each other where they would be. As a healer, you're gonna be trying to keep your distance. Then the rogue smoke bombs and starts nuking your warrior. You're now forced to move in close. You know, as a rogue, you can really control. But again, it's relevant for PVE as well. You know, there's times where it's gonna be really useful, but it is one of those where I'm looking forward to see how we use it. You know, as in on private servers, we, we it's like I can't remember a time where we've been like, oh, smoke bomb. But I reckon there's going to be some crazy uses in PVE for this, but for speed running guilds, big pulls, you know, really big pulls, all stacking in a smoke bomb and forcing everything into one spot. You know, uh, it's one to look out for, in my opinion. And Rogue gets legendaries, so I yeah. mean. <laughs> Grab so Scott, so Scott's gonna re-roll at some point then, is what? Oh I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not leveling a rogue during. I'm not leveling. Floor. I'm not leveling a rogue during the pre-patch just to, <laughs> yeah, just to get uh, war glaives. <laughs> um, but no, like rogue is a really good one. So if we like touch on the extra abilities, uh, uh, like I mean, one of them is, is amazing. Recuperate, like, and I say it's amazing. You know, as a as a rogue for self sustain, having a way to spend combo points to actually like heal yourself is just huge. So finishing move that consumes combo points, um, uh, and yeah, it'll restore three percent max health every three seconds. Uh, for you know, the more combo points you use, the the, the longer it lasts. Uh, for while you're leveling, it's amazing, and I do believe without looking, you get it incredibly early, like level twelve, something like that, springs to mind. Um, I I, I it is early either way. Not really going to help you in PvE, uh, because I believe it's not till MOP where actually if you keep Recuperate up, you get energy back. Or is that... No, it is. It is. It is, Kat. I say that back. I went straight to the talent as well, so I should have known. It's in sub, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, it's energetic recovery in sub. So, yeah, empowers your Recuperate, oh, yeah. causing its periodic effect to also restore 12 energy. So this is part of the reason why sub's so difficult, because you are literally having to maintain so many, like, finishers at all times like you're keeping recuperate up as part of your pve rotation obviously it's been it's been a while since i played sub on this rogue that's why i had to double check um but like overall when you first ding as a rogue you feel incredibly powerful like just incredibly powerful uh, and that's exactly why i'm doing it in the pre-patch as combat getting blade flurry which Blade Flurry works very differently. You know, it's a toggleable ability. So you just put it on and you're cleaving. And then you can also glyph it to reduce the amount of like energy regen reduction that you get. Which is, again, it makes having Blade Flurry on barely noticeable. Especially before you've got haste and stuff where you're actually getting big amounts of energy regen. Um, but like you will just dominate on two target fights. It, it, it's, it's incredibly difficult for anyone to even keep up. And obviously, like you're doing 10, you get Mutilate as Assassination, Shadow Step as Sub. Shad like, lever even leveling a sub, you'll like two shot everything all, all the way up. You know, uh, e even in like Hygel. Um, it's like amazing. And yet, you can put Poison on a throwing weapon, another good change, which, uh, which Chevs has just mentioned. Um, but like, new ability wise, 
and I, I, like Jay, you played a, a, a decent amount. I remember doing a lot of dungeons with you, and you was on your your combat rogue. Uh, is there any you, you want to like share out? Because there's, there's combat readiness, which is mm, quite, quite a questionable addition <laughs> to rogue. But you know, uh, so combat. I remember they don't really gain much in terms of like new pressable abilities, uh, but they do get. Um, so um, obviously you've mentioned combat readiness, uh, lovely defensive, more PV, more solo content and PVP than anything else. Don't think it's amazing in PVE, but they don't need more defensives in PVE in fairness. Uh, one of the things I remember as combat, and I believe it's the talent above killing spree, is every time you spend combo points you get cooldown reduction on certain abilities and it makes combat rogue one of the most like spammable cooldown classes that i've ever played yeah uh, it's just like you 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 oh look i press adrenaline rush on this back oh look and i pressed it again on the next back and the next back and it's just crazy how quick that you can do that um killing spree just feels amazing as always as well and we're, I mean, uh, we've, we've got to talk about band, Bandit is, Guile. I hate that Billy. It's it's the it's the biggest it's the biggest thing that you that, that yeah you you play around as a, a, a as a rogue. Yeah, it's really frustrating. But go, yeah, go on, Jay. So you basically stack up like a pendulum effect on a boss or a mob. So it starts at 10% damage increase, 20%, 30%, and then goes back down. Um, so you want to be using, like, you know, pulling energy, pulling combo points for when it hits 30%, suddenly bursting through all your combo points and everything else for, uh, like, as quick as possible. And then, you know, like, you're just maintaining buffs and everything else during the 10 and 20%. Like, it's, it's fun if you enjoy playing around it. Um, but it's for me, it's not, I don't, I didn't enjoy the mechanic. Uh, but it is like, say, if you enjoy playing around it, being able to play around it is really cool and it gives combat some complexity rather than just being the spec that spams Sinister Strike and Slice and Dice, which is kind of what it would be otherwise. And the, 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 the good addition, uh, like along, when, when I say addition alongside it is, uh, like if you're if you're actually watching on stream and not just listening, you can see up here. So I've got moderate insight at the moment. So the target's defenses grants an additional twenty percent. That's because I'm on yellow. Eventually it will go red, um, and then obviously the boss will take thirty percent damage. So it goes ten, then twenty, then thirty, but then that will reset and go back. But a really good thing is redirect, and it's only specific for combat. Like redirect is exactly the same. For um for for all all three specs it's sub hang on um it's the same for all three specs except for uh combat where actually when you redirect you can also take your bandit's guy with you I would say I'd be well I am with Jay like it, it, it's a it's a frustrating mechanic because you can guarantee that when like you're just about to reach red and you're ready to pump something happens and you need to switch to an ad and it's like okay like i'm being told i need to switch i really don't want to switch uh but you know if, you, if you're going to follow what the raid leader says then you're going to have to so the saving grace is obviously redirect on a one minute cooldown it still transfers all your existing combo points but it will also take your level of of bandits guy with you so is it like redirect is exactly the same for sub assassination like you're just transferring combo points um it's just for for combat you get that additional benefit which helps a little bit um I, but it is annoying like I, I would say when i was when i was actively doing stuff on this rogue that you're looking at now uh the one thing i was complaining about was i've got red yeah you know, i've got red insight i'm ready to pump i'm ready to you know killing spree adrenaline rush everything and then it's like oh the boss is dead <laughs> You know, or, or oh, the, it's despawned. It's like uh, there's ads coming now or something. Uh, so it, it's cool and it's an addition. Um, and I would say it spices Rogue up a little bit. Uh, but the other, the other addition, uh, not uh, yeah, for, it's for combat specifically, but is revealing strike uh, and actually 
even your legendary daggers sort of um play a, a, a part with revealing strike it's sinister strike and revealing strike i believe on the legendary daggers uh don't quote me on that i would need to check but i'm fairly sure it is it, it is it's it's about 45 percent in damage oh, yeah. what makes um them useful for that spec yeah um so revealing strike uh is an instant strike uh, that causes 125% normal damage, uh, but increases the effectiveness of your next offensive finishing move by 35%. So you will, you know, like you, you, you'd get to four combo points and then you'd reveal in strike. Now you've got five combo points and now your eviscerate is going to do 35% more damage. So it's playing around with reveal in strike and, and, and when you do and you don't use it. Uh, but but I, I feel like, of course, you've got some other... Like we're, we're, this is not a deep dive. This is like, what new stuff do you get? How do the classes play? More so than, oh, this talent's changed. That talent's changed. You know, because we could sit and go into this, which we will in the actual deep dive videos. This is a nice big overview where you can listen and go, does that sound good to me? I don't, I, I don't know. You know, you might not like the sound of that because honestly, Bandit Scar was. It could be a selling point or or a crunch point for a lot of people that are thinking about Rogue. You know. Um, outside of that, I mean, I, I, I mean, assassination, vendetta. Uh, like, I, I don't, I don't feel like assassination changes too much. I, I'd probably say vendetta is really the the biggest one for assassination. It's still mutilating. You're still envenoming. You're still relying heavily you, on poison have, damage. Do you have the execute phase in? wrath at the moment or is that a new thing with car what, what do you mean what Where back, back back backstab gives energy back at like under 35 percent health or something no no that's not in wrath that's yeah that's not in yeah wrath. so okay that's a new that's that's a new thing for Kara as well where they have an execute phase uh yeah so that's murderous intent so when you backstab an enemy that is below 35 percent health you instantly recover 15 energy yeah that's a good shout uh, now forsaken, thank you, thank you. I know Scotty J wants to talk about incursions, Pally. Thank, thank you, mate. I think you, I think that's definitely got to be Pally pulled ahead in front. Now it's got to be. Go goes the man keeping score of the super chats. So, but I think Paladin's going to be I the next do class. Some quick math. Yeah, yeah. Pally's way ahead. <laughs> oh, cool. Good. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so. I, I don't know much about Rogue, but I was just looking up while we were going over all that stuff uh, really quickly. Tricks of the Trade changes very slightly, and that's one big thing I think of when I think of like a Rogue's utility in a raid. So it's not a big change, but the threat that transfers is no longer permanent and will fade after 30 seconds from what I see. But by 30 seconds into a boss fight, threat should well be established anyways. Yep. Um, hang on. All damage caused by the target is increased by 10%. So, yeah, still get the damage uh, transferred threat. Is oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, the transferred threat is not permanent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, how, do you, how, how do you guys rank uh, Rogue's DPS as far as, like, melee? Is it, like, one of the strongest melee? Is it a little bit better than Enhance, but maybe not as great as, like, a DK? Uh, Rogue is going to consistently be a top spot contender. Like yeah. su su sub, especially in Firelands, like Scott said, sub is going to be there. Um, like a, a good sub player, you're going to see like rank one world DPS attempts. I, I believe combat has its fights. Any fight with Cleave combat is going to do exceptionally well. Assassination is just amazing at sitting and tunneling into a boss. So I think the advantage with Rogue and one thing is if you like playing all of the different specs, you will be good in every scenario by just changing to the other spec. Yeah, I, 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 I'd back exactly that. I, I think Rogue yeah. is going to be a, a number one contender on, on every, every boss, literally. Um, one, one just, well, there's two actually I want to touch on. Uh, Fan of Knives. So we've spoke about the fact that uh, you, you can apply poison to your offhand, um, but it's incredibly important to use a throwing weapon now. So you cannot physically use Fan of Knives without a thrown weapon equipped. So that's the whole reason why you can poison your offhand. So when you Fan of Knives, it's going to 
obviously apply the poison from your throwing weapon. Uh, minor, it's minor, but also so is Fan and Ives' damage. So, and, and I, 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 I mean that like Fan and Ives is fairly garbage in car, unless you're assassination, and there's a lot of targets. Like there's, there's got to be a lot for where it's even worth using. Uh, that was one. Uh, was there another? Uh, I, there, there, I feel like there was one more. Oh, maybe it was a comment about exposed armor. Um, exposed armor just does exactly the same uh, as uh, as Sunder or or even Fairy Fire. So you'll very very rarely see a rogue Sundering, uh, exposing. If I was playing a rogue and I was asked to expose, I would be like, "Are you fucking joking?" Like even if it was a resto druid. That's having to keep the, the the armor reduction up. I would be relying on the rest of the to do it, not me, because <laughs> it, it's all it's all the same thing, you know. Obviously, a feral keeping it up or a warrior keeping it up, great. But like a rogue in Kata should never, never really need to expose. I also see a hunter pet on there too, but I'm sure that they would probably rather they wouldn't be using that. that. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be using. <laughs> they, They'd only use it if there was like no other class to use. Yeah, yeah. To have that and, and the raid yeah. leader's like, I need my twelve percent armor reduction. Yeah. Um. Out outside of that, no. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say there's anything major. Uh, that that I feel yeah that that is so new that we need to talk about when we're trying to talk about all the classes so briefly. I'm just checking the abilities, make sure that there's nothing that I've really sort of overlooked. Uh, so, okay, uh, on the basis of uh, Super Chats that have come in, Go, what are we talking about next? Paladin? Paladin? Yeah, okay, I thought you were going to just say something else. Yeah, Paladin. Paladin is next, and then Hunter will be after Paladin so far. Okay, it's just I'm organizing. I'm trying to organize the classes. Like, we've already spoke about Shaman, so we can get rid of Shaman, and we've already spoke about Rogue, so we can get rid of Rogue. So at the moment it's paladin, then then hunter. Um, so paladin, I might have a thing to say. Uh, Carrot. So you said you was on the fence of main. You was gonna main shaman. You know that's where that's where the name Carrot come from. What are you actually maining? Uh, I'm a DK. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's both right. now and in Kata. Yep, I, I remember. I remember you said that now. Um, outside of me. Here, much experience paladin wise, Jay. I, I feel like you was tanking quite a bit on a prop paladin. Uh, Rhett is the worst spec in Kata. Come at me. It's a very difficult spec. Nice. I can I can understand how the Ellie Shaman would it struggle with it. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand how an Ellie Shaman who's used to pressing two buttons struggles with a Rhett paladin. I, I, I definitely get that. Ho Ho Holy's okay. Prot's great later on and Rhett it just shouldn't exist in Kata. Oh, this is this is gonna be a spicy little talk about Paladin. Um okay, I'm gonna just put it out there now. I I wow, this is gonna sound so arrogant and I don't even want it to sound like that. I, I feel like I know everything that I need to know about Paladin. You know, like it, it, it all well certainly holy and Rhett. Maybe not prop. You know, that's what subtles that's what subtles here for. That's why, you know, you all need to if you're a prop paladin, prop warrior, it blood DK. You know, subtle. It, he is the man. He is the tank man. So I'm sure tomorrow night when we do the podcast where we're deep diving paladin, you'll learn far more from him about protection than you will me. Um but Rhett and Holy, I have literally played to death. Uh and I can honestly say both of them are Oh, they're so, so fun. So enjoyable. Like, don't listen to Jay. Rhett's just difficult. Uh, Rhett's one of those. It, Rhett, Rhett is very frustrating. I, I, I'll give you that. Um, but it's frustrating in a weird way. Not in a way that you wouldn't... You, like, if you think about a, a Fire Mage, like, in chat, I want you all to tell me what's frustrating about a Fire Mage. Uh, because I think that's fairly clear cut you know a fire mage can absolutely pump but there's one frustrating thing about fire mage where you do feel like you're just sat there keeping living bum up and spamming fireball because the, 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 there's a big downfall in the spec ret i'm not going to say what that is like you're going to have to tell everyone in chat ret is the complete opposite 
the most frustrating thing about Rhett sometimes is you've got so much going on all at once that you're overwhelmed. You're like, I've got, I've, I, you know, I've got Divine Purpose proc so I can now use a free point, whatever, but Templar's Verdict, or, I, I you know, do I refresh um, in, in Inquisition? Also, I've got an Exorcism proc. Like, sh should I Exorcism? you got Art of War proc uh, you're sat there with Crusader Strike off cooldown, Judgments off cooldown, and it's like, uh, every, and then you'll go, I'll tell you what I'll do, even though it's the wrong thing, oh, Templar's Verdict. So you'll press Templar's Verdict, and that'll proc another Divine Purpose, and you're in exactly the same position with another GCD to use. Like, but it, it, when the stars align, it's it's fantastic when everything's flowing nicely, but there is just so much going on that you need to have a deep understanding on what ability does the most damage. You know, ultimately, that's what it comes down to. You can't just be like, oh, I can press this, I can press that. Oh, I'm just going to press it all. This is amazing. You need to literally know, well, this ability does more than that ability. That ability does more than that ability, and you, you go in order whilst trying not to waste any holy power. But man, it's fucking fun. <laughs> so the, the days of the wrath, one button ret spec where you could do 90 percent of your maximum damage with a macro that's completely gone yeah and kata uh yeah, com oh, yeah. Com completely uh, ret was yeah. ret in kata was the first sorry Karen, I'll, I'll just say this and then and it's over to you uh ret in kata was the the first spec to my knowledge that ever needed an add-on to be able to play to the point where you wouldn't get invited to a raid unless you was using clc ret because it was like, well, if you don't use CLC Ret, you're just not going to do enough damage. Like, there's, there's just no point you being in the raid. Think about that. Wasn't Enhancement Shammy the first one? Just saying. Just throwing that out there. I don't remember CLC Shaman. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't CLC. There was another add-on. And when I remember it, I will prove you wrong. Oh, no, I, I believe you. I believe you. Like, Enhancement, uh, I would say Enhance... Well... Feral enhancement all through up until Kata were notorious, notoriously the most difficult specs to play, to play well. Um, I still do think Feral is up there, but uh, I mean, Rep Paladin is. Again, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't want to stand here and say that it's difficult to play. I think you just need a, an understanding of, of what you should be doing. And sometimes you can quite easily get flustered and be like, oh shit. Everything's going off. Like, whoa, whoa, what do I do? Probably going to be made incredibly easy by a one button, like a weak aura that's just going to tell you a uh, next action, a next action weak aura, like what unholy DKs have got. So, whilst it's exciting when you haven't got that with it, eh, you're probably going to have a weak aura that just tells you what button to press. Makes it a lot, uh, you know, uh, a bit boring. But, ma'am, uh, I, I want to. Wanna... I want to publicly apologise. CLC Rat was made four years before the Shaman version. Uh, as, which was uh, peculiar. Yeah, I I, rem I remember it being like a requirement. You played a Paladin, you you needed you needed the add-on. As in, like it, it was just a it was a check. It was like, do you know how to play Rat Paladin? Um, do you use CLC Rat? And then they'd say no, and it'd be like, ah, oh, well, he's not coming. <laughs> he clearly don't know how to play Paladin because you need a, you need an add-on to tell you what button to press. So you know how to play Paladin. It is kind of that that bonkers. Um, but uh, Jay, Carrot, go any of you. Like, let's get your thoughts on the the three Paladin specs before I end up inevitably talking for the next thirteen minutes. I'd argue that the skill ceiling for Paladin and particularly Rhett goes through the roof as compared to its previous incarnations. Rhett throughout Classic is a weird one because in vanilla classic it is a bit of a wheelchair it's more of a meme you bring it because it's funny um it has its <laughs> place in tbc but you still need to manage your your steel twisting properly come kata uh, sorry cat wrath you're just spamming divine storm like before icc they were a bit pants now there's about a thousand of them like i have one and i i just spend most of the raid watching tv pressing divine storm and going la 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 in Kata, like you say, you need a guide to get through this. And if you don't have one, it's... Good paladins are going to stand out. They are going to be gods among men. But 
yeah, the bad ones who are used to spamming one button are going to be in for a shock because it's insane. I've dabbled a bit with Paladin on private servers because it looked fun. And just juggling all those cooldown zealotry and holy power as a, co a combo point resource is. I don't want to say hard. It isn't hard, but you do have to think about it more than just spamming a button, which is kind of what Paladin is in all three specs up to the point. I mean, Paladin was the first thing I made when Classic came out. I made Holy Paladin for the first half of it, and that was just flash of light spam, occasionally a holy shock. And even now in Wrath, it's just, yeah, I'll press holy light, it's got a glyph, it does all the healing I needed to do. And again, similar thing with Pro. I drop Consecration, throw a shield out, and then just press, um, oh, what's it called? Hammer of the Righteous. Verdict. Hammer of the Righteous, that's it. And that's it. I just sit there, the aggro growing. But with Holy Power coming in, it's like, oh, no, I need to actually think about my button and the situation I'm in. And if I mess that up, I'm going to be bad. And... That's what's really cool about the Paladin. It got a hell of a facelift, this expansion. A lot of classes, you can go and log on to them in Kata from Wrath and be like, okay, these buttons are all the same. It's generally the same rotation. It all makes sense. But Paladin kind of got remade from the ground up, and it's going to be brutal for the uninitiated. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why that comment made me so la laugh so much. Uh, fit <laughs> fit this gamer. Honestly, mate, that... I was struggling to actually concentrate on what Carol was saying because all I was thinking was, hmm, I wonder if he has got some hardcore pornography in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I weren't, I, yeah, oh, I, I didn't highlight that comment to actually defend him. I, I was literally thinking, man, this guy's uh, actually like, he's got like big brain shit going on here. Yeah, I'd probably blur my background out. If <laughs> Can you imagine if he unblurs it now yeah, and it's just shelves it's like, full of um, dildos? <laughs> There's like a rack in the background where my missus attached to it right now. <laughs> He's just watching from back there. Uh, it literally... <laughs> so she does it. As long she does it. Shit. As long as she doesn't pop a nut on your shoulder, I think we're all good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that just made me laugh. But no, you're absolutely oh. right. Um, and, and one of the um, yeah, the things about Rhett is is the drastic change, like you said, and not just Rhett, just just Paladin in general. It's the drastic change from how. All of the all three specs play in Wrath versus Kata. It's it's like, uh, I mean, I would say it's it's more of a drastic change than even like a hunter that completely changes the resource that they use, um, because it is just, yeah, it's that big. But uh, but it it yeah, it really is fun. So go what like I know go like you you've you've been in. I don't think you've actually been in dungeons with me on my rep pally on the the beta review. You? You've only been on in no, with my no. mage. You've been uh, mage, yeah. But like, what what are your thoughts? What do you think about what you've read or seen, or you know, uh, on paladins? Because as I, say, I want you guys to have a little chat about it first before I just fully take over and and then just spill off loads of bollocks for ages. Uh, I mean, my my questions right now is how Rhett was just shunned upon in phase one and Nax of Wrath, and it was like if you had a Rhett pally in your your raid, it was like, what are you guys doing? So is it going to be the same for Rets in Phase 1 of Kata? Do they have a, a raid spot that they can fill? Or is it going to be the same thing? They're going to need to wait until they get like a glyph or a set bonus from Tier 12 or something like that until they're brought to the raid. I I like I'm gonna, I want Jay to go after me. Um, but like I would kind of compare Rhett to um, Feral, even in Wrath, but like mainly during sort of vanilla and CBC. Where they're gonna be, they're gonna be in quite maybe a bad light, but because ninety five percent of the player base can't play it properly, and then like when you get a good ret in the group, you're like, shit, man, you know like, this is cool, you know. And I'm going all the way back to like all the way back. I'm going back to 2019, you know, like you'd get a feral in a group in molten core, and they would just do nothing, and then you'd get a feral in a group in molten core that's beating rogues and warriors. You know, like that, the, there was a big difference, but the general rule would then become, well, you don't want to take it. What's the point of taking a feral? You, you know, like uh, yeah, take take one maybe for the buff for the warriors, and and that's all they're going to bring. And I, I see like a, a similar 
a similar story maybe emerging. Uh, I think there'll be far more bad paladins than there will be good paladins. But when you've got one that, that either is using a, or or I could be talking absolute shit and every fucking paladin's going to use the same weak aura and now it's just going to come down to who has better boss understanding. You know, it like it literally could go yeah. either way. But I think even with weak auras, I'm using weak auras on the beta on my rat. And I bet I'm still doing things wrong on certain fights where, as I say, when everything's going off and it's like, ah, uh, you know, knowing the perfect, like, it will come down to kill time as well. Like, like, you know, if you've got all your procs up, it's not just this button does more than that, that button. It's like, if I press that button, is that actually going to then mean my Inquisition I'm going to struggle for and I'm going to have to use a one point Inquisition now I can't Templar's Verdict without procs? Like, it's it, like, the whole Rep Paladin has got such a big knock-on effect. But this isn't about Rep Paladin. This is about Paladin overall. But I think Rep is probably the one that's going to have the most stigma attached to it. So I'm actually going to go the complete opposite way, and I genuinely think there is going to be a Rep Paladin in every group. And it almost doesn't matter on their performance because they bring some niche buffs that... Like, okay, I've specifically planned to have a rep paladin in my 10-man. Um, I think in 25-man it matters less just because you're going to have most, if not all, of the buffs covered anyway. Um, but even then, like, they bring the 3% damage buff, which is only brought by two specs, which is Arcane Mage, which after Phase 1 you're never really going to see an Arcane Mage, and rep pally. So, like... BM Hunter, it looks like. Yeah, and then... Uh, and BM Hunter, yeah, which... You won't right have. It's going to... No, yeah so the only one of the three specs that's actually going to bring that and be a competitive raid dps is is rep pally uh they also bring replen which is mana restoration so huge for the group they bring uh obviously the ability to either kings or might which you know might is kind of crazy now because might is also wisdom so you're going to get both effects they bring a lot of like niche buffs to the raid that I genuinely think having a ret in a group is almost going to be mandatory. Um, and then you're going to get that kind of... The good rets are going to be all of that utility and a competitive DPS, or you're going to get the other type of rets, which are going to be all of that utility and no DPS. Yeah, I agree. And actually, when you when you said that, then you start thinking about it. And if everyone's going to follow what is starting to emerge as the meta, and I'm not saying emerge as in we we already knew this and we already run this. Yeah, we've been running it for multiple years on private servers. Um, but Blood DK Feral Druid is going to be quite a, a, a you know a commonly used um, tanking setup, which means there's no prop paladin, which that's one less chance of a paladin that's going to bring. Uh, bring blessing of might so you're gonna get you're gonna get kings yeah. but from the druid tank um which you know, obviously kings mark of the wild is the same thing um but then who's gonna bring might so then it's like well are you gonna have a holy paladin holy paladin is not quite as set in stone as it is in wrath where it's like well if you want to do 10 man you take a holy paladin and a disc priest it's not really like that i i would actually personally from personal experience healing with very good healers and i mean very good healers um i i i kind of think actually for 10 man resto druid dis priest is going to be as strong or maybe stronger than holy paladin dis priest as an example so if you ran that and you was like resto druid dis priest or jay's probably like resto shaman dis priest or you know oh, whatever no, I, I agree with you yeah but it's like you know holy paladin is not as set in stone in a 10 man comp in kata as it is in wrath so then now you ain't got a holy paladin bringing blessing of might either uh so like then the ret spot gets even more valuable so yeah coming it from from that angle uh, yeah 100 percent agree yeah and then you have like sorry holy paladin like you said is, is not going to be mandatory um maybe even not even the best of the two uh, of like the top two for 10 mans or anything like that uh, and Prop Halley has this weird issue with Mastery and Block that doesn't get solved later into the expansion. So they're actually one of the worst tanks for the first phase or two. So 
yeah, I mean, of the three specs, I would actually expect to see more rets than any of the other two. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, so um, any 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 more thoughts on just like general paladin before we get into like the abilities, like new abilities? I mean, you can start on the new abilities, Jay. If you want to start on the new abilities, and I can go and get another drink. You, you, you. you start on the new ability. Oh, all right. I won't get another drink. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we should start. We'll start bri <laughs> briefly with the masteries. I don't think we even touched on the masteries on Rogue, but uh, we did a little bit. Yeah. Well, you did more damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Holy is actually basically the the best way to think about it is Valinir. But you've you've got it all the time. You don't need to use Valinir. Your direct healing spells are going to put an absorb shield on the target for twelve percent the amount healed, and each point of mastery increases the absorb amount. So obviously super strong and actually disgusting on on certain fights, especially if you're Zach and you use a recount instead of details, um, where it looks where it looks like the the holy paladin is doing like well ninety nine percent of the healing because of how strong illuminated healing is. Um, Protection is going to increase your chance ch chance to block, but only chance to block. So block changes where, like, for, for shield wearers, so, well, paladins and warriors, um, your block, instead of getting block value from gear that's removed, you can just block, you have a chance to block 30% of the incoming damage. You can increase that, and that's increased using um, Holy Shield, but will obviously may, may touch on that because that is quite a, a big deal so paladins increase it by using holy shield warriors increase it with mastery because they get critical block which is basically you blocked great and then it rolls again did you critically block no you didn't it's 30 percent. did you critically block uh, then it's 60 percent. you know um and then for ret it just increased it just just mastery just increases your damage <laughs> by all of your abilities I mean, all of your important abilities. So <laughs> Templar's Verdict, Crusader Strike, Divine Storm. Yeah, they deal additional damage as holy damage. So, like, that's important. Additional damage as holy damage. So, not physical, not mitigated by armor. Your mastery is increased. It, it, like, unless for some reason you're fighting a boss with high holy resist, it, it's more or less just flat, unmitigated damage from mastery. Um, so, really cool. Uh, new ability wise what you're going to get so the the thing about um all three specs all all three specs but ret in particular is none of your cooldowns that you get are like oh i'll just macro all of this to one ability that is what ret paladins will do but they'll be the bad ret paladins they'll macro zealotry uh, um avenging wrath and uh, the, the, your, your new big one which is your ancient guardian all of them will get macroed together. Um, and that's not good. So, again, a difficulty spike with Rare is you've got three cooldowns. You've got your normal, uh, normal one that you're used to, which is obviously Avenging Wrath, which increases all damage and healing by 20%. So it's relative... Um, it's, yeah, rele it's relevant for every spec. You know, threat for, for prop, you know, healing for a healer. Uh, and obviously damage for Rhett. But then you, as Rhett, you get Zealotry, which is your new last talent point, where your Crusader Strike generates three charges of Holy Power. So the biggest change that Paladins go through is whilst you've got all your normal abilities that you're used to, like Flash of Light, Holy Light, you know, uh, just, just your normal things, you also now build up three charges of Holy Power. And each spec has got different ways of building that. So as holy, you're going to build it with like holy shock. Like so, what you're going to get as soon as you decide to go holy, it's six second cooldown. Every six seconds, you can get a charge of holy power. When you've got beacon on a target, it does similar to what it does in Wrath. I say similar because it's a reduced effect other than for holy light. Uh, but if you do a big hill on the target that's got beacon, that will also give you a a, a charge of holy power. Or you can crusader strike. Now, every spec gets Crusader Strike. Every spec can get Holy Power from Crusader Strike. So, yes, easy, even as a healer, you're going to be up in melee and using it on cooldown because it is minimal cost mana-wise for one Holy Power. So, like, that's your resource that you're playing around and trying to 
get the most out of it. Either you're trying to get the most out of your three charges of holy power for rep by using Templar's Verdict, which is your three-point combo holy power finisher that does a shitload of damage, or you're trying to get the most out of it in terms of threat for prop by using Shield of Righteous. Shield of the Righteous. So you've got Shield of the Righteous now in Wrath, but you will obviously... you This will now cost holy power and the more holy power you use on it the more damage it does which obviously equates to the more threat and it's substantial it's not like oh i can go one holy power and then shield a righteous just look at the damage 1.6k for one holy power or 10k for three holy power you know for the majority of these outside of inquisition which we'll get onto a minute in a minute you want to be using with three holy power um and then for holy paladins you're going to get light of dawn which is a nice big glow in your hands, just fire out holy light everywhere, which looks fucking insane. Um, and obviously, yeah, it's actually like a an AOE heal, uh, which can be improved from glyphs. We're not talking a lot about glyphs tonight because we need to try and get through each class as quickly as possible. Um, but it's a, it, yeah, it's amazing. So there's but there's different ways of building holy power, even um for 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 protection grand crusader when you crusader strike or hammer of righteous um you've got a 10 percent chance but with two points 20 percent of refreshing the cooldown of your avenger shield uh and then when it re refreshes the cooldown it causes it to generate holy power so you know each spec has got their niche ways that they generate holy power rep can only use crusader strike or divine storm they share the same cooldown, but the cooldown can be reduced by haste if you take Sanctity of Battle. But you have to hit four targets with Divine Storm. Back to cooldowns, what I was saying. So when that all, when you take all of that in, which I appreciate was a lot of information, when you pop Zeal at Tree, and you know you can do a three combo point spender, then you're going to press Crusader Strike. That's going to get three combo points. You're there, well, three Holy Power. You're then going to do a spender. Now you've got one GCD in between where you're going to press something else. But you want Zealotry up before you use Avenging Wrath, but you want your new ability, which is the, the Guardian, uh, which does different things based on spec. So for Rep, it increases your strength by 1% per application. It lasts 30 seconds. So while active, you and your Guardian's attacks cause you to be infused with Ancient Power, increasing your strength by 1%. So that's going to be obviously up to well 30 percent but you so you don't want to do them all at the same time otherwise you're using all of your cooldowns where you've got minimal strength from your guardian of ancient kings so it's like get zealotry ready bang get guardian ancient ancient kings up so that stack in then use avenging wrath where you're now going to do 20 percent more damage again like that straight away goes from binding all of your cooldowns in one button to having to think I've got a rotation for my cooldowns, <laughs> like not just a rotation for my, you know, normal abilities. Um, but then if you was prot, it's just a flat damage reduction. I've not even got prot on this spec, but I believe it's 30%. Um, and then for holy, it duplicates the next five heals. So if you're holy, your, your next five heals, basically your guardian is going to do exactly the same thing five times if it's an aoe heal it's going to aoe heal five times uh if you're you know if it's a single target heal it'll do a single target heal five times um, but while it's active uh it'll also increase uh so it'll cause the guardian to heal the same target for the amount healed by you and friendly targets within 10 yards so it also then does like a cleave heal you know a small aoe heal i feel like i should stop talking now that 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 i mean I don't feel like I missed anything there. Yeah, I, 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 what can I say? <laughs> what, what can I say? I love Paladin. I mean, divine favor changes. That, that you know, there's, there's multiple changes. Word of Glory gets added, so you've got a free hill that you can use in all three specs. And you know, the more, yeah, yeah, the, the, the more holy power you've got, the more it heals. It's on. A, it's got a cooldown. You've even got a talent that can actually make that cooldown reset. So you could use a, a, a three, you know, a three point, uh, a three holy power word of glory. And then it's got a 30% chance to not consume holy power. So then you could use it again because as holy, it's not got a cooldown. Uh, whereas for the other specs it has, there's like. 
there's, they go through a lot of changes, Paladin. I'm really getting conscious. I'm talking too much, but I can't help it. Like, so I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to go and get a drink. No, you're good. Cheers, guys. See you next week. <laughs> you need one, uh, Majay. You <laughs> might be able to. He might be able to help me with this one. Uh, I see the Paladin. Paladin gets uh, absolution, which is kind of like a battle res, from what I'm reading from the tooltip. Uh, brings all wait all dead party members no 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 no, no, no. so okay they've got they, they've just got AOE mass res because they've okay. removed mass res as a guild perk it's been given to all healer specs somebody else got like a battle res maybe it was dk is that right Kara? D yeah so yeah. raised dead uh raised ally sorry in wrath is that thing where you can be turned into a ghoul it's bloody pointless that gets reworked in Kara and is just rebirth but with more slime um so yeah they, they get a battle so paladin doesn't get that they do in retail oh. very recently they're given one in retail okay. so you might have read something along those lines but in kata no the only two battle race classes will be the druid and the k okay okay damn <laughs> i was trying to like entice myself to be excited that there was going to be another paladin in the raid that could use their battle res instead of me having to use mine but now that you said that yeah fuck pallies like who, who needs them they're shit tanks they're shit healers and they're shit dps everybody else has said it scotty's verified it <laughs> true so what they've done like jay said just going back to matt because you were talking about absolution which is a mass res not a combat res uh, yeah, let, let's yeah, put that yeah, out there. I, I'm totally misread that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like like Jay said, I, and I don't know if this is an intended change or not yet. That's why I've, I've not mentioned it in videos. I'm not talking about it until we get more updates on the beta because if it's an intended to, an intended change, it's fucking ridiculous. Um. But yeah, they, they've taken mass res away from guilds and then they've gave it to anybody who can res. So druids have got mass res. Yeah, paladins have got mass res. Shamans got mass res um priests have got mass res like anybody who can single target res in kata can AO aoe mass res um but then the guild perks gone now i don't really see the value in that personally it seems like a really really weird change to go all right well you haven't got to level up now like you'll just get mass res just bring the right classes like i i don't I don't see the point. Like it's taken away from the guild leveling system, but ultimately we're still getting nearly the same thing. I, I yeah, I, I'm I'm not a fan. So I'm hoping that's a bug and and something changes. If it ends up like that, I mean, I I will be questioning Blizzard in um if they'll ever interview me again because I've been giving them a lot of shit in the last week or so. Um, I I I, I would question what what they're thinking behind that was because getting your guild leveled up and getting mass res was like that's a cool thing and we've all got mass res now this is awesome and you can go and use it in pugs you can go and use it in you know random heroics and now it's like well no fuck you like you're not getting that from from leveling your guild up just just the people who can already res can do it uh, so then, no, right, no, Scotty, Scotty pour, pour your drink pour your drink okay Karen, sorry, go ahead sorry dad. Is, i don't see how, how it can be a bug because these spells are from way beyond Cataclysm. So they have been deliberately put into the, the, the cat build. To what end? And that's not even mass res that's gone missing. Most of the guild perks have been gutted. Like the entire guild system for Cata has been assassinated. And it's something I said in the video, I think it was this morning. Um, I've been awake too long. I cannot remember when stuff's been happening. But... <laughs> I, I essentially said, look, if, if they just put out a bit of a post, a bit of communication, we're like, right, we've made this change. We think it will affect X, Y, Z thing for X, Y, Z reasons and why we think it's a good idea. That would give us the chance to, to either rationalize it or say, that's bloody stupid. What were you smoking? And I, this is one of those things I can't see them being able to rationalize. If it was just a case of, right, we want to make guild leveling faster. Okay, I see with your cadence that makes sense. Maybe just get rid of the leveling and tie the perks to reputation or something like that. But if you look at guild perks now, there's like five left. All the fun ones are gone. Like all the ones that you can do something with, like you've still got like um, honor gains, rep gains, stuff like that. Yeah, the, the passive stuff at the back ends that if they didn't put in, I think someone would set up a raid on their. Um, main office but 
think you've even got them on some character. Um, yeah, they're even on uh, ungilded characters at the minute. I think that's a beta thing. But you've got all the passive stuff. But yeah, uh, have group will travel and just all the fun gimmicky stuff is gone. Yeah, rather rather than put why. some effort in, rather than put some effort in and get the things to to just actually work better overall, it's like I oh, would just take them out. Just just take them out. It's, like, right. it's, it's much easier than trying to get things to work. We'll just get rid of them. No one will know. No one's going to play Kata. Carrot, I feel like you're doing a little bit of pandering there because I did watch that video that you're talking about, and it was today. And in that video, you said X, Y, Z, and then all of a sudden it's X, Y, Z when we're live to a, an NA crowd. Explain your change of verbiage there for me, please. I'm calling you out. I'm knackered and, and I can't really keep track of how I say things. Like, it's the Stone <laughs> Swan argument. That changes every five minutes with me. I cannot remember what I said before, so I just say that whatever comes into my mind first. <laughs> so, I've never yeah. heard Z called Z until I played WoW, and I got like on Discord and stuff with like Scotty. I think Scotty was the first guy that I heard say Z, and I was like, Z Z G. What is what is Z G? Oh, Z G. Okay, Z G. Oh, I done. I, I done Z. I done Z G on my Paladin earlier to try and get the mount, and uh, that's a good idea. But yeah, talking about Paladin, cool. Um, so while yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, thank you for the segue. For once, it was you doing it. Go. Um, hey, hey. So as Holy Paladins, you also get Holy Radiance now, which does build, um, it b builds Holy Power, but is also now actually, it, you've got an, a proper AoE heal. Outside of just Light of Dawn, you know, you, you've actually got a combo builder that's an AoE. It's not efficient. Obviously, it, it's not efficient at all, but, you know, you'll use it in, in dire needs. Um, but your general healing changes. So, like, Flash of Light... Basically, all healers go through the same um, the same changes where your your fast heal is generally very very inefficient. You know your slow heal is very efficient. So like holy light is what you're going to be spamming. You know like that that's just going to be what you you just holy light because it's nice and efficient, but it don't do a lot. And then you're gonna have flash of light, which is quick but mana efficient and does a decent amount. And then you've got your really big heal, which is divine light. Uh, which costs a shitload, but heals a, a lot as well. And then every healer's AOE heals are substantially more, uh, like more mana costly. Yeah, a lot more inefficient. Um, and then also Seal of Insight replaces Seal of uh, Wisdom and Seal of Light, where it's combined into one thing. Um, same with Resistance Auras. There's no longer Fire, Shadow, everything. Like it's all just on one. Uh, and I think that's probably about where I want to leave it. We can't talk much more about Paladin. We need to move on. What what was, uh, unless anyone has got just final remarks on Paladin? I mean, you kind of touched on it, Scotty. Like, they don't really seem like the main tank or the main off tank. So, like, tanking-wise, I'd be scared if... I heard, like, if I was reading Reddit posts and stuff like that, like, do I have a raid spot as a um, a paladin, like a prop pally? Like, what? where do they shine it as a paladin tank? And the same thing for the holy pally, because it used to be almost mandatory to have one, if not three, for, like, an Algalon fight. And now I'm hearing priests are kind of still have their spot, but maybe paladin has gone a little bit lower on the prio for healers. I think you're still going to see Protection Paladins being main tanks. Yes, Blood DK, like, you know, pure single target, self, self-sufficiency, self everything you're still going to see. But obviously a prop Paladin does still bring DSAC. It's not quite as it worked before, but it's still 20% raid reduction, uh, damage reduction for six seconds. Um, their threat, their AoE, like AoE threat, single target, even though threat's still less of an issue. Um, I, I do, and our, our defenders also changed, so it's on a three minute cooldown now, but pretty much does the same thing. Um, but it does also reduce damage, but will still save you from death. Um, I genuinely think it's gonna your main tank's gonna be a prop paladin or or a blood DK, uh, and, and it's gonna come down to like me personally. If it was the choice between having, um, I'm not gonna use names, but like a a a a a, a, a reasonable blood DK. Or an exceptional prop paladin, I would take the exceptional prop paladin. You know, I would I would take Flo on his paladin tanking over, let's say, you go on a on a blood DK. <laughs> you know, 
you don't know blood DK, so I, so I feel all right saying that. Um, Holy Paladin again. Like when I say they're not the go-to, like you're you're going to have a Holy Paladin in every twenty-five man, maybe even two. Uh, but like when I, what I was referring to before was ten man specifically. You know where ten man is like Holy Paladin, this priest. Like they're they're, they're the two in yeah. Wrath. You know you take those together. It, like for progress, even for farm before you're going down to one healer. Um, in in cat, I, I just don't see it being like that in ten man specifically. But in twenty five man, I would want a holy paladin in every group. I, I wouldn't run a twenty five man group without a holy paladin in there. So, uh, but in a in a ten man where it's a lot more flexible, and what you're trying to actually do is bring more. You know, you're trying to bring as much to the raid with 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 less. You want the this priest because they bring damage. You know, they they bring bubble. We're going to get to all that stuff. Um, and then the resto druid is bringing a combat res that you might need, depending on your comp. Uh, you, you know, like the resto druid for what they bring versus what the paladin will bring if you've got a rep paladin is just less. So it's awkward with 10 man, you know, on what you would actually bring. But 25 man, no, you'd have a holy paladin in every single raid. And I, I still think most 10 mans will see a holy paladin, if I'm honest. But yeah. All right. Well, uh, Majay has to bounce out. Let's uh, take care of him and let him get some sleep, probably. Right, Majay? Uh, no, no. I'm raiding and like. Oh, raiding! Oh my four. gosh. Let's talk no, about. Let's let's talk about Wilmer where you're raiding. Or... Let's yeah. not. Let's let's just leave it there. I think. Um, Wait yeah. on on wrath. No, no, no. We can't leave no. it there. What? No, I'm not raiding the wrath. Oh, Final Fantasy. Oh, tell me it's not FF. He's going to raid on Final uh, Fantasy. Oh, you peasant. I was going to link his <laughs> YouTube so you could go check him out and no, remind not everybody now. that you can go back to the start of the show and listen to his breakdown of how Shaman is going to be in Cataclysm. But I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, instead. That's fair. <laughs> no, Majay, thanks for coming on. I know it was last minute. Always a pleasure having you, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me and uh, enjoy. I'll keep chinning in. I'll just be uh, naked. Cheers, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, take it easy. Just leave the camera yeah. on and, yeah, just mute your mic. Just leave the cam there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take it easy, Jay. Right, I'm going to sort the cams See out. Later. See you later, mate. Uh, right, well, go. You're going to you're gonna lead us into... I oh, don't need to sort the cams out. It just worked instantly. Look at that. It's as if I was prepared. Oh, uh, what is the next class? So we've done Shaman, we've done Rogue, we've done Paladin. Maybe we're not going to get through all these tonight, Let, uh, unless we do them a lot quicker. But now I'm not going to talk as much now. It's not Paladin. Do we get to Mage? Well, nobody, I don't think anybody's going to talk much on this class because the next class is looking like Hunter. So we've got Hunter and then Druid, and then it's our choice after that. Hunter, then Druid, then our choice. Okay, so I'll, I'll move Paladin to the bottom. Um, and while I'm doing this, just a reminder, um, if you want your class to be next, super chat, ask a question, do whatever you want to do, but just make sure you put a Ooh. class in there. Fine. We did have a super chat that went by, and I hope I can scroll back up on YouTube because I can't on our chat link. And uh, Jonathan had asked... Uh, off tank feral how many one tank fights in phase one 10 man heroic curious how much full cat there they'll be and majay did kind of answer that as a like in in the chat and said there's three one tank fights i can think of in phase one 10 man heroic every other fight you'd be bare for at least part of the fight does that sound accurate scotty uh yeah, yeah, Magmore, you would do a little bit, but it's mostly one tank. Uh, Omatron, you'd need two. Oh, I say you'd need two. You don't, but then they're too close. You can't cleave. So yeah, we'll say two. Chimera, on again, you, like you'd be cat for a lot of it. Uh, just work my way through. Meloriac. Uh, depends how you're gonna do that fight, but uh, we'll say you're off tanking. Uh, Nefarian, you're going to be off tanking. I'm sure one, one, just one tank fights without seeing new, new strategies that we discover in in you know classic. Yeah, there's there's really there's not that many. Uh, twin dragons, you you can one tank. Uh, just thinking phase one. 
I mean, a lot of them, a lot of them, you could probably find ways to one tank. But like, you know, if we're talking like progress, you know, first couple of weeks, I think you're, you're going to find yourself as a feral being like off tanking fairly regularly. Atromedes, one tank. Yeah, Atromedes, Alakir and twins. Yeah, yeah, twin dragons. Yeah. Yeah, I, Atromedes was the only one that I just didn't mention there and because uh, <laughs> I forget that it's a boss. Uh, mainly because mainly it's, it's it's an amazing boss, but it's not really not really a boss. So yeah, but uh, like others, I have no doubt we're going to find ways to solo tank. As I say, like Omatron, I reckon you'll be able to solo tank if you if you really wanted to, but you're going to have to have DPS that can control their self. So, uh, but yeah, as a feral, the thing is, you are only going to be needed for small portions of the fight. So but we'll we'll get onto that when we get to Druid. But thank you for the super chat. If you want to see your class up next, you know what to do. For now, we're going to talk about Hunter. Uh, uh, right, right off the bat, I'm just seeing like the spells that they get, the new abilities and camouflage. I fucking in, I hated it because they got to be invisible. Because as an arena player, PvP, or like I said, I used to do back in the day. I remembered hunters being able to move around slowly in stealth, like out of the gates of the arena room, and I. I I I hated that, but maybe it has some PVE value. Probably not. But uh, what other changes, Scotty, with the the hunter? Well, I mean, camouflage is not exactly stealth, um, and it, and it's not exactly useful. I mean, you can still be seen. You know, it's not oh, was stealth. it like that? Okay, okay. It it, it, re it, it reduces it like turns you gray or something. Yeah, it reduces the range that what uh, what people see you. But I, I've even. Like I, I've even tried to abuse this uh, in terms of solo in dungeons, and it may say that it reduces range, but trust me, you ain't getting past anything. Still, it's like it is not stealth. Uh, so yeah, but it just makes you harder to see. Oh, it's stealth while stationary. So like, yeah, if you start to move, then you kind of have that outline like the Predator in whatever that movie is with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, yeah, yeah, e Predator. exactly. Predator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Predator. Yeah, that's my brain movie, what's it called? Yeah, yeah. That, that's my yeah. Brain the thing is, camo gets really good in later expansions when uh, essentially it's a, a group wide stealth. Um, I remember in a lot, a lot of fights where you popped that and you had all your, 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 your raged huddle around the nearest hunter and you had a druid maybe, uh, was it Roar of the Wild or some shit, and they just sprint past all the ads. Then it's amazing. But before you get to that stage, it is just a bit crap. I... Hunter... <laughs> DK's my baby. Hunter is my first ever main, first ever class. I, I know this class inside and out without even thinking. Never touched the bloody thing once until it became um, a raid-wide thing, at which point, oh yes, it's suddenly useful. Otherwise, it was that thing I did when I was bored in Stormwind. It just, it's pointless. And that's the level 85 uh, spell that or ability that you can spend gold on if you really want to. I mean, it's, it's still good yeah. in places. You know, if we're talking PvP, you know, uh, like you said, when you stood still, if you're, like, defending lumber mill or something you know what i mean like you're, you're doing a battleground and you can literally stand in you, you've got a stealth as long as you don't move you know like and you can you know like fire traps off or, or whatever you know it whilst in stealth without it taking you out so you know it's useful for pvp but pve there's i mean the, there's the zero zero uses that i can really think of it uh, and as I say, I yeah. personally have tried. I was like, oh, I wonder if I can, you know, like skip trash pack solo and, and solo stuff with camo and it don't work. And, and by the way, I, I, I love I love the Hunter in Cat. Like genuinely, it's one of the it's one of one of the most geared characters I've got on on private servers because it is it really is fun. I forgot yeah. that you played a Hunter a little bit in Wrath, Scotty. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, I was a main hunter for the back end of yeah. Alduar and and all of TOGC. Um, it's coming back to me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I like hunter, but I do get bored of hunter very quick, uh, just because I find it a a little bit a little bit. I'm not going to say easy to play, but just I I don't I've never liked pet classes. 
you know, I don't like Warlock. I don't like Hunter. Like, I don't like pet classes. But my main, Same. when Lone Wolf came in originally, I, I it was a Hunter. Like, if I go, if I went on retail now, like my Hunter, which is called Arrowed, uh, yeah, um, it's uh, it's got full challenge mode gear and like, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. But that was because I could get rid of the pet. So, like, uh, as soon as I can get rid of the pet, and I'm, I'm happy. And it's not because of the whole controlling the pet. You know, that's fine. I've got no problem with controlling a pet. Um, it's just, like, I'd rather the class was a bit more complicated and less about, like, oh, oh my God, the hunter just pulled because he didn't have his pet on passive. Well, the hunter didn't just pulled because he didn't dismiss his pet. It's like, I'm trying to drink, mate. I'm streaming. I'm getting hammered. I don't really care about any of that. I'll tell you what, I just won't use a pet. How does that sound? <laughs> That was a thing in original vanilla. I remember that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember that for years. If you were a, a known shitter, you were told to not use your pet. <laughs> yeah, that that's um, me. <laughs> uh, but uh, so hunter in general, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, there, there's BM, Mark, and Survival, and I didn't think that sub spec for Rogue would be a PVE spec, so. Uh, if hunter has the same uh play style survival must be the main dps spec for uh pvp or pve in uh kata right definitely survival. looking that way yeah it's it's going to be the big boy you might see the odd marksman here or there certainly as the expansion goes on as well um but survival is going to be the bread and butter for hunter and Beastmaster is once again relegated to that thing that you point and laugh at at the local fair. Um, if you see a BM in a raid, you're in for a bad time. Uh, the thing is, BM isn't necessarily a, a bad spec in and of itself. It's just the others are just better. Um, BM's actually quite cool, and it does revolve around the pet doing a lot of damage. But why bother with the pet that can wander off and get stuck on a ledge when you can just blow stuff up? And a lot of BMs talk, it also works quite nicely in PvP, more often than not, so you might see more of them there. But yeah, survival is going to be the majority of hunters in the open world. Uh, anything else is a bit weird. And the biggest change, obviously, for hunters is you now go on to focus. Uh, like, it, it, no yes. longer mana, it's now focus. Uh, it feels great. Like, it really does feel great. You're, you're still filling your focus bar up with, well, now Cobra Shot, not Steady Shot. Um, but it, it genuinely does feel really good. But Hunter gets a lot of changes. Like, at first glance, you'll look at it and be like, right, so I've got a focus bar instead of a mana bar. And you'll look at the abilities and you'll be, or oh, talents, and you'll be like, yeah, we know what that is. You know, as BM, we you know we, we know what Beastial Wrath is. We know what Beast Mastery is, Beast Within, all of that. Like, on the face of it, things don't change that much. And especially, like, even if you look at Marksman, you know, you're still getting Chimera Shot, Master Marksman, like all, all of these things that you're used to. But like the Master is a huge and the AOE potential for survival gets even bigger because now when you mm. use multi shot, like you, you can you'll apply Serpent Sting to everything. Uh, just as an example, um, you'll still be like, I'm not going to say trap weaving because you're going to have trap launcher, but you know, you're still going to use traps on AOE. You're still going to be using Black Arrow on single target. Um, but the, 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 the there's a lot of utility that changes massively. You know, so like you don't no longer need to go... Like there's there's no aim... Well, there's aim shot, but like for Marksman. But, you know, you don't go... You don't need aim shot to reduce healing anymore. You know, so like the utility of, of the... Where it was like, oh, to, I have to take aim shot and keep aim shot up to be able to... Yeah, reduce healing on a boss, which there's plenty of bosses that heal. Uh, obviously, that goes into an, a well, not obviously, but it goes into Widow's Venom now. So you know, instead you've got a like Sting uh, type ability that will keep that up. Although, why is it in? Why well, it's in BM? Seems weird, but uh, like a Venom is shot that reduces the effectiveness of any healing taken for thirty seconds. So it's a low focus cost. You know. Yeah, a, a, a widow venom. It's like your aim shot, but you don't need aim shot. But obviously, the healing reduction is not in aim shot anymore. So, like a lot of things have just shifted about. Um, but uh, carrot in terms of like new abilities, do you want to cover any of, any of the new abilities? No, yeah, hold on, let me get my hunter up. 
Um, well, we got Cobra Shot, which I think was mentioned earlier. That is your, your filler now. Because Hunters use Focus and not Mana, Aspect of the Viper is no more. So to regen um, your Focus, you just spams it, um, Cobra Shot, and that's kind of all it does. And I believe, let me look, yes, it does do um, a bit of an interaction with Serpent Sting where it increases its duration. So essentially you should pop Serpent Sting once on an, a target and it will just refresh with Cobra Shot. So it kind of streamlines the... Uh, rotation a bit you aren't going back and pressing the same things you were at the beginning of the fight um you put your dots up and then just press your fillers and it does that nicely uh we've covered camouflage which is just a bit meh but as far as i'm remembering and seeing most of the abilities for hunter are the same it's just as you say they might be a bit reworked but if you've played a hunter before, the, these abilities, you're going to recognize them. You're going to know what they do. Um, but yeah, that is basically it as far as new abilities go, I think. I mean, one of it's them was the obviously shot. complete, oh, completely ruined. Fox. I forgot about Aspect of the Fox. Um, aspect of the Fox is the new aspect, and that just allows you to shoot while moving. It's the Spirit Walker's Grace of the Hunter world, um, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're yeah, going to lose yeah, the other yeah, benefits. Yeah, that. But yeah, it does mean like you're not punished for movement. You're not going to be... Well, I mean, you are punished for movement because you're going to lose the attack power from aspects of the Hawk. But, you know, you're, you're still being able to generate focus. Um, but, but well, I mean, one big thing which uh, like it is kind of irrelevant now is Trap Launcher. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but it's just yeah. kind of irrelevant now because Hunter's got it in Wrath for whatever reason. You know, to 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 help or alleviate the whole trap weaving play style, um. But yeah, you you ordinarily would get trap launcher where, um, at the moment you can only in in wrath god. I, I like when it when it came in was just when I was on my my outward, um, playing of my hunter. But I'm pretty sure it is only explosive trap, right? That you, you like it's like. Uh, they're, they're... There is a freezing arrow, which is basically the same thing, where you just fire a freezing trap down. But yeah, it only works on explosive trap. Um, but in Kata, it should work on all traps. Yeah, just any any trap you want to use next. So the chances are you're going to macro all of your traps to have a trap launcher variant um, and just forget about the placement one, because what's the point? Um, though saying that trap launcher does have a cooldown... Um, what is it? Where are you, you kid? Uh, it's, a, it's, only... ah, it's a very short call now. So I was thinking it was 15 seconds. Yeah, it's only one, one and a half um, seconds. Yeah, so it's likely that you're just going to macro all of your traps to have Trap Launcher because there's no point not. Even if you want to put it down at close range, it's better to control where it goes rather than it being close range but on the wrong side of where you want it. Um, so that is going to be a thing that any sensible hunter does. But I think, actually, um, if memory serves, because at the minute in Wrath, Black Arrow is ironically the black sheep of the Hunter talent family. You don't really want to use it because it's not as good as Explosive Trap, which it shares a cooldown with. But according to my guild's hunters, um, Black Arrow now trumps it in, in single target scenarios, because right now you will just drop that trap for all sorts. Like, unless the boss is moving so continuously that you're never going to get a trap tick off, you will Black Arrow it. But if it's going to stand still, you will still use explosive um, trap. But I do believe that Black Arrow, single target with no like cleave or anything, um, does finally trump it, which makes sense. Otherwise, it's just another dead talent for this expansion. Yeah. Um, the the uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the the like hunter really outside of the focus bar, it don't change much. Even I'm sat here like there's gotta be something else I can mention. Like I've played a, a lot of hunter in Kata, but quite honestly, like outside of the mastery where survival is what you would expect, where you know your your mastery is going to increase magical damage because you're doing a lot of like poison and and magic damage. Uh, mark oh, mar I mean marksmanship's interesting. Obviously, wild quiver where it gives you a chance for your ranged attacks to also instantly fire an additional shot. So, like, that's quite cool. 
Uh, and BM, unfortunately, unless we see something pretty special happen, um, it, yeah, it just increases the damage of your pets. Like, it's quite boring. And, and BM will still be in Kata, like, the leveling spec, if you like. You know, it's still it's still going to be what you use because it, it just it will be more efficient. But then what you've got to remember is there's less group quests and like elites that actually require, you know, the beauty of, of Hunter has always been like you can solo hard quests because you've got a pet and you can heal it and you can do a lot of damage. There's less of that in Cat, so it becomes less important. Um, But like Hunter is so much fun. Uh, again, like I don't want to put anyone off. They don't change much, but like they're fucking pumpers, and I mean it. Like they are absolute pumpers the entire way through on single target AOE, small cleave, big cleave. Like they uh, survival hunters do really, really remarkable damage, and they keep all the stuff that you enjoy. They keep all like you know the lock and load procs. They now I can spread poisons instead of like, you know, feeling like trap is the only form of damage you're getting. Hunting party, you know, increasing melee uh melee re and range attack speed by ten percent. You know, so you're actually bringing buffs without needing to worry about the pets pet buffs. Uh but you also as BM, which again I, I do see it happening, is you can fill any raid spot. Literally any any raid spot. Your your guild hasn't got a hasn't got a bloodlust because it hasn't got a shaman or a mage. Oh yeah, you, you can bring a BM hunter. Yeah, you've not got Sunder Armor or Fairy Fire or Expose Armor. I don't know how. Um, but then you can bring like Rend Flesh. I think it's called. Um, y you know, like you can literally just bring any buff or debuff that you need to bring. And I'm not saying that's a reason, you know, to play a hunter, but I think that's pretty nice. That you know, if you're quite yeah. a small guild and you can just cover anybody, and you'll still do half decent damage as BM. Yeah, you're not going to be doing the damage you'd be doing if you're survival, but maybe whatever buff you're bringing is important enough to allow other people to do enough damage to warrant your raid spot. You know what I mean? So it's just one way to look at it. Um, the the only thing I want to mention is is glyph. Uh, I've not mentioned glyphs much on any any classes, but the hunter glyphs. Um, one of them in particular is amazing, which is kill shot. So, like kill shot, we we, we all know what kill shot is. Um, but you can use it twice. So when it, like if you kill shot and it doesn't actually kill the target, it resets. So you can use it again instantly. So you can like double execute every six seconds, which is like well ten seconds, but obviously it resets and then it's got a six second cooldown. So it like. It's not massive. None of the glyphs, when you look at them for any spec, that's why we're not really talking about them because it's like increases critical strike chance or increases periodic critical strike chance. They're they're all quite boring, but like glyph of kill shot is just just a really nice one where you can just double kill shot. Um, and I'd say that's Hunter. So based on the super chats that we received, go what? Unless you guys have got anything else on Hunter, I. I've really been trying to think hard about anything that's big enough to warrant like spending time on, but it's like you say, it doesn't change much. It it, it does what it does now. Like it, damage is going to be in a similar place. The abilities are more or less the same. The specs are in the same position they are now. Like yeah, the big thing is focus, but you're not going to notice it really. Just generate a cobra shot and jobs done. Oh, one thing, and this is this is I'm genuinely asking. I'm not like trying to start off a conversation. Does Trank shot in Wrath dispel magic? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, because magic dispel hunt is weird. It used to be arcane shot. Um, um, and then it got moved to Trank shot. Right. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, so that's the same as well. I couldn't remember if it was just in Rage. Like, I don't remember ever using it, actually, in, in Wrath to dispel a magic effect. But if Yeah, if I'm remembering correctly, in vanilla, Trank Shot was just Enrage. Arcane Shot was just Arcane Shot. In TBC, Trank Shot was Enrage. Arcane Shot was Magic Dispel. And then in Wrath and beyond, uh, they all got merged into Trank Shot. 
Yeah, all the, all the guys in chat are like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's using PvP all the time. I, I don't PvP on a hunter. <laughs> yeah. In, in Wrath, I, I raided. And I that, get that my was it. shit dispelled. Yeah, uh, it, it's frustrating seeing a proc proc up and then a hunter's just like, ah, yeah, bye. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, like I, yeah, I, I'm no master hunter. Played a lot of hunter in Kata, but in in Raf, it was only a couple of tiers, and and that was it. Uh, so go based on the super chats that we've had. What's the next class? We have currently mage. If we're giving points per dollar per euro, mage has seven, druid has five, and then the other classes we haven't gotten to is lock warrior. DK and priest. So we've already covered shaman, paladin, rogue. We're finishing up hunter here, and it looks like mage is going to be next. Mage is next. Okay, so if one of those classes that haven't been covered yet, you want it, you know what to do. Pay for daddy's dream. Uh, right, let's get <laughs> let's get hunter for the bomb. Uh, so we're doing mage. Okay. And that's what you're planning on maining, Scotty? That's what I mained in the past. I should know a lot about this, but my memory is so bad. Uh, oh, I, I remember I think you to remind first. everybody how bad my memory is, but I, I looked up a video. Uh, I had an old YouTube channel. I looked it up the other day, and I was in, uh, not Twin Peaks, Battle for, no, not Gilnay. What's the, there's two new Battlegrounds. Twin, Peak. not Twin Peaks. Twin, Twin Peaks and Battle one. for Gilnay. <laughs> Yeah, this battle you, for you, yeah, you had them. Okay, all right. So uh, it was the best clip that I could have ever gotten. And it's like eight years old, 10 years old, whatever it is. And it was like the heating up procs was just perfect. I think I cast like three scorches or something like that. So it was like crit, crit, crit. I had an instant pyro and the heating up. I hit the um, a fireball into that instant cast fireball or pyroblast. So both of those. I got crit. no idea what you're saying at the moment. It don't sound like it don't sound like no. a fire mage and cat. <laughs> no. What is what is the fire mage and cat? There's no heating up procs or nothing like that. Or like uh, instant pyros. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously you have got instant pyros, but if you got three crits in a row and it took three crits to get an instant pyro, I would be like, what is this no, private no. server I'm playing? I on? had an instant pyro and I had a heating up proc, so it was like. When you say heating I had, up, I had, like, what do you mean? You get a heating up proc, right? And then hot streak. you you get a hot streak. Okay, so you get a hot streak, and then you get a heating up proc, and I guess that's what's the instant pyro. Yeah, so, so you need another... two. You need two. You get a little, little. You get a little sort of semi-circle ar yeah. around you on either side. Yeah. But I I had the instant pyro and like the halfway point to getting my second one after three crits in a row. Okay. So what, yeah, what happened? My verbiage is terrible. Did, did you did you win? I, I just crit Did fucking everything. Win? I deleted, a, you I deleted a warrior in like six seconds. It was it was amazing. All right. So, so that, that's that's my knowledge of uh, mage. Well, uh, so insane crowd control. You get like ring of uh, frost. You get deep freeze. Oh, you get so all these things. Yeah. Well, we've you, established you you're the pro. Do it. Go. All of it. All of it. I'm gonna just sit here and drink and listen to you. Tell us all about oh, mage. No. No. That that's it. That's all I got. You have time warp. Do you, you have your same invis? You have a uh, mirror image. You got all the things. You got combustion. But that, that that's really all I remember. I, I'm trying. I'm gonna play a mage. Like I I started leveling a mage on Wrath right now as part of my cata prep. It's level fifteen, I think. I wanted to get it to where I could just like queue RDF as soon as the pre patch launched. So I'm there. I used to play undead or gnome. You know, gnome mage this and sasha i know i know exactly what it was getting at i just like winding him up <laughs> I, just, <laughs> oh. I, I just enjoy watching him squirm <laughs> like what can i say oh i was squirming i was like fuck <laughs> that, that's why it was fun so i was like i knew exactly what he meant damn it. But i was picking him up on every miss word just I everything was like, i was I like oh so what would you mean by that go uh, how to yeah. I was like, I know my memory's bad, but it's not that bad, is it? Goddamn. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, Car again, I'm going to do the same as I did with Paladin. Like, I'm going to try and take a backseat on this for a minute, at least, and and let you let you guys get your mage knowledge thrown out there, and then and then I'll go. Because, like Go said, obviously my my at least second main, you know, is in. I'm going to have two mains, uh, and what one of them is a mage, and I've been doing a lot of mage on Cata Beta, so. I'd rather use go first, and then I'll jump in and, and fill any gaps. 
The only thing I'm really up to snuff at the minute is fire, because uh, mage is going to be one of my uh, go-to, uh, well, it's one of my three mains in the expansion. I did know a lot about arcane. I have since forgotten it all. But fire, I love fire. I'm happy to go on record as saying fire mage is the most fun spec in the entire expansion. It is mind-boggling fun. And in terms of the abilities fire gets, it's all stuff you're going to recognize. Nothing here is overly new. I mean, you do get, uh, what's it, Flame Orb later on. Um, but pretty much everything else is recognizable to someone who's played a mage up to this point. But Blast Wave, for example, you, you're now going to take Blast Wave. It now can be cast at range. And if it hits more than three targets, two targets or something, it also flame strikes the area so you get to this stage as fire mage where you are just nuking the world around you um single target is pretty simple you pop a scorch on for um not improved scorch is called it's uh fire star or critical mash or something um which is basically just more damage to the boss and then you just pump out all your, your fireballs and your pyroblasts and you laugh like a madman and yeah you can spread your dots and stuff with uh, impact and fire blast but if you like something blowing up, Fire Mage is the best thing you can play. And in terms of iteration, honestly, my favorite spec. Because they've taken something that worked and made it work better. It's just a god of a spec. And I cannot wait to be playing it. It's why I wanted to main Mage, because I would have the most fun on this class, and I know it. But all my arcane knowledge just vanished. I have I have one issue with fire, but I'm going to leave it to the end. Um, not not the end of the podcast, the end of this mage ma mage bit, because uh, I I do have one big issue with fire, and I love fire. Like I, I'm with you. I think it's one of the most fun specs. Um, it's why my um, I'm an 85 fire mage in. I'm not going to say full pre raid bis, but my mage is ready to raid. Every single slot is at least three, four, six. So at least five man heroic on the beta. But I'm ready to go. Open raids. I'm, I'm jumping in. Um, even though combustion's not working on the beta. There's a lot of things that are not working. Um, I love RNG specs. If you love RNG specs where you can do the same boss, let's say Marugar. We'll, we'll just pick a boss. Let's say Marugar in ICC. If you like being able to do Marugar, and over four weeks, every week your damage looks completely different, you're going to love Fire Mage. You know, the stars align and you blast. The stars don't align and you're like, oh, that felt bad. You know, if you can deal with the lows, then the highs are worth playing fire. Shall I just get my problem out of the way now? Because, like, the, 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 the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is yeah. Pyro, it's that... Pyromaniac. Like, Pyromaniac basically is, is like make or break, like, fire DPS. If there's. A boss and two targets, your damage is going to be substantially higher, and it's not even anything to do with spreading dots or anything like that. It's just, if you've got three targets dotted, you get 10% haste. It's like your bottom talent with four living bomb. So you got, you, you know, you're yeah. going to go deep and you're going to get it, but it's a talent where on 80% of the bosses is absolutely useless. It does nothing. So you're putting two points in deep into your fire tree where you get zero value for a very very big portion of the time when you do get the value it feels great you know 10 percent haste is massive don't get me wrong but when you break down all the fights in in raids there's not there's not like massive amounts of fights where you're actually going to be able to reliably keep pyromaniac up so that that's that's my one big negative with fire mage i love it. It, it yes i absolutely am gonna have it as one of my main mains one of because obviously the way it looks like the raids are going to launch in counter is fairly shy um so i'm going to be raiding on one a lot but that is it like fire would be perfect if pyromaniac was reworked no i can see that and you know i kind of agree when you put it like that it makes yeah i'm with you I was looking at Encanter's absorption in the arcane tree, and it kind of reminds me of, uh, what is it, uh, Alcan Frenzy a little bit, 
When your mana shield or mage ward absorbs damage, your spell damage is increased by 10% of the amount absorbed for 10 seconds. And then it can also have a knockback effect, but it, that kind of type of stuff, like as a boomy previous mage, maybe that's where it came from. Like I kind of like taking a little bit of damage and getting that DPS boost. I don't know if this is when it came into play. Maybe it was in there in Wrath, and I just didn't play Arcane Mage in Wrath, but I like that type of stuff. And then it also has that kind of pendulum stuff, I think, in Kata, where there was something that it was like on a six second thing or something where it would increase your damage by five, 10, 15 percent or something like that. And no, that's what that's, that's that's what that's what okay, Whew. yeah, because I, I didn't care for that. And when uh Majay was talking about that type of thing earlier, I was like, oh shit, is that for mage too? Because I wanted to play mage and that would have turned me off of it a little bit. No, that's what, but you're right, Encanter's absorption is amazing while leveling as well, by the way. Like, I, I leveled. I, I, I was switching it up because it was the beta, so I was like, let's really find out what is the best. I leveled a lot as fire, I leveled a lot a lot as frost, I leveled a lot as arcane. Frost, not so much purely because the pet pet bug uh, on the beta, but arcane and encant encanter's absorption, you know, you're talking even when I was leveling, I don't know, like 81, 82, I was getting like 1k spell power, you know, from encanter's absorption. So yeah, it's sizable. Uh, but the but the the I'll I'll leave my overview. Let, let's let, let let you both of you like cover. Let talk. Let's talk about the new abilities and everything. Because no, I just want to talk about the playstyle difference between um, arcane and fire. Frost, honestly, it's still your PvP spec, and I, I don't think there's any surprise there. Can you PvE as Frost? Yeah, probably. But will you? No. You'll you'll be arcane at low levels of crit. You'll be fire once you feel like you've got enough crit to play fire. I'm going to be slightly different and probably bypass um, Arcane altogether, and, and I intend on playing Fire from the word go because I, I genuinely. I, I think, I'm yeah. with you on that one. Yeah, I, I don't see the, I, I the just... damage difference uh, being that big. Where it's like, ah, I'll take the Not RNG. Not like in previous expansions, certainly, and I'll just live with it. I I can play Arcane, but I would rather just be Fire. It's it's more fun and. For me, there's a certain level of, yeah, this might be better for X amount of weeks, but I'm having more fun being the weirdo saying things on fire. I'm just going to roll with that. As long as I ain't dead, I'm not a problem. So yeah. mages now get time warp, which it looks like it's a five minute cooldown. So like bloodlust and everything across the board's probably been reduced to five minutes. Isn't it 10 minutes right now on Wrath? No, it's maybe, still 10 minutes. Eight? It's still ten minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah, so well, as in, so it's, a, it's, a five, it's a five. It's a five minute cooldown, but a ten minute debuff. Oh, okay, okay. For oh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, so you, you uh, can... but yeah, mages, mages can now do that. It's not just strictly shaman. So uh, there's also ring of frost. I touched on that earlier. Not really a big use in PVE, but huge for PvP. Uh, unless you're trying to control ads or sell dungeon boost then maybe ring of frost has a little bit of value oh, oh but, no, uh, no 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 so right i'm gonna i'm gonna i, I need to chime in here because ring of frost me. chime it in ring of frost is literally the best spell that mages get fuck time warp who cares time warp i want to put it out <laughs> there for any mage enjoyers time warp is a curse you don't want time warp it's a gcd in your opener that you've got to waste to buff everyone else who wants to do that shit let the shaman do it like, and I mean this. I feel really strongly about this. It feels so bad when you've got so many GCDs as a mage to get up in the like before you really start pumping anyway. You know, as in you need to if you, like, let's say you was pre casting pyro, uh, but let's say it's a fight where you can't. Let, let, let's pretend it's a fight where you can't pre cast pyro. Um, you, you're gonna need to scorch. You're gonna need to get living bomb up. Not in this order. Like you, 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 but. Yeah, these are all the things you've got to do before you can start doing damage. Um, like you're going to berserk in, let's say, berserk in a mirror image. At like They're bound together, whatever. Then you've got a lust. You've got a living bomb. You've got a scorch. You, like You've just used like four or five GCDs before you can now actually start doing your rotation. Everybody else is now on like 25k DPS. And you're like, uh, why is the Disc Priest out damaging me? It's like, no, take Lust away. Get, just leave it with the Shamans. Like, I don't even want it. Uh, but Ring of Frost, 
like that that's it that it may look useless you might look at it and be like yeah it's a great pvp ability but trust me the amount of times i've saved wipes with ring of frost you know or like you know a tank's gone down on trash and i've used ring of frost to just control everything and then that on top of then nova afterwards sheep in something like it adds so so much control that in especially when you place it right in front of you so you place it like in front of you so everything's got to walk through you and you can stand there like i don't give a fuck i'll just stand there and tank it oh wait or will i as they run through they all get froze right in front of you then you know you just run away start nuking now you've still got blink but honestly ring of frost is and i, and I see it it's so underutilized that if you was to ask Flo or jay the amount that i use it in dungeons i use it all the time it's, it's just an amazing control ability um but yeah, most people will look at it as as PvP. But I'd I'd rather get yeah. rid of I'd rather get rid of you know time warp and 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 keep that. See, you're expressing my gripes as a balance druid for the past like at least TBC and Wrath, uh, in even classic putting up fairy fire. That's one of my GCDs. That's not adding to my personal damage. Like and now if mage has to do it sorry mages you've gotten fed innervates to be able to pump in your arcane mage spec so you didn't have to evocate sorry for you having to use time warp now i don't feel bad if i switch to mage uh, i'll hit the time warp button it is what it is uh, i've been through it before i'm, See, I'm, I'm kind of immune I'm to this gcd thing yeah and i i'm complaining unnecessarily carrot like, i don't really mean it of course i would rather bring time warp than not bring it but it, it, it honestly it does you know i, I know how shamans feel now like you know it, it it's like great yeah we're bringing well, in we've I got mean. time warp but it does suck at the same time when you're i played an ellie in tbc when every totem had to be put down individually every two minutes so <laughs> i'd start a fight and if they moved it too far away it's like right let's move and one and two and three and four, and then go. And oh, they've moved again. Okay, and one, and two. Uh, so at this point, I'm just like, oh, one GCD? Oh, that's, I'm, I'm fine with that. I can live with that. I've been through hell and back. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's fair. Um, other, uh, other, so other abilities go? Or oh, Karen, oh, Flame even. Orb. No, fl tell me about Flame Orb, because I think this is one that you shoot out from you, and it hits targets in its path, and it looks like it's gone through a bunch of changes since it uh, released originally in Kata, and now it doesn't, like, hit critters, it doesn't break CCs and stuff like that, but is it worth, uh, like, the damage of it, like, shooting it out? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely using it, oh, yeah. yeah, as all specs, yeah, and it's, you know, got a chance of proccing clear casting as well, so... Yeah, I mean it's it's great, and, and it's it's altered by talents. You know, obviously, if you're if you're fire, it will explode. So, um, where's the talent there? Five Basically hour. Basically, the blood count at that point. Yeah, yeah. So your orb will do a hundred percent chance to explode. Um, at, at the end of its duration, and obviously, if you are frost, it turns into frost fire orb. So it's a slow the entire way it's moving through as well. So no, it's it's amazing. Yeah, like there's I've got nothing bad to say about that other than you know, it's grand. At the moment on the beta it don't work. It will literally just go and it will it will fire at full speed, like 150% speed. It just fires along and pulls everything in its path. <laughs> like it's it's kind of fucked up. Uh but when it works how it's actually meant to work, it's good and it looks great as well. You know, uh, but what like this what you're looking at now is how it's meant to work. It's meant to get to a target and then, like, just keep, yeah, keep bang, 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 shooting at it. And, like, you can see it can prop trinkets and everything. Like, it, it, it's really good. But if you're playing the beta as a fire mage and you see it just fly in front of you and pull stuff, that is not how it's meant to work. It will pick a target once it gets near something and then just hover around there. But yeah, great, great addition. Love it. And PvP, Frostfire Orb as Frost, is, is huge. Um, but yeah, there was a few interesting comments in chat about fire being like really strong in PvP, and I'll just be completely honest with you all. Like I, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I haven't PvP'd in Cata as a mage. I'll take your word for it that fire is the PvP spec for more than uh, just jewels. I, I think this was the the era of like the mage like meta 
and the, 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 a fire mage I can think of is uh, Hansel, Hansel, however you wanted to say it, and he was like a beast fucking fire mage. And uh, there was the arcane dream from Mitch Jones. You might have heard of him. Uh, Watch me blink. So you could almost pick any mage spec, I think, back then and be able to pump and do the whole 42 and 0 2v2 grind. And that didn't happen often. But uh, yeah, dude, mage for PvP, I think you could do whatever you wanted and just have a blast. Yeah. Um, so, uh, other uh, like, have you got anything else you want to talk about, Mage? Otherwise, I will just blitz through everything really quick and move on to the next class. Blitz through them. Uh, other than Mage, probably not Pryo for the Legendary Staff. I think we can all agree on that one, right, Scotty? Mm. Depend, depends who your Mage is. I mean, if, I mean, if his name's oh. Scotty J, I'd, I'd probably give it to him, to be fair. And then, and then maybe an, anyone else next i'd give it to the fucking warrior after that to be fair because i wouldn't care mm. <laughs> yeah. i wouldn't care who go, who gets it next um so oh okay really quick uh combustion massive like the difference between a good uh, a mage who can do a good combustion and a bad combustion is going to be like like make or break because it combines all of your fire dots into one dot doesn't consume the dots that are on it um so you know the bigger you can stack your ignite the riskier you get the you know more the closer to the edge that you play the better the combustion you can get but then also you might fuck up not get a crit just before you're ready to pop it your ignite falls off and you're like well i can't use it now uh like it, it, it can, playing around combustion is a big deal and obviously being able to make sure that you've got uh impact ready to spread it if there's multiple targets is huge you know imagine your hardest hitting ability being able to hit unlimited targets absolutely like mental um like carrot already touched on if you go improve flame strike now not only is your flame strike instant which is a great way to bait um i've got no keybind set up on here uh it's a great way to bait uh like impact procs so you can make sure that like if there's multiple targets it, it gives you an increased chance to be able to get impact procs like you want to you want to sit on impact procs and use them when you're ready to use them rather than going oh it's procs quick press fly at fire blast and spread one second of living bomb but no it's all about timing you use it properly hot streak changes to the point where you can actually get an instant pyro from one crit two crits guarantees it one crit you can actually get an instant an instant pyro um the the biggest thing about blast wave as well is it's not in front of you anymore so like you can watch me do it now like i, I you know i, I can cast blast wave at, at range so the only thing that you need to get in melee for now, if you're just trying to do some cleave or AOE or whatever, is Dragon's Breath, which does pretty much the same thing. But it's also nice because it it doesn't actually... So any direct damage attack will revive the targets. But imagine getting like four or five targets and then you get big, big dots up on them, even combust and then spread it with, uh, with impact. You can Dragon's Breath and they will sit with those fucking really hard hitting burns on them for five seconds without breaking as long as they don't get direct damage like honestly that is huge both for pvp and pve so like bear that in mind don't be like oh I've dragon's breath like you know just to maybe interrupt you use it for more than just a, a secondary interrupt now like you use it to just go they're burning dragon's breath boom leave them for five seconds they just melt um uh, anything else, anything else, anything else? Uh, fire is extremely mana efficient as well because not only can you have, like, your Scorch is free, which you will always take improved Scorch, you can also cast it while moving. So, like, you're punished far, far less now for movement because you've always got something to press. And obviously, Scorch can crit and then proc, like, it, it procs impact there, you know, can still proc Pyroblast. You, you can literally do a slightly less output full rotation while moving because you'd be running around scorching putting living bomb up keeping that up maybe then you get an instant pyro you're going to cast that then you're going to you know fire blast to spread it i've now got pyromaniac up so i'm casting them scorches 10 percent quicker you know rinse and repeat they've all blown up bang fire blast spread it again like you 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 don't you're not punished as fire for moving as much of course you're still punished because fireball would be doing more but it's it's just oh, it's cream worthy like it's so good um arcane 
Uh, so Arcane is a weird one, and I do like Arcane. I want to put it out there. I really do like the way Arcane plays, and I think a lot of people will be playing Arcane early purely because without having at least a reasonable amount of crit as fire is going to feel pretty shit. But once you're at like 20%, you're really at like 30%. So also you can't go, oh, when you got 20% crit, this is going to be dog shit. Well, no, your glyphs are going to give you 5% on pyro, 5% on fireball. You're going to get 5% from a wolf, assuming you've got a hunter in a group, for example. Um, like, it, it's not as low as it looks on the character sheet, but it still can feel frustratingly low. Whereas Arcane goes through, like, a, a transformation. Like, it is not like Wrath. You know, now you basically play Arcane in two phases. You have burn and you have pers but like preservation. That's it. You got burn preservation. So when you got all cooldowns up, including um uh that fucking evocation, that thing, then you're just gonna pump arcane blast. You're gonna press nothing but arcane blast. Uh, but when you haven't got evocation ready and everything's on cooldown, now you're gonna go much more mana preservation. You'll do a couple of arcane blasts, throw in an arcane missiles. Uh, and your mana will go up because mage armors change drastically. And, and that's like the biggest change for mages where at the moment you just go molten armor. Like molten armor, I'm going I'm to get crit. When they hit me, I'm going to do some damage. I level with mage armor as all three specs because mage armor gives you so much mana back, it's ridiculous. Um, it literally increases your resistance like you would expect but also you get 4% of your maximum mana every five seconds. So just by having it on, your mana is just going to be going up and up and up and up and up. So using that as arcane in a preservation phase, your the cost of your spells is never going to outweigh the amount of mana you're getting back from mage armor. So your, your, your mana is always going to be going up. You then pair mage armor with leveling as fire, and you've got scorch that's, that's free, yeah, you're never, you're never gonna go home. Like you just don't need to drink with mage armor. You know it's that strong. But if you're doing something that's slightly more difficult, obviously you can go ice armor, or well frost armor, uh, which now reduces physical damage taken by fifteen percent. So if you've got something that's in your face and you can't get rid of it, you've now got like your big, like more tanky. Like I need to be taking some some physical like slaps to the face. You've got frost armor. And then obviously you, you've still got molten armor as well, which just yeah increases critical strike chance by three percent, uh, reduces the chance to be crit as well. So you, you're almost crit immune. It only reduces the chance to be crit by five percent, not six. So you're not quite crit immune, but nearly. Um, and you can only have one at a time. But but you will actually use them all, like as as any spec at any given time, which I really like. That's a big change for mage. You know, where depending on what you're fighting depends on what you'll use. What you're if you're farming, like mage armor's amazing, no matter what spec. Because that's fair, like three percent crit. Yeah, that's great. But like, do you want three three percent crit when you're out in the world farming as a as a fire mage? I uh, it's gonna be nice, but it's not gonna make that much difference when you're just spreading loads of dots on everything and just AOEing everything down. You might as well never have to stop and use mage armor. In PvE, you're gonna be using molten armor. As an arcane mage, you'll be using yeah, yeah mage armor like, but you, yeah, you you see what I mean? They're, they're they're very interchangeable depending on what you're actually doing. Um, so like that's a big deal. Uh, obviously, focus magic is only arcane now because it's so deep in the tree. But yeah, arcane is very much pump when you've got everything ready. Let your mage armor deal with your mana to get it back up, and then you're just like just doing a a, a preservation phase. But the way you do a preservation phase is, is because of Arcane Missiles. Like, Arcane Missiles is not a casted spell anymore. Like, I can't just use Arcane Missiles whenever I feel like it. You, 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 you're, like, Arcane Missiles has a chance to proc based on abilities. And as fire, that changes. So you get like a 40% chance. I'm sure it's 40% chance. Let me go to Arcane Missiles so I can actually show you. Um, Launch the Fire Waves. Uh, it has a 40% chance to activate. Uh, yeah, arcane missiles. So any spell you you cast, so uh, you know that's a, that's a, that's a high chance. You know, I'll I'll cast two and it will probably proc. No, maybe three. If I'm sat here all night and it never procs, maybe four. Like it, maybe five. Uh, but uh, something there it's procs, and then you can use arcane missiles. It's completely free, costs no mana, but you know you need that proc to happen. 
So you can already see how mana efficient it is to actually level as Arcane, especially when you throw Arcane Barrage in, which you'll get a level 10, which is an instant cast, massive hard hitting ability on a four second cooldown. You could literally run around and level, and I truly believe it. You could level all the way from 10 to like 80 as a mage, as Arcane, pressing nothing but Arcane Barrage. Like it is, it's, it's very strong. Um, but then for fire, that's where Hot Street comes in. So Hot Streak replaces that Arcane Missiles proc. Do you want me to stop talking, Go? I felt like you wanted to say something. Should I, should I... No, you're cooking, bro. You're fucking cooking. I can't take you off the heat right now. Just let it burn, bro. You're you're going on a, a great little spree here. No, I, I feel like I'm pretty much done. I feel like I've covered enough. Where like Hot Streak yeah, replaces the Arcane Missiles proc, where now instead of it triggering Arcane Missiles... Um, when you crit with a fire spell or frost fire bolt, scorch, pyroblast, fire blast, all of those, you've got a chance for it to become instant cast. And that's what I meant. You don't need two crits in a row anymore to get an instant pyroblast. You got a chance on one. So you could crit and go bang, instant pyro. But if you get two crits, you're guaranteed an instant pyro. Um, and then for frost, honestly, not much has changed. Uh, like I, I, I genuinely feel like it's one of them, other than the fact that you can... Like, you can guarantee Fingers of Frost procs by your pet. So when you freeze, you can get... You can always control the amount of Fingers of Frost procs you're getting. Um, and the, the change to Shatter, which is is is, is sizable as well. Um, because, it, yeah, it, it it's it early on. It's in the first tier of Frost. So if you was going for, like, a PvP fire spec, you know, it just multiplies the critical strike chance of all your spells against Frozen Target by two... Um, and then obviously, yeah, that's that, that's just with one point, uh, and increases damage done by Frostbolt against targets, which you can almost ignore that. But you can benefit from the Shatter effect very early as as Fire, Arcane, or Frost. Um, and oh, and and Frost Elemental. Thank you. I didn't weren't going to mention that Dreamology, so thank you. Um, yeah, you, your Frost, your Frost Elemental is uh, Ice Elemental, Frost Elemental, whatever. You get it at level ten, like, and it's permanent. Well, it it, it is, it is, and it isn't. I mean, if it dies while it's on cooldown, you can't get it out again. So, I mean, it's permanent while it's there, but it's got a three-minute cooldown. So if, if you had it alive and it died in the first minute, you've now got two minutes without it. But, like, that's it's not going to die because also when you cast Frost Spells, if you take the talent, you're going to be able to heal it. Um, Massive control as Frost. Massive control. I, I still think PvP It's going to be incredibly strong, even if... Even if Fire apparently seems to be the favourite amongst chat, uh, I, I think Frost as a PvP spec is still going to be very strong, but PvE probably not so much. Now time to breathe. Mage is done for me, boys. I, I was looking at the tier set for tier 11, and whichever spec ends up actually being on top, like the two set bonus and four set increases the damage for all three, whichever one you decide to go for. So two set increases the critical critical strike chance of arcane missiles ice lance and pyro by five percent four set reduces the cast time of arcane blast fireball frost firebolt and frostbolt by ten percent so if it ends up being somehow that frost is the best pve spec then their their set bonuses are gonna to help them pump yep absolutely have I missed anything, chat, on mages? I, I, I feel like that was quite extensive. There are some really cool talents, you know, where like you don't even need to cast Ice Barrier anymore. It'll do it automatically, or when it goes off, it'll knock back or freeze. Or, you know, there's there's some cool talents, but like uh, overall how all three specs play, new abilities you get. I mean, glyphs are kind of neither here nor there again. Um, I do feel like that's pretty much what you've got to look forward to no but you were saying uh it might have been a couple of shows ago how um, the mage conjure refreshment is like level 38 whereas it used to get uh like be able to get your own food and water earlier and then tonight you were like, well, man, is not really going to be a problem if you're like, yeah, once you've got mage you armor, stuff and... but you won't have mage so, armor. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you haven't got mage armor or conjure water at that point. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, your mana issues go once you've got mage armor. 
Um, but yeah, obviously, and that's not till sixty-eight. Ooh. Yeah, so so it's yeah, you, 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 like that's kind of irrelevant. It's more, uh, and again, you're gonna do it on a on a fight by fight basis or quest by quest basis, like however, however you want to look at it. You know, if I was doing like a really difficult quest, I might use frost armor as a fire mage, just because I want to reduce the damage I'm taking. But actually, the mana that I need is 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 not a problem. Um, you know, do I really need to try and pump hard and not worry about anything? Maybe then it's, you know, um, molten armor. Like, they're, all three of them are now so unique and so useful that it's not as simple as just this spec uses this armor. It's like any spec can use any armor, uh, depending on the situation. Don't get me wrong. The majority of the time, as, as fire, you're going to be in molten. Majority of the time, as... Well, actually, to be fair, majority of the time in 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 frost, you're gonna be probably in molten as well. To be fair, you know, it's like there's yeah, you need to just know what you're using them for. That was the biggest wake it's, up call for me. It's like uh, hunter aspects. Um, most of the time, you're gonna be in aspect of the hawk or dragon hawk in wrath, but there will be times you go viper or. Um, in cat fox, it just depends. You've got to know the situation and get class, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was looking at something that might not have changed. Let me pull it back up here really quick. Uh, focus magic. It looks like it's the same exact thing. So you can still choose somebody to give them 3% extra crit. And then as long as they crit, you also, as the mage, get 3% crit. You have to be arcane. It's oh, further down the tree. Arcane. Yeah, okay. it's it's right at the bottom. So yeah, you you have to be arcane now. You won't see fire mages with arcane uh, with with focus magic. Thank fuck. That buffs a headache and a half. <laughs> I go into a dungeon immediately. FM me. So yeah. you could have said hello. Maybe take me to dinner before I give you all my lovely, lovely buffs. But no, you just demand it of me. Bugger off. Um, that, that, that's gonna be uh, Scotty. He's gonna be at. He's gonna intentionally bring another arcane mage to the raid so that he is fire so I can have, get it. Yeah, focus magic. Yeah. yeah, but I don't just want focus magic. I want di as as well. Oh which... yeah, you want di. You want the the legendary staff. Oh yeah, Dude, yeah Scotty's yeah. gonna be fucking pumping. I am gonna be pumping. If he's a will first mate. I'll be disappointed. <laughs> well, me too. I'll quit. I'll go and play an easier game. Farmville streams coming. Let's go. Um. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm fairly happy with Mage, so should we move on so we can actually try and get through all these classes? Some of them are going to have to be a little bit shorter than what we've been doing, though. So what is, yeah, based, uh... based on the Super Chats, I've not seen a Super Chat for ages. If you want your class to come up before you go to bed, you need to Super Chat with your class. If not, we're just going in order, which goes about to tell us. So we're ha we're at the halfway point here. So we're two and a half hours in. So at minimum two and a half hours to go, right? And we've covered no. mage, rogue, hunter, shaman, paladin. We have priest, DK, warrior, lock, but druid is the next one. Druid is next. Okay. I mean, that sounds like another one where I'm going to be talking a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know where I feel about this. I'm not going to lie. Um, and then again, go. I, I actually no. Uh, I'm not going to be talking a lot. Uh, I, I I think you've got this. So let me move that down. So uh, is the next class our choice? Is it? Has, has anyone super chatted to pick any of the others? No. After we cover druid, uh, it's a toss up for us to choose lock warrior, DK or priest. Okay. Okay. DK's on another account. But yeah. All right. Cool. Uh. So we're going. We're going druid. What? One of my favorites. I'm on the wrong one, aren't I? One of my faves. Uh, go. Le le lead us into it. Oh my god, go. You'll be so proud. Because I'm actually what? I'm actually in Boomy. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, and speaking of Boomy, uh, we get a couple changes. Our Eclipse gets entirely reworked, where whether you're casting Wrath, Starfire, or even Star Surge, it's going to help you get to either lunar or solar it used to be rng and you would hope for a crit and then you would hope that that crit would proc your lunar or solar now you can kind of know when you're going to get into either of those and then our aoe is kind of based off of which eclipse we're in as well 
star um starfall is arcane so you want to be in lunar if you're hitting your starfall uh mushrooms i believe is nature damage and hurricane nature damage so you kind of want to be in lunar if you're casting those but we also get a uh, solar beam we get an interrupt an amazing interrupt for pvp you can have some situations in pve as well to interrupt a caster to get it to come into the the stacked ranged group we also get mushrooms which you can apply before the boss is even pulled and it's great for aoe i've been pumping out mushrooms and the heroics i've been doing with scotty on the beta and it seems to do a lot of damage uh, i don't have a damage meter but i assume every time i i pop that that i'm just topping the charts oh uh yeah it it, it it does a lot of threat too so i'm kind of nervous it's like if i pre-mushroom i'm pretty sure i've got four mobs that are going to be rushing at me trying to hit me which is not a bad thing because that procs Alcan Frenzy, which we still have, and uh, increases our damage by 10% if we get attacked. So, Starfall still there. Uh, we still have Trance, Earth and Moon, a great debuff that we can still bring to apply. Um, what else? Uh, we still have Typhoon. Uh, but a, a lot of people are asking me, where's our damage going to be at and i've heard a couple different things i haven't heard that we're complete shit damage which we are right now uh, i was going to send it to you scotty but go ahead fill up your drink fill hey, up your hey, drink you, you crack on you drink, <laughs> uh so i'm thinking we might be a little bit above mid but we're not going to be top and uh carrot yeah, the thing say? is, with Boomy, I've been hearing stuff as well, and it, it's pretty much that. Just Basically, there probably aren't going to be as many of you as there are at the minute, um, particularly those that like to do damage. Uh, I know both of my guilds, Boomkins, are re-rolling. Uh, one's going Shadow Priest, the other's going Ellie. Um, and we actually won't have a Boomkin. Uh, I we, I'm in charge of recruitment, so I've, I've been looking for, for fresh heads. And it was basically, find an unholy DK or a boomkin, we don't care which. Um, whereas in Wrath, when we've had periods without boomkins, it was like, no, we, we need one. We, we need to find a boomkin. We need to find it now. Do it. Get on it. That is the prime directive. Find a new pigeon for us to abuse. And that's just not the case. It's like, boomkin? Who really cares? They, they're going to be fine. Like, they're not going to be bad. They're just not going to be as stellar as, as they might otherwise have been. I think this might be the true rise of the feral, um, purely from an output standpoint. Yeah, feral seems to be the class that I've heard is going to be your go-to off-tank that can DPS the best when they don't have to be in their off-tank role. So yeah, feral seems very secure. Resto also seems like a pretty secure class to bring maybe it's not mandatory in 10 man but for 25 you definitely i think want to have a, a resto druid at least we're bringing two there you go uh but yeah balance druid it's been feeling great on the beta uh, there's still a lot of things that haven't been fixed which we've been griping about and we'll probably continue to gripe about for the next yep. three weeks until the pre-patch launches. But I'm in the same place with with the camps. Like, is this not fixed yet? Okay, well, I can't play then. Yeah, like our our dots now scale with haste. Our dots can now crit, and I don't think either of those really worked right now on the beta. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I would love to test these changes, but can't really do that right now. So yeah, that is that is the thing. Is we we need to. We want these things to be fixed so we can definitely say, okay, this is okay, not great, or it's amazing, we just we can't at the minute. And Boomkin is suffering from that lack of knowledge because if it's fixed, it could turn out to be some sort of chicken-powered god and my guild needs to rethink our roster. Or Your it, guild definitely think, needs to rethink just... their roster. I was listening. Your guild definitely needs to rethink their roster. Yeah, you need a Boomkin. And tell them why, Scotty. <laughs> um, so, so here's the thing. Um, honestly, again, I'm talking from from many years of playing on Cata private servers, and um, even even remembering Cata originally to a, a very small degree. Um, out of all of those years, I've only ever played Go. 
I've only ever played with one good boomy go. Like out of all of those years, I've oh, played. Oh, Scotty, keep going. Um, so it was a keep guy. Going. It was a guy called Moo, um, and oh, he was a Toran. Moo. Yeah, he was a Toran. Toran boomy. You sure it wasn't uh, a, a different three-letter word? No, no, definitely not. No, no, no. His name was definitely. You don't Mo. want to change two letters. No, the last letter's right, but you know, if we're playing Wordle, you have a, a green. You have no. No, 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 no. His name it was, was de- it was Moo. His name was definitely Moo. Um, so I, I, I remember because I remember. Do you have something in your? Did, did you get a peanut butter sandwich and there's something stuck to the roof of your mouth? Uh, Do you need to? I did. I did. I did just actually eat. I did. I did just eat a little bit of a Cornish pasty. I mean. Let me announce one more yeah. time. <laughs> right, let me let me clear my palate first. Then yeah, I'll just that's in front of me. Just want to make sure I'm hearing you go, right. Go, go. So go. It was moo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, right. No, the the serious thing is, if you're trying to take Boomy uh, at face value from the beta, you're off your fucking head. I mean, I, I heard that someone was re-rolling away from Boomy to go Shadow Priest. They're gonna have a terrible time in the first phase. Mark my words. <laughs> like Shadow Priest in in phase one, I would never take a Shadow Priest over a Boomy. Full stop. Like the, it, it just wouldn't happen. Shadow Priests are all right, um, uh, but they really don't scale very very well until the the back end of Firelands. Um, Boomies, however, uh, I mean, yeah, they pump. They absolutely pump. If we're talking, we're trying to base Boomy on the fact that their dots are not affected by haste and they're not critting when it's two of the uh, biggest abilities, especially if they're using it right, where you're actually applying and reapplying dots before they fall off, before you exit your Eclipse state. So we're talking to Boomy who actually knows how to play and they know what Eclipse state they need to be in to use mushrooms and where to place mushrooms. Boomies are fine. <laughs> Like, uh, like, I mean, bonkers levels of, of fine, actually, especially on, yeah, of course, especially on AoE. You know, but that's that's always been boomies. Boomies are amazing on AoE and then mediocre on, on single target. But sometimes the stars <laughs> align um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, hey, uh, and then they do really well. And, and the same same happens now because they're more RNG than you actually probably first realize you know like shooting stars as an example it's only a four percent chance when you deal damage with moonfire insect swarm to reset the core down a star surge and reduce its cast time so it's instant now star surge is one of your biggest ways to move from one state to the other like that 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 is massive so the difference between getting back-to-back procs and feeling like oh my god where, where are these procs Again, it's almost Fire Mage esque. You know, it's like it's going to be the difference between you getting a ninety nine on that boss and getting like an eighty. Uh, but I, I don't know where this is. Like, honestly, if I really hope, Carrot, your your boom is that a reroll and Shadow Priest are watching because I I do think Shadow Priest, no matter I, what they're doing on the beta, they're going to have a rough fucking time in phase I one. I just checked the roster. They actually are staying boomy. I just remember a couple of weeks ago there was this big thing about no, nah, they're going Shadow Priest. I know one is going Elemental. Oh, um, I don't, I I don't blame them for going Ellie. I don't like like yeah, Ellie. Ellie, 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 Ellie yeah. I didn't even mention the guy rerolling to Ellie because it's like yeah, fair play. Like Ellie's, Ellie will be pumping all the way through. Yeah. But I think that's Shadow... What he wants. Yeah, I think he wants to do really well. But yep. yeah, the Anywhere. Shadow Priest enthusiast, I think, um, is staying boomy. Because I just remember a few weeks... I, I just must have blanked it when I last saw the roster. Um, but I do remember a few weeks ago, I was right, we need an unholy DK or a boomkin because we have none of them now. And I was like, okay. But no, it looks like the boomkin is remaining boomkin. So that's that. I was wrong. But yeah. It's a good decision because trust me, like uh, again, people are uh, like Boomy. I'm not saying it's hard to play. It seems very simple when you when you watch, and it's like, oh, you're you're going from one eclipse state to the other. But easy to learn, hard to master, sort of thing. Exactly that. Exactly that. It, and and well, actually, go. How have you found it? Like that. Yeah. That's the. But you, you've got more probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, so another thing I wanted to touch on really quick was balance of power gives us hit from our spirit and it, there's no other reason to 
spend those two points elsewhere. So that that was a, a interesting change, and that's been bugged on the beta. Who cares? Euphoria was also another one where that adds a little bit of RNG, where uh, our Wrath or Starfire could double the energy to get us closer to lunar or solar. So that's also kind of something that I've been trying to look at. I don't like weak auras, but I'm sure there's going to be weak auras that are going to like tell you when you are like entering and uh, into a solar or lunar eclipse. And without the weak auras, I just need to pay attention to, did I get a euphoria proc, whatever you want to call it? Like did, did it double dip and give me like double energy? But um yeah, so that so there was a nice. there was an add on, um, not, not a weak aura, but I, I've I've again like I've played a, a decent amount of Boomy, um, and you add um like a an alert where it would be potential lunar change. So while you're casting, it would be like potential lunar change, and then when you're casting, it would be guaranteed lunar change. Uh, sorry, eclipse. Guaranteed eclipse change. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it would be like, yeah, there's a chance on this cast you're gonna you're gonna change state, or you are gonna change state on this cast. You know, so you can prepare in advance. You're like, right, I might need to switch things up. No, I don't. Next one, I know I need to switch things up. Um, so that yeah, there'll be weak auras that do that a hundred percent. Uh, but I forgot about that. So yeah, go. I, I forgot about Euphoria. Um. I, I knew there was some way you got extra energy, but I couldn't remember what yeah. one outside of shooting stars. Uh, but even like the dots we've been testing, there's balanced druids that are theory crafting already, which uh, that's my favorite part of playing WoW is theory crafting and pre patch. And uh, we've kind of discovered that if you cast like a star or a, you cast a wrath and then enter a lunar. If you hit a moon fire, like immediately after that wrath, you have it queued up, like spell queued, then that moon fire is not going to benefit from lunar. And that shit kind of sucks. And then there's also another thing that doesn't really work how, oh, well, maybe it does benefit boomies. Is like if you're max range, that same kind of thing. I think if your wrath cast like shoots off and then you leave solar, then as long as the wrath like, finished its cast while solar was still active if you left the solar then that casted solar should or casted wrath should still benefit there's like some weird stuff and that's why i've been kind of bitching about the beta not being updated as much because it's stuff like that that would help us know like what to cast you know do we need to have a filler spell in between our eclipses because it's not going to work in a particular way it's worked on private servers one way how is it going to work in kata yeah and i think some of those things though like if it if it is got a weird interaction which maybe was existing on on private servers or it's just a, a classic thing you know we, we know blizzard are gonna make some changes you know as in they they will fix certain things like like ignite munching like you know, languish, munching. Like, you no, know. They never fixed languish. <laughs> well, they, they should have, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, they will yeah. they will do things. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but honestly, I think Boom is going to be in a great state Like, while well, we're talking about Druid. But, great segue, Carrot. Thanks. What uh, what additional abilities did Druids get? Did, did that not work the way you normally do it? Go. You normally wait for someone to say yeah. something, don't you? You were close, but I mean, you have to have you have to pull some random thing that Carrot said to you. You can't just say, "Hey, Carrot!" Like nice segue. You have to say, "Yo, Carrot!" When you mention such and such, that's a nice segue going into spell changes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll do it. Oh, Carrot! Like, actually, you, I know I've got uh, it. I've got it. I know exactly what it was. No, okay, 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 okay. Don't don't spoil it for me. I've got it, Carrot. Remember, uh, I've got one. If you fail, I got you. If I fail, then you can back me up, Carrot. Remember at the start of the podcast Ooh. where you said, "Hey, guys." That made start. me think about uh, new abilities for druids. I was going to say, <laughs> you know how you said that your your raider was going to switch from Shadow Priest, or uh, from Boomy into Shadow Priest, and they didn't? Well, speaking of changes, what changes <laughs> for druid <laughs> uh, have you noticed that uh, druids had from Wrath into Classic? Or Go, Wrath into Kata? Goes clearly better at this than me. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> He's more practiced. Let's put it that way. Um, well, the 
You get the wild mushrooms, which is probably one of the biggest things out of the gate. I mean, it's 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 shrooms that go kaboom. It's it's brilliant. Um, that is your eighty-five. Best thing I think, though, stampeding raw. Yes. Oh, mm. stampeding raw! I have nice. missed thee. I played a feral in Legion, and I just loved it. I was the most useful bastard on the planet with that. Um, I believe Thrash is also new. I, I. This is the thing with Druid. I played Druid so late um, in retail, like properly. That when I see these things crop up, they're just no. That should be there. Um, so I think Thrash is new. But I'm not sure. My brain is going, no, you use that all the time in Legion. That's not new. That's old news. Um, Thrash, and I don't think, actually, Resto get anything spectacularly new. Um, they just get reworked a bit, um, as with most healers, like we said earlier. Uh, I think the biggest thing for them, apart from general how things play, uh, Tree of Life, it is no more. It is... Uh, epoxy cooldown instead of a full tree form which i never liked i like my druids having bespoke forms and resto doesn't it's just a big tree now for like 40 seconds and that's it um but yeah no i think that's really all the new stuff they get well done yeah the the tree form i always forget about and i i feel bad for him but i think scotty was kind of like yeah it makes sense that it's a cooldown and not like a form that they go into. And there was a comment back. We did a, a Druid deep dive. Um, I'm always looking at the comments. Um, somebody was like, well, uh, explain balanced Druid being able to have their balanced Druid form. Uh, does that not apply to boomies too, Scotty? Uh, well, no, because that, that is that is a little bit different. I mean, your your role hasn't changed. You know, as in, if you look at how all the healers... Were, so... Okay, first of all, let's clarify what the blue post is that he's referring to. It's not my thoughts. It's it's the Blizzard developer's thoughts from 2010. The reason they changed Tree of Life, because they was like, by forcing a druid into, into tree form to increase their spirit or increase their healing or whatever, it limits their offensive and their utility abilities. So it was like, well, instead, we'll make them just as powerful as every other healer out of form but they get a super powerful cooldown which will be their tree form so they still get to keep their tree form but they use it as a cooldown uh, which when you know what tree of life does which we'll go through it in a minute actually increases offensive capability as well so that that was the point it was like well as a holy paladin a holy paladin don't need to be in holy aura to be able to be a viable healer which then stops them from being able to use certain protection or retribution you know, abilities. Uh, a priest don't need to be in a specific, I don't know, chakra or whatever. Y you know, so it was all around that. It was like, so they, 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 they made druids as good healers as the other healers without having to be in a form. So they can still use entangling roots. They can still wrath, starfire, combat res, innovate, like they can do everything at the same time and then add a tree of life. Uh, the reason I don't see the same argument for a boomy is that's not how DPS works in Kata. You know, DPS in Kata are not meant to be off healing, but healers are meant to be trying to output some damage where they can. So, like, I'm fine with it, go. We can remove... Uh, like, I'll talk to the devs and say, let's remove boomy form. But, you know, whoa, when, whoa, he's whoa. when he's trying to pump, like, actually, we need to make it a lot more accessible for him to be able to do healing instead. Then we can we we can talk about that across the board, but the whole point of it was a, a a holy paladin can do just as much damage and still do all their heals. Um, you know, same for a resto shaman; they can they can heal just as good as they ordinarily would, but be able to put damage out. The only one that was punished was was a a, a resto druid. No, so so boomkin form gives a raid wide haste buff. The tree of life form didn't give a raid wide buff. So yeah, we have to keep like boomkin form. You you can't send that to a cooldown. No shot. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I was you, looking Go. at the uh, <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the dev's name of that blue post, and it looks like it's Jody Say. So shout out Jody Say who put out that. <laughs> I actually think it was Ghost Scroller. If I if oh, I yeah. remember if I remember yeah, rightly, it probably I, really was. I, I, I genuinely it think it was. It, yeah, I genuinely believe it was Ghost Crawler. If I think back to that post, um, but no, 
like you, you know carrot was absolutely right so tree of life now uh, uh, like you pop it and the healing style much like every other healer as a druid changes massively like you're no longer waiting for clear casting procs like you do in wrath to be able to use life bloom because it's extremely mana and efficient you're keeping life bloom up on one target you can only keep it on one target and you're refreshing it with things like nourish or healing touch nourish if you're trying to be very mana efficient small heals healing touch less efficient bigger heals but every time you cast it, it it's gonna refresh it um but where uh like everybody every druid spec's got omen of clarity obviously but you 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 use it in different ways so for a resto druid oh, yeah. you get malfurion's gift so your life bloom is what procs your your clear casting so if you imagine the more targets you've got life bloom on the more chance of clear casting obviously procking so when you're in tree of life you can now have life bloom on unlimited targets and also while you're in tree of life regrowth which is an expensive but sizable heal with a hop becomes instant cast so the whole, whole point of tree of life is spread really mana efficient life blooms around on everyone you're getting clear casting procs going off all the time because of Malfurion's gift. Uh, oh, oh, highlighted the wrong talent there. And then you're regrowing to consume those. So it's like massive output. But then it has more than that because it changes. Like when you're in Tree of Life, it changes more abilities than just that. If you wild growth um, to... to uh, I mean, I can't even do it because I'm not in Resto at the moment. I went boomy for this because Resto I don't really need to look at. Uh, if you wild growth, it's going to hot two more targets. Um, it, you know, if you're in ra if you if you're raffing, it's going to do more damage and make it free, or it should be free. Yeah, free and do more damage. Um, if you entangle in roots, you can. It's like uh, I don't know, that's that's more PvP, so probably less my wheelhouse. To be fair, uh, does it actually show it without being resto? Because yeah, uh, entangling roots is the one that I can't remember. I'm sure it's like no, it don't. Um. I'm 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 sure you can put it on as maybe no, it's not as many targets as you want. Maybe it takes it extra damage to break cast. it. Oh, is it instant it's cast? In instant cast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, when I'm healing, it's not really. I wouldn't pop tree form and be like, quick, let's entangle and root something. Uh, so that's the one I'm not. Yeah, weren't sure of. Uh, but you know, ultimately, when you go tree of life, it, it's it's increasing your heals, but also then does give you an opportunity to do more damage. So it increases. Like, did I touch on all of those entangling roots? Wrath. Yeah um and that's it yeah three minute cooldown but it is a big cooldown for a resto druid as i say you're rarely going to use any of the other abilities it's going to be literally well wild growth life bloom uh and regrowth they're the three you're going to use but if you're on something like chimeron and you've got tree of life ready at the the, the final burn phase of chimeron no one can get healed so if you've got tree of life ready you'll use it and then spam wrath like that's, so that's it, really. with 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 rebirth like battle res we mentioned earlier that it's death knights also get that ability but is that limited because i also heard that too to how many of those that you can have in a 10 player raid and 25 player raid so yeah, yeah. What, what's the in, limits on those do you guys remember i believe in 10 it's one per boss fight and uh in 25 it's three one 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 um, one, 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 one three sounds exactly right to me yeah so whilst you've got more people who can theoretically battle res it means nothing in the grand scheme because you aren't going to be using them as much yeah um, that, that's something i hadn't really heard anybody talk about and then I, I can't remember where i heard it from and i was like wait is that that's that's real that's in kata yeah that persisted for a hell of a long time i even think it's still in retail to this day to some degree um because a lot a lot of fights in kata would be fairly cheesable not cheesable but wouldn't be as punishing if you could just battle res everyone. You'd just bring an army of DKs and druids and game over. Um, I think it is to kind of prevent suicide tactics a bit. Uh, I, I'm kind of the master at doing those. And just like, like stacking, I, 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 stacking druids in a 10 man, you know, like little druids, because yeah. soul stones and everything obviously count towards it as well. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot oh. about soul stone. So, you know, like there, there, there are, you need to use things a I'm not going to say use things a bit more wisely, but, you know, like, you... Let's say... Because it's, 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 it's accepting the res that, that actually 
consumes the charge if you like so let's say i died and i was like go quick re like let's say I'm, I'm i'm on my rep paladin and i die and i say go res me res me and then he reses me and i get the res but as i'm res the tank dies i could not accept like i'll decline it and then someone else could combat res the tank so it's not like it's not on cast it's on use if you if you like so once someone has revived then that's going to be like no sorry you, you can't res anymore so you could you could have a soul stone on the tank if you want it on the tank let's say um and if they die they might want to use it but if they don't, don't die and somebody else does then you'll you'll use a combat res so you know there's some small caveats to it if you like yeah ultimately it just makes the concept of the battle res far more thoughtful uh, you're not just going to be chucking them out. Ah, oh, so-and-so die, as might get them up. We've got four more druids. Um, no, you're going to really need to evaluate the situation. If it's, a, if it's a guaranteed kill, you know your tank, like, Skull said it isn't, isn't going to die. Does it matter? Get the daft bastard up. But if there is a distinct possibility a, a tank or um, a healer who's integral to the fight is going to faceplant, you're going to want to save it. He sounds like, sorry, you ain't getting back up. Enjoy the five minutes on the floor. Yeah. Uh, so you, but, you can, but you can that... also, when it, when it, just, just before anyone like rips me apart in chat, obviously you can soul stone in combat now. Like that, that's, you know, mm. as in you can, like you could put, like if, if there's someone who's at high risk of death, you can have a soul stone on someone, but like you, you could almost use it like a rebirth as well, if you, if mm. you know what I mean. Um, but yeah. Uh, Soul Stone uh, is a but, combat res. You can't pre-put it on someone in Kata. Are you, are, you, are you sure? I think you can still put it on someone. Hold on. I'll just check. Yeah, I mean... I, 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 I kind I, of did both. I, I, would, I, would, I would say with, with confidence... Well, I mean, I can, I can literally check now. Uh, where Where is... Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't... Again, I don't play a Warlock overly, like, a ridiculous amount, but, yeah, I I was sure in Kata you could use it as both. No, it does both, yeah. So the text is, when cast on the live target, stores the soul as... stores the soul as we know it, um, but cast on the dead target, it's a battle res. Um, so, yeah, it, it does both things. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was, it, I, it, I was patch, fairly sure it did. Patch 4.1.0. So Soulstone can now be used in combat to resurrect a targeted dead player. And it now resurrects with thirty percent health, thirty percent mana. Yeah, I, I was that fairly was sure it was, but I'll always, well. I'll, I'll always check. You know, if someone says no, that's not how it works. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. obviously going to look because yeah, we are talking about classes that are a little bit out of my wheelhouse now when we're talking about warlocks and that. But but there was a good question in chat about shamans. I don't think Ank counts towards it because that's not a battle res. That's a personal thing. It's got its own cooldown. It's um, that shouldn't count towards the battle res limit, as far as I remember. That is a good one, and Scotty is going through his mind right now, and it, usually no, he's I, like I, I quick think, on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, thinking I'm, about this one. I, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I'm fairly. I, I would say I'm 99 percent sure it does go towards the combat res counter. If, it, it, if I was like, he's either thinking or he's doing archaeology right now. No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I would, I would be ninety nine percent sure that if you ank as a shaman, that's your combat res gone. Yeah, you, you again, uh, like, just, you would need to check it. But uh, quick Google, it doesn't apparently. Um, but yeah, let me just check. Yeah, okay. Uh, thing from Wikipedia. There we go. Where are you, Gip? I, but yeah, Scotty, we we've, we've deep yeah, dive in, deep dove into Druid. Uh, we've got one, two, we've got four more classes to cover. So, do you want to move on to uh, either Lock, Warrior, DK, or Priest? Because we've already covered Mage, Rogue, Druid, Hunter, Shaman, and Paladin. Oh, I'm 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 easy. We can let let chat decide if you want. I mean, uh, pre preferably like, but yeah. so someone do like a one cent super chat and just pick a class. We've done it all night. Uh, like chat have decided all night. Someone just do a ridiculously small super chat, one dollar or whatever. Uh, what are the options? And throw it as a question too. Like super chat a question for us about any of the classes we've covered. We're going to cover, 
and yeah, we'll answer the question at the same time. But the the four classes left is lock, warrior, DK, or priest. It looks like some people are suggesting warlock. Okay. Oh yeah. Let let yeah, we're, we're gonna, go DK. Yeah, I'm down no, with that. We're, we're, we're keeping carrot as long as we can. So if we give DK now, then he might just speak on DK and be like, all right, guys, sorry, I got to go to bed. Like, no, no, no. We got to DK must be last. I didn't hear cat stuff. Thanks. Did we not? Yeah, we didn't really, we didn't really talk about feral like, like at all. That's true. We, we, we can. didn't. We can. Do you, want me, do you want me to just rip it apart and we move on to the next class? Um, and, and I, yeah, I think uh, rip it apart. I see what you did there, Scotty. Rip it apart, you clever uh, bastard. You didn't even think of that you did that. I, I, mean, I yeah, didn't. I didn't. I'm, I'm I was giving you credit uh, for I was. It. I was God still looking, very impressed. I was still looking at Ank, <laughs> and while I've not got a definitive answer, it, it does look like it don't count towards the combat rest counter. But, um, mm, I mean, I've certainly played on servers where it does. So, uh, uh, like, oh. I'd need to. I'd need to really look at like four point oh. Point one state, four point three point four state, and and see exactly how that goes. You know, oh shit, we just got two at the same time. Warlock's my vote. I was feral. Valgard as well. Come on, go on, boys. Go on, boys. But, uh, Valgard, what what class? I mean, thank you. Like, don't get me wrong. He's, but he's, he's like warrior. He said warrior. To he, he said warrior. Warrior. Oh, I see. A. Okay. Right. Give me a sec. Let me channel my 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 inner. I'll pretend I'm 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 looking at the camera doing a, a YouTube video. I'm gonna go straight for feral. Um. So feral goes through tons of changes, and this video is gonna be huge. So make sure you like and subscribe before we get any further. Make sure you super no, chat. No. Oh, sorry, sorry. You say sorry, that at the like end that. of the video. You never say it at the start. I never no, say start it. At the start over. Start over. Start over. I, I, Try I, again. Oh, okay, Try okay, okay, okay. Let, I know, let I, me tell you how to do your own video. Okay. I got you. I never say it at the start because it's like if someone stayed all the way to the end, then you know you can say whatever you want, but you don't open a video like that. Uh, right. Okay. So got like seriously, feral. Uh, feral's in an amazing state in Kata, and if you want to play a feral druid, you're gonna absolutely fucking love it. The uh, the biggest changes um, are the fact that you can you have an execute phase. Uh, we'd already touched on Stampede in Raw, which probably seems like a bit of a weird cooldown. You're like, great, I can make everyone run quick, but trust me, there's so many fights where you where, where you will benefit from making people run quick. Like you know, it increases their movement speed by sixty percent. Um, a prime example is seeds on Ragnaros. Um, I, there's probably less uses, actually, Meloriac as well in BWD. There's less uses, yeah, yeah, less uses. Oh my god, this server's going down in 20 minutes. Um, I'll have to go on something else. Uh, there's less uses in um, tier 11, but like for Ragnaros in particular, really useful. Um, also, like breaks roots and snares. When you use it as well, not just on you, but the party, um, or raid, like everyone, like that's massive. Um, when you've got blood in the water, so when you're ferocious, when you're ferocious biting a target at less than twenty five percent health, you're gonna refresh rip. So that's your execute. The boss is at twenty five percent health. Boom! Every time you ferocious, like you don't need to worry about rip anymore, which is like again, that's massive. It's sixty percent. When you get to Dragon Soul and you've got the set bonus, like you've got a sixty percent health execute, like that, uh, that's just bonkers on its own. Uh, Ravage becomes useful. So when you feral charge, you're going to get Stampede, where you're going to get a free, completely free, cost no energy and no positioning requirement. Um, Ravage, where so like that's a great way to open. You know, you charge, you your feral charge in, boom, Ravage, no energy wasted. Get Savage Roar up and then just start pumping. But Savage Roar changes, so it's only auto attack damage now. So it's it's less punishing. At the moment, obviously, keeping Savage Roar up is absolute number one. And I'm not saying it's not number one now. Um you know, because it, it does increase your 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 auto attack damage by 80%. So it's massive. But if something's only gonna live for I don't know, five, six seconds, maybe even up to ten seconds, you know, it's not like to do any damage to it, you have to have Savage Roar up. It's like, oh, fuck that. Like, I'll just nuke it. Like, your auto attack damage is going to be doing so little because you've charged in on full energy. You're going to ravage for massive amounts and still be on full energy. Then you can, like, mangle, rake, shred. You know, like, 
it's less important on real short, quick like ads. But of course, you still want Savage Raw staying up. Um, your general rotation is still going to be very similar, though. You know, like Tiger's Fury uh, increases your you, you know your physical damage dealt, so you, you're going to be snapshotting. You know, you, you're you're going to not only be getting energy back when you Tiger's Fury, but yeah, obviously increases your actual physical damage. So you're then going to be trying to uh, towards the end of it, make sure you're getting a rip on, so it it benefits from that as long as possible. Uh, pulverize uh, like the the beautiful thing about Feral Druid is well the beautiful thing about Druid is you can literally tank DPS and heal with two specs, and you will be able to out DPS a pure Feral DPS and tank just as well as a pure Feral tank, and heal just as good as a, you know a diehard resto healer, all with two specs. You have to sacrifice something, which is going to be an interrupt. So Feral Charge don't interrupt anymore. Like Feral Charge is, is just literally, you just charging in bear. You do get a haste bonus when you're charging in bear. When you're charging in cat, it's going to daze them, and then you're going to get your, your, your free ravage. Um, but you're also now going to get Skull Bash. But it's on a minute cooldown as standard. So you're going to have Skull Bash Bear, Skull Bash Cat. You're going to macro that into one ability that uses, you know, it uses whichever one, depending on whatever uh, form you're in. But you can get it down to 10 seconds. So you can literally interrupt like a rogue. But if you're going to do like the spec where you can tank and DPS, like that's the perfect thing to lose. You've got Holy Paladins, Rep Paladins, Prop Paladins, Prop Warriors, Combat Rogues, fucking, well, every rogue. Uh, you, 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 there's so many... I didn't list them all. DKs. Like, you know, you've got so many classes and specs that can interrupt that for you to be able to fulfill two specs, uh, well, well, two roles in one spec, but you literally just lose Pulverize, which you're not going to need anyway, and you lose the ability to interrupt efficiently. That's like such a good trade off. Um, and ju Justin yeah. pointed out that you don't lose your combo points now if something dies like you keep your combo points and you can use those for the next target that you get in combat with well you don't lose them but you yeah you could savage raw you could like savage raw to consume them you would if you started hitting something else wait they they stay on the dead target they That's stay on the dead target yeah so so you could okay, literally okay. pop a savage raw before you move on to the next target and then carry on but you wouldn't then hit something and they carry over you you would okay. yeah you, you but but he's right like yeah you're not you you can not waste points so you could like switch to an ad and kill it and then while it's dead you can pop a, a savage raw which ordinarily at this point in wrath you would lose you know you, you'd have lost those yeah. combo points um same for rogues as well yeah yeah same for rogues <laughs> yeah you can get a slice and dice up or or redirect them from a dead target onto a live target you know like one or the other. Uh, uh honestly outside of that other than the fact that as feral obviously you can you you, you can ac actually sunder and um expose armor better than any other class like genuinely you you just literally press fairy fire feral fairy fire as long as you've got two points in feral aggression and you've got 12 percent armor debuff up on the target instantly and for five minutes uh and, it and does it's damage. free, but it does damage if you're in bear. Yeah, you know, but if you're in cat, it's free. In bear? Oh, yeah. it doesn't cat damage. Cat, it doesn't do damage. No, but but it, mm, it, it okay. gives a shit. Like it, it, you're putting it up for nothing and and just just chilling. Like that's massive as well. Uh, but again, even as a resto druid, I've I've done loads of fights where I keep fairy fire up as a resto druid. It's like well, it it just takes three GCDs to get the initial. Fairy fire stacks up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it's like, well, as a resto druid, I'll stick hots on the tank, then just get fairy fire up. Like, it's not a problem. Then once every five minutes, just press it again. It, you know, you don't even need to worry. Um, uh, feral tanks. Obviously, you don't need defense, but you've never de needed defense anyway. Uh, natural reaction is really nice. Obviously, yeah, flat damage reduction, getting rage back. Uh, I like. Honestly, overall. And the addition of Frash. Like, AoE tanking is nothing. Like, you don't even need to think about it. You're going to do absolutely shit tons of damage when you've got Vengeance stacked up. And, like, I mean shit tons of damage. Like, 
feral tanks will literally be out damaging DPS in in five man heroics. Like the the damage is and, and don't again don't go by the beta. I, I I'm telling you what it's gonna be like and it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> They're, I would say they're the highest output tank in a five-man situation. Uh, and I'm not saying in raids, you know, but like if you're just like in five-man heroics, just having fun uh, in full DPS gear, uh, like, but in tank where you more or less take no damage because obviously you're going to be, you're, you're going to be having uh, savage, savage defense up where each damage absorbed by your savage defense ability it like increases the damage absorbed by 32 percent and the more attack power you got the more it does the more mastery you've got the more it does like it it's just fucking it's disgusting and i, I like literally you will out heal healers as a feral tank as well like in five months it is a lot of fun uh well, did i, I miss anything I'll no, I just like to solo things, and with how you're pumping up the the feral tank, being able to heal so much and mitigate so much damage, I like to try to solo stuff as balanced druid. But if I can't do it, I might actually have a feral off spec so that I well, can you're solo not stuff. You're, you're not healing. I need to. I should re, re, yeah maybe emphasize on that. So you're not healing. Mm. You're absorbing. So you, you know, Absolutely. like when you, when you look at healing meters, like imagine if a imagine off on on details, it didn't show a disc priest on uh, on Lich King. Uh, it didn't show their power word shield. That you, you wouldn't take one, you know. So it, it's, it's absorbs, but it's the same for a blood DK. You know, it's mostly okay. absorbs. Uh, like so, it's not. Yeah, it's not healing. It's not like you're going to go and solo dungeons and constantly heal yourself. Obviously, a blood DK is healing herself with with death strike. Um, but yeah, for a druid, it's just just absorbing a lot of damage. And with doing it in full DPS gear, you're critting so much that savage defense is just up all the time. And as a DPS, majority of cats will be going crit mastery. Later on, you'll be going probably haste instead of mastery, but early on it'll be crit mastery so it car like the gear also carries over really well you know between feral tank and feral dps where you can just like gear almost for both specs with exactly the same gear set um, and then obviously you'd just be lacking stamina but you chuck a couple of stamina trinkets on and fucking golden i thought you were gonna say jobs are good and damn golden jobs are good and son jobs are fucking good and son uh, and i'd say that's rude Shall, yeah. shall we, shall yeah. we move on? Uh, I can't believe we got, nearly missed Feral, and I didn't even notice. We've got DK Priest Warrior and Locke currently is up next. What's next? We've got Locke, Locke, and then Warrior, and then it's a toss up between DK and Priest. Well, apparently I'm being held hostage, so I'll probably be Priest and then DK to finish. And then yep, DK. Yep. Okay. Um, so lock next. Okay, again, uh, one. I I know all the changes and, and and new abilities and all of that, but definitely the class that in Kata specifically, I've got the least experience personally raiding on because it's a pet class. I, I think I made that abundantly clear when we were talking about hunters. So you know, we 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 can talk about all the changes and that, but I can't really give you a great deal of first hand experience on. Uh, on raids well the biggest thing for me when i hear uh warlock in kata is di so dark intent and that increases the friendly's target's haste by three percent and as a boomy my dots now are affected by haste so whether or not i'm getting dark intent depends on my haste cap and whether or not i'm getting an extra tick from my Moonfire, my Insect Swarm. So Dark Intent seems to be one of those buffs that's kind of like uh, Focus Magic for mages, where it's just like, if you get it, you get a pretty big power spike. You can kind of gear around that. And like knowing ahead of time going into a raid, if I'm going to have that DI buff, that Focus Magic buff uh, is really useful. But it can benefit so many different classes and every class is going to try to justify it with like, look at our Sims. We're, we're getting an extra 800 DPS because we have DI. 
So uh, if you want to further elaborate on DI, Scotty. Um, no, exactly what you said. Uh, and I can I can put a spreadsheet up. Um, it, it's like it, it's it's so, so much more important than focus magic. Like focus magic is extra crit. And then when you crit, the mage gets crit. You know, it, it's like, that's great. Um, obviously, when mages swap it around, they both get 6%. That's great. But we're now talking about something that is so, so different because you don't change your gear set around crit. But haste with our haste works in Kata, but for dot and hot glasses, obviously it don't reduce the the length of the dot anymore. It reduces the amount of time between ticks. So every class is going to have their haste breakpoints, and you're going to look at your gear and you're going to say which one of these is it is achievable. Um, so if I now put this on, this will make more sense. So if you was to learn, well, we'll look at, we'll look at, let's look at corruption for a warlock. So it's going to show you like the base duration, the, the tick duration, default frequency. Um, and then, you know, the number of ticks. So if you want seven ticks, eight ticks, nine ticks, 10, yeah, up to 13. So if you want seven ticks, uh, you know, your haste rating, you're going to need a thousand and sixty six. But look at the, if you're a non goblin with dark intent, you only need six, six, two almost it's not half but you know what i mean that's a massive reduction in the amount of haste rating that you need to get seven ticks of your of your dot then when you go up to like if you want an eighth tick on corruption you're going to need 3.1k haste or only two seven 2.7k with dark intent of course if you've got dark intent and you've got totem of wrath it's it's 1993 um, if you're a goblin, so you've got the 1% static haste and you've got wrath and you've got dark intent, it's only 1846. I'm sorry, I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you, but you can see the difference between being fully buffed and being a goblin with dark intent. You only need 1.8k haste versus 3.1k without all of that. You know, so like it makes a big difference to gearing. If you know you're getting dark intent, you know you can drop so much haste to be able to get crit, or you know you can reforge on much more haste because you're going to be able to reach another breakpoint. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it's very, like, you almost want to know. You want to know, am I am I getting dark intent? Like, if I'm getting dark intent, I need to know how I'm going to gear. Because if you're on, uh, an example would be, if you're, let's say you're getting, um, you're getting, getting total wrath but you're not getting dark intent or whatever you know and you're one point under the amount of haste you need and that one point is the difference between you getting an extra tick or not that's now we're talking mm, like fucking 2000 uh, uh, haste rating that you could put into crit <laughs> you know I, like it, it's it's huge so it don't sound big like that three percent haste that you're gonna get don't sound big but when you actually really start looking at the amount of rating that you need to gain extra ticks, it makes a big a big difference. And and you you absolutely need to gear around knowing whether you are getting it or you're not. And there was one other thing, I, like uh, dark intent can't be applied like one warlock to another. Kind of how mages circle jerk each other and give each other focus magic. Like uh, a warlock is encouraged. I would say to give it to another class outside of a warlock. So it, at least there's that. Like I, I kind of like that difference between those two styles of uh, buffs. But uh, Carrot, how would you rank the AOE and single target damage of a warlock if you have any experience with uh, damage meters and how they stack up to that? And if you don't, that's fine. Uh, you can send it to Scotty, but I just have to use the bathroom. I have a little bit, not masses. Um... Well, my understanding is based on each spec, and I've done a bit of fiddling, not masses, only a bit here and there while I was working out what I wanted to play. And AoE demo is going to be fucking mental as far as I can see. It is going to be a beast. And I am honestly looking forward to seeing how that plays on the meters. I think I could be wrong, I can't remember, but I think the bloke who's playing demo at the moment in my guild is going to play it in Kata. Um, and he's going to be a god on the AOE. I a single target, I'm not so sure on. I think Affliction does all right in that department. So does Demo as well. 
but I think Affliction just pips it. I can't be sure. It's not something I've played too much. I I prefer Destro when it comes to Warlocks. That is the thing I like to play, and it is very rarely the spec that actually sees any representation. Um, Affliction is arguably the least played spec for me when it comes to lock. So the only thing I really know is demo. That's going to hurt for AOE. I think in terms of burst AOE, like out of the gate, it's possibly one of, if not the top um, specs out there. And yeah, I I know stuff about Destro, but that's probably not going to see that much use, sadly. Yeah, I mean, demo is going to be very... Um... It, it, high, again, quite high skill cap and something that you won't see on private servers uh, unless you're playing with demo locks who know what they're doing, where you're actually pet weaving as well. So, mm. like, you, you, you will, you, you'll be pet weaving, and we're, we're not going into that much, that much detail. And I'm not the person that should be giving that much detail when it comes to warlocks. Um, but I know it certainly gets a lot more complicated when you are literally pet weaving in combat. You know, like it, it's it's gonna pet be, weaving. yeah, pet, yeah. You, you'll you'll literally be oh, demon weaving. What, well, however you you know, however you want to word it. Um. Whereas you you'll probably look at like you'll you'll look at random cata guides and it will be like use this for single target, use this for AOE. But trust me, that is not going to be the case. A Affliction's biggest benefit is like soul swap is just fucking amazing like for me mm -hmm. it, it like taking out all the all the demon weaving like put that all aside uh, uh and you was to go like like I, I would go affliction and it's nothing to do with like the complexity of any of the specs i love affliction in in kata i, I actually love affliction and i i really like destruction as well because of like bane of havoc um which we can have a look at what some of these key abilities are but like soul swap being able to swap all of your dots from one target to another, and if you've got it glyphed, uh, then it will remain on the target before. So it's like, it, uh, hang on, let me just let me put it so you can see it on the screen. Uh, so your soul swap leaves your damage over time spells, but it increases the cooldown. So you can't use it as frequently, but now you're completely duplicating your dots, you, you know, from one target to another. Like I really like the way the, the way affliction plays, um. But uh, again, destruction can do like crazy damage with chaos bolt, and then you've got bane of havoc, where it causes fifteen percent of all damage done by the warlock to the other target to also be dealt to the bane target. So it's uh that server's just gone down for a sec. Oh, it's, it's just being restarted. Um, but like you can you can really put out like really crazy crazy burst whereas affliction is what affliction normally is you know like it's rot damage uh but for for demo like doing uh the oh, sorry the demos still have meta in cat yeah they still have meta in cat um and and like that's kind of a part of it it's about like like even having a a a, a, a full like mastery set to use pre-pull so you'll have a full like as demonology, there's a lot going on. Not a lot. Like forget demon weaving and all that shit. Like you're gonna have a full mastery set that you've got on, and then you're gonna like use cooldowns pre pull and then switch back to your normal set. Like it's yeah, it, it it's so much without me actually really playing a demo warlock and getting to grips with everything that's going on. I don't want to pretend. Like I don't want to sit here and be like I know everything because because I don't like. Warlock and pet classes are my least played, like least played classes. I know how they work and I know what people do with them. Um, but I'd much rather give you first hand experience. And my first hand experience is either as affliction or destruction. Um, and they are fun, you know, you know, like affliction being number one for me because I've always considered affliction to be the ranged feral druid. And that sounds weird, but when you really think about it, it is it is it's been very similar throughout all expansions except for like tbc where you're just spamming shadow bolt um or vanilla where you're spamming shadow bolt but you know you're keeping melee like a feral druid is keeping bleeds up and affliction warlocks keeping their, their dots up and then there's a lot of timing going on you know a lot of really understanding your cooldowns and how to snapshot things and uh yeah i i i 
I, I'm a fan of Warlock, but only only really Affliction. Did you play with Crix in a, a Cata server, or was that just like TBC and Wrath? Uh, he jo- he joined us. He joined our guild on um on White Main for a little bit of a little bit of Firelands, I think, before he got bored or something else started happening or like whatever. Um, uh, and yeah, he, he was doing well. He was doing well. But like yeah, I, I, gonna... I wouldn't say I, don't, I didn't like see him do a, a great deal, you know. Like, but we had at that point on White Main, we had NA raids and EU raids, and obviously he was in the NA raids. So we we, we really only played together, yeah, you know, like in, infrequently. I'm sure we'll have Cricks on to deep dive Warlock. Oh, a hundred percent now and between now and Catalunch. Yeah, it, it might be during the pre patch, might be before. You never know, but yeah, I, the, yeah, I can't Cr- wait to talk to Cricks again. Cr- Cricks will be here for the deep dive, a hundred percent. Because I, as I say, I at least know that he really has. Yeah, he know he knows Warlock and Cat. I really knows Warlock and Cat. Uh, but in terms of like new abilities and, and how things play, I mean the biggest change is the, is obviously the soul the shard difference. You know, your soul shards. You you don't have them in your bag anymore. Just every warlock's got three, uh, and depending on what spec you are depends on how you actually get them back. But then all warlocks have soul harvest, where it's a thirty second cooldown, but you seek out nearby wandering souls, regenerating health, and all all of your soul shards over. Well, nine seconds. Um, and then you can use those soul shards on soul burn. So 45 second cooldown, and, and it basically gives you a secondary effect to your other abilities. So drain life, summon him, void walker, sucker bus, so all of that. So if I was to go, like, if I use soul burn now and then summoned uh, a fell hunter it will be instant you know that's the ability that that's the ability it's an instant cast for those whereas for other abilities it it, it yeah it differs so for soul fire it's going to make it inst- uh, it's going to make it instant cast so just a nice big hit uh for drain life it's going to it goes to drain life it's going to the cast time is going to be reduced by 50% so yeah like soul burn is sort of a, a mini mini cooldown uh seed of corruption actually to be fair is, is an interesting one uh because you see the corruption detonation effect will put corruption on everything so it's a bit like a like when we we're talking about hunter earlier where you multi-shot and it it puts serpent sting on everything this is like a warlock can soul burn seed of corruption and boom everything's got corruption on them you know which again is pretty cool uh i mean i've not i've not Honestly, I've not really got a lot else to say. The the, the warlock plays yeah. very, very very similar, you know, like the dot spec versus like destruction spec. You get fell flame, which yeah deals some en- en- uh, deals shadow flame damage to an enemy target, increasing the duration of immolation or unstable affliction. So something you can just use on the move to extend dots, but really it's it's not like it's part of the key, you know, a key rotation or anything. The general playstyle same stays fairly similar for all specs, I think, except for demo. Oh, um, no, no. I mean, the the biggest thing oh, for me song. was like de- demonic pact is now just increases spell power by ten percent, right? It's not like ten percent of the warlock's spell power; it's just a flat ten percent. So yeah, that's, that's kind of a change from wrath and Decada. It's a base buff, so you're not going to be funneling gear to your demos out the gate. I think the thing with Warlocks is they suffer from the Hunter treatment that we mentioned earlier. They've got a few new toys, but generally, with exception to demo to some regards, if you know what you're playing in Wrath, you'll be the same here. The buttons are the same, you just gotta put the new toys in somewhat and it's fine. Like, if you are familiar with Warlock, you will be fine in in Kata. There's nothing like the rep paladin where you're gonna need a new manual um just the manual you'll have needs a few alterations updates if you will but yeah it, it is the buttons the same just oh there's the thing with curses banes and i think havoc or no it's bane of havoc basically there, there there's uh more classifications of your dots now so a lot of things you would know as curses 
in expansions past might now be Bane's. I think um, Curse of Agony is now Bane of Agony, for example. So you can have multiple things running at the same time. So Warlocks won't necessarily need to make the choice between a damaging effect or a utility effect, like Curse of Elements or Curse of Bane, for example. You can probably do both at the same time right now in Kata. And I, I see Bane of Doom is another one, which it yeah, that's another one, takes yeah. a whole ass minute. It used to be Curse of Doom, and it'd be like, yo, is this boss fight even long enough to justify putting up Curse of Doom? Oh, it is? Okay. But yeah, now that one is another Bane. And then you've got Demon Soul, which 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 is an addition where it yeah, it's a two minute cooldown, but it's a, yeah, a nice cooldown depending on what pet you've got. So like if you've got an imp out, it will increase so you and your summoned demon fuse souls, granting the warlock's temporary power depending on the demon active. So if you've got an imp, you're gonna get critical strike chance of your cast time destruction spells increased by thirty percent. So thirty percent crit for twenty seconds. If it's a uh, a void walker, more for soloing, all threat generated. Uh, it, you like from you is transferred to your Void Walker. Stucker Bus increases shadow damage dealt by 10%. Fell Hunter increases periodic shadow damage uh, by 20%. And Fell Guard Spell Haste increased by 15%. And Fire and Shadow Damage done increased by 10%. This is where the whole um, demon weaving comes in. You know, making sure that you're you're using Demon Soul with the right pet out and then soul burning to, to get uh, the... the the pet out that you want more long term. So I see Demon Soul has a two minute cooldown. Uh, you might not know off the top of the head, but is that reduced somehow, like lower than two minutes? Because it's a 20 second duration for all of these buffs. So it's like 20 seconds is what, one to like 10% uptime on any of those buffs. But if you could reduce the cooldown of Demon Soul, pretty sure you can. Would, and, it would increase that uptime, but yeah, that that would be like sick. But even still, like that that explains a little bit more of the uh, the pet weaving. Yeah, that, that it's it's where the it's demon kind of weaving like, comes in. Yeah, it's kind of like a reworked version of demonic sack from uh, vanilla and TBC and what have you. Um, because the thing then was to off your pet and you get a massive buff from it. Like succubus was. Well, they were executed on the regular because you got like 15% increased shadow damage for God knows how long. It was just broken. And it, this is kind of that without killing your pet um, and with more interesting uses for the other pets. Because if I recall, uh, Demonic Sack was pretty crap for everything that wasn't a succubus, at least in terms of PV, uh, PvE. Uh, everything you see on the Demon Soul, you can see a use for that pretty much. Obviously, Voidwalker is clearly not going to see much use in any form of raiding, but yeah, it depends. Like, um, damage for your, your periodic spells. That might be really big for Affliction, for example, you know. So there's a lot there that you can do with it. It's actually a nifty little addition. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you want any more Warlock information, I'm sure our homie Majay that was on earlier he said he was going to main Warlock, I think, right, Scotty? So I believe he is still maining Warlock, yeah. Uh, so it'll probably be, when we do the Warlock episode, it'll be Jay and Crix that comes on. As I say, like I, I can yeah. tell you the, the, the rough, you, you know, what, what Warlocks do and how, the, how they do things uh, and the new abilities, but yeah, like I, I wouldn't ever sit here and pretend to be a Warlock expert because they got a pet. Fuck that, I want to play that. Uh, did we have, uh, was there any, uh, hang on, was there anything else you want to talk about with Warlock before we move on? Uh, maybe you brought it up while I was using the bathroom, but we mentioned earlier, if anybody's joined recently, that uh, Soul Stone can now be used in combat and be used kind of like a battle res. So Warlocks have that. Yep, and we covered all the new abilities. We covered DI, Demon Soul, uh... Yeah, I, I would I would say the majority of the important things, like if you're on the fence about a warlock, I'd say you kind of know how they're generally gonna play. So what have we got next? Is there any any important masteries? Well, um uh warrior looks like it's next, so we have warrior DK priest, but yeah, are there any uh, important masteries for any of the specs that benefit themselves as the warlock or the raid? Because Typically, when I think of Warlock, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to bring some sort of raid buff that can kind of scale. 
But well, well the thing is, when you, with mastery or anything, when you say that, like you got to remember, like you've only if you're talking about a ten man raid, like demonic pact, even though it's only ten percent, just static ten percent now, like it's still huge because there's only two places you're gonna get it from. You you know you're gonna get it from yeah. an Ellie Shaman or a Demo Lock. Like that's it. Like have you have you got one of those in the raid? But like you, you you're gonna need like one of them. Oh, when I say need. If you if you wanted to maximize buffs, you you're gonna want one of them. So they're still like got a, a really sought after spot, especially with the fact that they do actually do very good damage as well. Like demo locks do pump, and pump even uh, more can... if people know what they're doing. So, de like warlocks is also another class where I think of I kind of uh, feel the same way with them as a balanced druid. It's like, yeah, I can single target and AOE as a boomy. I can see hunters single target and aoe as hunters warlock the same type of class so is warlock a little bit ahead of hunter like where does warlock lie in like single target and aoe class i, I think it's so hard to say because but like I, I and i'm not just saying this as a cop out i i genuinely feel like if 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 blizzard launch cat are in a uh, yeah in a state how the classes are in four point 3.4 but, but they're calling it 4.4 a good warlock will be a uh, uh, you know a not as good hunter a good hunter would be a warlock who's not quite as good i know we, we're always going to end up with having like you know this is if you've got the best player of every spec all in the same raid then it it should paint a clear picture if you know what i mean but honestly the classes in pve are like quite balanced overall i i i'd seen cricks on private servers be you know top damage but then i'd seen him beat by an arms warrior i'd seen him beat by a fire mage i see you know it's like uh, i've seen hunters top of it kilogram like kilogram amazing hunter shout out kilogram if you're watching you know it, it top damage single target and aoe but then jay would would beat him occasionally single target and aoe as an ellie shaman uh, uh you know like it's it is it is is weirdly balanced. Obviously, you've still got those specs that are dog yeah. shit, but I wouldn't like. I wouldn't say like, oh, uh, uh, where is it, where is a demo lock? Is it is it B tier? Is it A tier? I honestly think the 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 specs are all quite competitive, or, or the majority of the specs are quite competitive. But the competitive specs are just harder to play. L let me ask you this question a, a little bit of a different light. I don't know why, but thanks tyson for bringing it up like where do they sit on the meters and i'm grilling scotty right now so uh scotty as far as like rng oh i'm not am i not grilling you enough i'll, I'll i saw the head nod i know no, because i'm because i'm not going to be able to answer you where are like <laughs> where know, where, 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 where are warlocks gonna uh, sit i don't know how good's the warlock as as far as rng is involved because you were saying like fire mage for example it it's very rng based one fight you could be fucking pumping the next fight you're just on the like if you have the top uh, five uh, shown on your damage meter, i'd say you warlocks less, le less rng warlocks less so rng more, more like yeah, more pre-planning okay. more pre-planning knowing what you're going to do even before the pull like i said with gear swapping uh like i would say it's more controlled yeah, it would it would be more consistent. Uh, I, I I don't see okay. much RNG in actually in any of the warlock specs. Not just demo, like affliction, destruction, all very consistent specs. Yeah, you've not got the like any big frustrations unless you do something wrong. Would be m me personally what I would say. Warlock is like you snapshot your dots and you're good to go. Like you're. You're doing full value. Yeah, and I mean, even snapshotting works differently, obviously, in Kata, but like, because it's dynamic. There, there is no snapshotting to, to, to what you see as snapshotting there in Wrath. Obviously, it dynamically updates based on your stats, but uh, there's still a certain amount of snapshotting, but you don't snapshot corruption like you do in Wrath, where you're snapshotting it with a tricks and stuff like that, because once tricks has gone, the next time you refresh it, it's going to refresh based on the stats that you've got at the moment you refresh it. So it, it, that's what I mean. It's consistent. Like it's yeah, it, it's all, all all the specs of warlock are consistent. But uh, it's impossible for me to sit and say where are they going to sit 
and it's impossible for anyone anyone who anyone who makes a youtube video claiming warlocks are going to be top dps or feral is going to be top dps or paladins are going to be top dps take it with a pinch of salt because it's talking shit because i've got no idea like we don't know yeah, how we don't know how it's going to work in 4.4 we don't know how it's going to be tuned we don't know what weird shit blizzard's going to do we don't like who knows and that's the thing, is the best private servers in the world will never be able to accurately replicate what was the case back in the day. They just don't have access to Blizzard's numbers. And even when Blizzard do it, they still make changes that completely screw the hierarchy. They've done it throughout all the classic. I remember when Ferals got tweaked in Wrath, they suddenly became the creme de la creme. Like, our Feral is nigh on unbeatable on most fights. And it's just like, why even bother? You can do as well as you can, but if you just give that man two seconds to get started and just sit on the boss, he's away with the fairies. Now, ferals might have been good in Wrath. I vaguely remember them being halfway decent. I don't remember them being that powerful. And that was all because Blizzard went, and we're going to tweak that. Same with Rhett. They gave him the glyph for um, uh, Reckoning. And it didn't make them amazing by any stretch, but they suddenly were a lot better. Um, so something like that could happen. We, we could see it where, for reasons unknown, Frost Mage becomes the best spec in the game without peer, and all the wizards re-roll Frost. It, we got to wait and see, and the beta isn't doing much to tell us what's going on on that front either. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, and as I say, like, the, the whole, uh, either, either, like, forget the glyphs. You know, Feral Druids, anyone who played Wrath Private Service as a Feral Druid, you will know you used you you used Fairy Fire on cooldown to, to for a chance to proc home in a clarity. And the whole reason the whole feral thing happened in Wrath was because it didn't. It didn't proc Omen of Clarity ever. So instead of like just going, well, let's put it how it was, because it did, even in or original Wrath. Feral Fairy Fire had a chance to proc Omen of Clarity. Um, they just then went, oh, we'll add a glyph where it's got a hundred percent chance. I still hate that change, and I'm a, I'm a long time Feral lover enjoyer. This whole channel was bit built on being a Feral Druid. Um, but you're exactly right. You know, Feral went from being like everyone was like, oh my god, everyone said Feral was going to be top DPS, and they're shit. And then Blizzard gave him a glyph, and it was like, oh wow. You know, literally overnight, Feral went from being like a, a not a joke, but average, to them being fucking god mode single target. Blizzard could very well do that now. We could talk about the gargoyle changes, the gargoyle nerfs. You know, with, with hey, yeah, like hey, snapshotting uh, gargoyles, uh, and then the changes they went through. Like that's why I don't do tier lists. I don't worry. People say how do they perform? They'll perform. Can you play the game? What what class do you want to play? You want to play a warlock? Can you play the game? Like, have you got a good understanding? And you're willing to put some effort in? You'll be fine. Play any of them. I'm not gonna lie. The first half of the show, I was trying to put a tier list together, and I was gonna like surprise everybody with like what we've come up with as a tier list at the end of the show. I gave up on it, but I was I was trying. I was like, I know Scotty hates tier lists, and I wanted to have that to be like, oh well. At the end of the show, this is what we've come up with a, with a tier list. But yeah, tier list—it's all speculation, anyways. Like we have no fucking clue what's gonna happen. But uh, the next class would be warrior so far, and DK and priest are the other two of the three classes we haven't covered yet. Okay, well let's try. We've been going for four hours, so let's try and uh, get through both of these in like thirty minutes. Let you know, like, like fifteen minutes on each, uh, and then we'll we'll call it. Well, we've got three. We've got three. Yeah, so 15 for 12. So that's 12, 45. Uh, 9, uh, 6. What? what? Three what, what did more you say? hours and we're out of oh. here. Garrett, are you cool with three more hours? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Uh, so I've got Warrior Priest lineup. I haven't got DK, but Carrot's going to carry DK, so I'm not going to have to do anything there anyway. Um, is Warrior next? So we had Super Chats that Warrior's decided next. Warrior's next. It, one point for Warrior. So one dollar, one euro, one, one pound is per point and yeah warrior has one right now so warrior is next dk priest has zero nobody likes priest or dk's apparently well I, i'm pretty sure i did 
I all this the longest class picking guide ever. So yeah, I, I, I think it was an accurate title for for YouTube on what's going on tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's do Warrior then. Um, either of you want to start while I get another drink because I feel like I'm going to need it. But I, I I know Warrior very well actually, so I'm happy to fill in any gaps. I'll, have you noticed I know Mealy? I, I know Mealy very well. <laughs> I, I know nothing about it, so the only thing I would say about it is I'm worried for Warrior, so help me. If I was a Warrior going into Kata and I had like some reservations, do I continue to play Warrior? Do I switch to a different melee class because DKs are going to be doing more damage, DKs are going to be sought after as tanks, like priority-wise? Like, uh, help me want to play a warrior if I'm currently playing one. And I've I've heard the hype from other melee classes that they get. I've heard warrior's not going to be wanted as a main tank for sure. Possibly off tank, but then you have the feral. So if you don't have a feral, maybe warrior fills that slot. But like even DPS wise, I haven't heard anybody say, yo, warrior, single target DPS, warrior cleave DPS is insane in Cataclysm. So yeah, help me out to. Have you not heard me say warriors. that? I really haven't. I I'm not bullshitting right now. Like I haven't heard anybody say like warriors so good. Warriors have their chance to shine. They have classic. They have season of discovery. They have TBC. They have wrath. Kind of maybe I'll take wrath back. So are they making a comeback in Kata? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I would argue it's a similar state of affairs to Wrath in many regards. Um, it's not one for one, but certainly by the end of the expansion, Warriors are probably going to be throwing axes down throats left, right and centre. Um, the go-to spec, it will be arms. I, I don't think there's really much contention on that. It, it's... Fury will probably have a place, particularly again near the end of the expansion, but Kata is where ARMS just got good. Um, and even if not good in terms of how fun it is to play, in how hard it hits. It is one of those specs that just does the damage. It's not very complex in terms of the rotation, but um, I do remember a thing back in the day, though I doubt it will be a thing now because we're playing on the end uh, patch is that you needed an arseload of macros to even get the damn thing to work. Because there was a lot of council ring and other such crap, and I had a warrior ult. I... it hurt me, and I was a small child at the time. And what you said about prot warriors, I think again, a similar thing to, to Wrath. If you've got a really great prot warrior, yeah, take him over a crap DK or a crap bear or a crap paladin, of course. Skill will always trump flavor of the month but if you've got to level pegging warriors and blood decays and so on you will favor the other specs that's just the nature of the beast they are not as good as the um bears and the dks and that's kind of where warrior sits for a lot of the expansion as far as i can recall they're not bad but you're probably not going to be a classic god like you were in vanilla so, Scotty, in Wrath, if I saw a warrior as a main tank or off tank in a, a main raid, I was like, "What? what is going on here? Why don't we have, like, a paladin? Why don't we have a DK? But if I did see a warrior, if I queued up, like, a, a random gamma dungeon or something like that, and I saw a warrior, I was kind of hyped because they had, like, shockwave, AoE stun. They could just chain pull, like, throughout the, the gamma dungeon, the heroic. And like warriors had like a really great spot there. So, how are you feeling in Kata as far as warriors in raids and like five man dungeons? Overpowered as fuck. <laughs> honestly, um, I I I honestly don't know. Uh, they're they're bonkers. Like if you play it right, the thing is they so in Kata they play quite similarly to season of discovery if you're using flagellation the rune what's the, the the rune where you basically always want to be over 80 percent rage where like it's quite a pulling game spend pull spend pull like that is that is it, it someone have to correct me if i'm wrong if it's flagellation it might be it might be a different rune in sod um but it, it's very similar to whatever the rune is that i'm trying to think of 
uh, where like you're, you're almost built around one ability, which let's we can get onto the new abilities. Thanks for the segue, go. Um, being you're Co <laughs> Col Colossus Smash. So new ability you get is Colossus Smash. And yes, um, uh, consumed by rage. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Yeah, consumed by rage. Um, so Zach, what a legend! <laughs> Telling Scotty how to play a fucking warrior, Zach. Huge shout out. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I should hope so. Uh, he plays enough warriors. I should hope he knows the names of his abilities. Uh, so Col Colossus Smash is one of the new ability you're gonna get, and I believe it's at eighty-one. Uh, where? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so you sm smash the target for 150 percent weapon damage plus two twelve. Like the damage it does is is pointless. Like we're not even worried about that really. Uh, but it allows your attacks to entirely bypass 100 percent of the armor for six seconds. So the the whole gameplay style of a warrior in Kata is how much can I maximize my ability usage in that six second window? You know where I'm bypassing all armor. So it's very much like colossal smash fucking make sure that i'm as close to 100 rage as possible and like just destroy it like pump as fucking hard as possible in six seconds and then you're waiting for it again uh but you're not waiting 20 seconds it's got a 20 second cooldown but then you've got talents that reset it um so as arms like you've got like taste for blood as well so where it increases overpower crit ch chance and in addition whenever your rend ability causes damage you get a chance to to get obviously overpower so when we're thinking about what you can put in that window you know you're going to be able to mortal strike you're going to be able to yeah use overpower potentially execute uh heroic strike works differently now so heroic strike and cleave where at the moment in wrath obviously you you queue it up they're like yeah yeah you know they're, they're your next attack rather than an actual attack whereas now they're off like you can see when i'm using it if you're watching on stream like it's not putting anything else on cooldown so if i was to have that up like i've got overpower so now i can overpower and heroic strike at exactly the same time so you, like you've got all of these things that you can do in that six second window uh obviously it does now mean heroic strike and um and, and cleave have got a cooldown i've got a three second cooldown but then you also get a new ability called in a in a rage which reduces the cooldown of both of them by 50 percent so when you've got that up, you know, they're now, you, you know, you, you can more or less spam them. You know, it's uh, you're, you're limited by the GCD. Uh, it's like, uh, it's it's bonkers, but it, yeah, but it's different. It's, it's a different play style, but the, the, the AOE damage or cleave, like it don't matter how many targets. Blade, get used to Bladestorm basically doing like 70 to 80% of your damage. Like literally, like as a warrior, you'll go in a five-man heroic, and you will feel like you're hard carrying because you'll literally just charge in, sweeping strikes, blade storm, and then you you can just laugh at, at how much damage you're doing compared to everyone else. It, it is it's crazy. I, I, there's no other word for it. But arms, absolutely. Like if if you're playing fury, unless a 4.4 a, a version of the game or you know more modern sims show something that no one else has understood arms is basically your dps spec from pre-patch all, all, all the way through the game but i would so say a contender for absolutely a contender for number one dps single target cleave aoe everything if, if, if it's a good warrior because again you're juggling a lot of plates it's not a simple spec to play like it like it has been you know i know with fury like in in wrath you've got weapon desyncing and shit you've not got any of that to worry about anymore but like you you really do need to be thinking about what you're doing and when you're using it yeah i i, but, I rate i rate arms very very highly i've heard that there's not many bosses that you need to have like a healing reduction for but the final talent in the arms tree is Mortal Strike. It looks like Fury also has a way to have no, no. You get more. You get more. Reduction. You get you get Mortal Strike at ten. Ten. What yeah, Mortal Strike's the spec ability. You might be looking at an older talent tree because it used to be, but the uh, um, oh, I'm looking at Sod. Fuck me. Yeah, uh, the kick, final talent for arms is Blade Storm. Kick this guy. Well, uh, well, speaking on the subject, because uh, is Mortal Strike part of the rotation? If there is a boss fight that has 
like, you use mortal strike all the time reduction it's, it's, irre- strike it's irrelevant you just use it all of the time to, you use it on cooldown you don't need you don't need to worry about a rogue having wound poison or any other class like a frost mage having permafrost or anything like that which is only 10 percent. but no no hunter pet like arms warrior has that uh debuff like on lockdown yeah 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 uh, a, 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 a nice added bonus but yeah it's not like it's not going to affect yeah it, it's not like you're having to go out of your way to use it but most Perfect. of the debuffs are not are not punishing anymore as the same you like with aim shot going for hunters like we covered earlier you know it's now just a just a an ability that you use like it's not like you need to be marksman to to bring the healing debuff uh, but yeah, yeah uh, an added bonus, I suppose, of being an arms warrior is, is you've got that. But you've got so many procs. Like that's why arms feels great. You know, you, you've got you've got procs to yeah allow you to obviously use um to to use overpower at any time. But you've also got procs to allow you to execute at any time, which is obviously just amazing. Called sudden death. So your melee hits have a six percent chance of resetting Colossus uh, cooldown on Colossus Smash. Oh, sorry, that's Colossus Smash. So that's how you can keep that up more frequently. Sorry, than the, the ten seconds. Um, oh, you can spread your bleeds. That was what I wanted to get to. Uh, y- you know, so uh, every spec will take this arms, fury, protection, whatever. So you can literally put up rend on one target and then thunderclap, and it will go on everything. And then, so spread all your bleeds, and then just fucking blade storm, <laughs> and just and just watch the damage. Like it's it's disgusting and so fun in PvP. Like let uh, you know, don't forget bloody uh, uh, heroic leap. You know it's just so good. Not only you know you can charge, you can charge in combat as, as arms, and you've got heroic leap. So someone's trying to kite you, and heroic leap does damage and just looks epic. Like uh, honestly, I, I I I never get excited about warriors because it's not really a class that I play a lot. But the cat a warrior is a lot of fun, and like deadly calm. What you get in arms. So for the next ten seconds, none of your abilities cost rage, but you continue to generate rage. But you yeah you can't stack it with inner rage where you uh you know where it reduces the cooldown of heroic strike, but. You know, you, you're literally just going to be able to spam as much as you want for 10 seconds and know you're going to be at full rage at the end of it. Oh, man, it, it's just such a good spec. Like, uh, and it's Lambs to the Slaughter, where your Mortal Strike effect causes, uh, which re- it refreshes the duration of Rend. So when you've got Rend up as well, you never need to refresh it. So you'll, you'll Rend once, a little bit like where you would Serpent Sting once and then you're using Cobra Shot. You'll, you'll rend once and then you're just keeping that up like full time. Uh, I mean, it, it's just beautiful. But where is the, where is the, uh, is it just because these are so low? There, there is, oh, I might be thinking about Fury. No, where is where you can, you, there's a proc where you can um, execute at any time. Zach will know. Zach will, Zach will Yeah, sudden you. death. I think that is meant to be in arms. And it only says keep him rage after execute. I thought it was sudden death. I think it might be in later expansions. I swear it is sudden death. Or earlier expansions, but... Like when you... Yeah, uh, sudden death used to do that, I swear, but it isn't. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe it's changed. I, I I even remember it being nine percent, but I yeah. Uh, I don't know. It looks like sudden death was added in wrath, and the only thing that changed in Kata was the ability was redesigned, and that's all I see. It doesn't say. On Wowpedia, what oh, the oh, people are saying it's sudden was. death. In, yeah, they're saying it was late in later expansions. Okay, for some reason I actually thought it was in Kata, but yeah, I'm sure it was like nine percent where you you had a chance to to be able to just execute at any time. 
but uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't play Dragonflight, so it was in the private server no. we played. It what it was, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused there. Wait, sudden death is supposed to make uh, execute at any health percentage? Yeah. Hmm. I, I was trying to look it up. I couldn't find it really quickly. No. Uh, well, yeah, may, may, maybe I'm maybe I'm dreaming, and, it, and it's a different expansion. But I could. I, I know execute increases increases melee haste in fury. Um, but I could have sworn there was a proc where you could execute any time. It's literally in wrath, right? Oh, maybe it's wrath, and it's not here anymore. Uh, maybe maybe that's what it is then. That 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 yeah, literally could true. be what it is. I'm going through Walpedia and it, yeah, it seems to be it was up in Wrath and Kara has redesigned what we see now. And I think in later expansions, it was redesigned back to something as we understand it in this conversation. Yeah, it could, um, it, it could be, it could be Wrath that I'm confusing it with because I'm like, hang on, I, I'm, I'm sure that should be, be procking. Yeah, but it, it will be, it'll be Wrath. Uh, I've got a warrior in Wrath and that's exactly probably what I'm thinking of. Uh, but overall, anyway, like forget that. Like you, it, it's a it's a machine, uh, and PvP is just incredible. Like I actually done more PvP on this warrior than I done anything else. Like it was just so much fun. You know, having like throw down, so you got a five second stun, being able to charge around and yeah, heroic leap. It, arms is next level. I don't even want to talk about Fury too much, uh, mainly because. I don't even think we'll see many Fury Warriors. No, there's no point with arms. Like what I was saying earlier about you will be throwing axes down throats, but only as arms. Um, Fury is kind of in the place that arms is in Wrath at the minute. Is you don't really want to bring one unless you need the debuffs. Um, but yeah, just compared to its bigger brother, Fury... There's no point. You'd look at a Fury Warrior and go, why aren't you playing arms? Like, nothing you do is even going to come close to arms, so why bother? Yeah, and why, why have you it's, took it's... two weapons when you could have just took one? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I have one big stick, you need two of these, and you're not even half as good. Go away. It, it, it's just, yeah, I, I think both of my guilds warriors are going arms. If they aren't, I will, I, I will be concerned for their well-being, frankly. Um, but... Yeah, no, arms is a beast. It just the rest of the warrior is questionable. Yeah, I mean, I mean, prop warrior, I think is going to have a place. It's just where its place is. So yeah, it don't quite sit in the main tank spot, and it don't quite sit in the off tank spot. Although I did like the point that Subtle made last week on the when we were talking about paladins. Oh, but but then I think warrior came up, and he was saying about vigilance, where that changes. So each time. Like you put vigilance on someone, and each time they're attacked, yeah, your taunt cooldowns refreshed, but you also gain vengeance as if twenty percent of the damage was done to you. So I feel like prop warrior could be a decent-ish off tank, but uh, I don't know. I th I think it's going to be in a similar position to Wrath again because. Um... In my guild, we got one of our warriors has a pro off spec, and we pull him out, usually for ad management on fights, um, because the amount of shit that prot has for like stuns and gathering ads, it's wonderful, it's insane. They are amazing at that, but that's all they seem to be any good at consistently. Like especially when you compare them to everything else. Again, a really good prot warrior who knows his shit is better than a, a mediocre to crap anything else that's you know skill of a player any day of the week mm -hmm. um no, skill of a class any day of the week uh, it's getting late words are being fumbled but <laughs> you and me both <laughs> but at the end of the day again this warrior he's he, he was one of our main tanks in uh well, he was our feral off tank in tbc so it's not like he doesn't understand the concept of tanking but it's like well we've got a prop warrior uh, sorry, a prop piled in. We have a blood DK, and we have a feral on tap. We don't really need you as prot. But when uh, in TOGC, like on the bloody um, faction champs, like 
right, you can come out because you've got Shockwave. Um, and other fights like that where you have so many things all gathered in one spot and you can stun them. Warrior is amazing because Shockwave is broken. And yeah, in places like that, I do see people going, right, I'm going to put my props back on and I'm just a utility bot for an entire fight. If you enjoy that, that's great. And dungeons, yeah, probably going to be one of the good ones. I don't think they're going to be as good as they are in Wrath at the moment, because the reason they're so good in Wrath is because it's a mental hybrid spec. Um, it's not actually protection in the um, traditional sense. It's half arms, half prot. So what makes them so good there is that you can do that. You can't do that in Kata but they still have a robust enough toolkit to make them decent in dungeons. Um, but yeah, I think, like you said, they're not going to be a main tank. Off tank, it depends. It really depends. So is Warrior one of the classes, the probably very few classes, that could benefit from, I think Blizzard said that it might not be a requirement to spend 31 points to get all the way through one talent tree before you can go into a second tree? I'd love that. Like, that is my biggest gripe with the Cat of Talent trees, is the restriction. If they went, right, there is no restriction, just do stupid shit, we would see some bloody mental combinations um, appear, like the Wrath Prot Arms Spec Revenge build thing. Um, I think if they did that, yeah, possibly. I mean, I, can't, I couldn't say without actually properly going in depth on all the talents, but I think if that restriction was removed, Warrior in a lot of respects, could benefit nicely. I don't think it would affect arms. Arms, is, as we've established, is already a mental thing. But Fury and Prot could definitely see some interesting tweaks if that restriction was removed. Yeah, I, I think a lot, the... of, a lot of classes could see some weird shit if that happened. But the, the, the difficulty is then, like, what, what, where do you, what, what is your mastery? Is your mastery the one that you've spent the most points in? I mean, we need to keep this on topic because we've still got two classes to do. Yeah, pro probably. Yeah, Scott. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you'd see some. Yeah, you, you would see some interesting things. Uh, but you ain't wrong. I just wanted to point out, like, because you mentioned it, and and if you was actually watching the screen when I done it, I went straight to the weapon. I know exactly where it comes <laughs> from. I know exactly what you're talking about. Gerfalak for an arms warrior is literally your legendary weapon in Kata. You, you, you know, like. Uh, you're not bothered about rogues running around with their fucking shiny legendary daggers and casters with their fucking staff. It's like, oh, you got orange weapons. Cool. I got Gerfalak. Watch what I do with this. <laughs> like, yeah. When when do you get that? Is that oh, it's, the, it, it, it's the last boss the... of the last raid. But oh. Still... Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> but it is mental, mate. Like, Gerfalak arms warriors are just. Like, yeah, good luck in PvP. But, like, honestly, it's fucking... It's mental. It's broken. Um, but in terms of, like, the whole, like, talent thing, yeah. Uh, it, it's a difficult one. Because everyone gets really strong, like, deep talents. You know, like, sword and board. Increasing crit, increasing damage. Like, that, that, like none of that's particularly useful. Like, when, when you... It's how unbalanced it would be across the board. Like, you, you can look at some of them and be like, yeah, I mean, I can live without that. Like, can I just survive? Like, I need to benefit from vengeance. So you'd have to, to, to benefit from vengeance, let's say you just had to have more points in the prot tree. At which point, like, I, th I don't know. I, I think it would be weird. It, you're talking like a complete rebalance of everything now and yeah i would need to sit here and look at a talent calculator and go this is why it wouldn't work for this class this is why it wouldn't work for this class like i can't just do that off the top of me yet because i've never really thought about it because i can't see any way that it would work because the talents are kind of balanced around the fact that you have to put 31 points in a tree mm. uh, you know well, you said there was a shaman spec that you didn't want to have, like Earthquake. I think is the no, 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 no. But you, but you have, shit, but, but you have, but you, fine. yeah, but you still have to put thirty-one points in it. It's not about like yeah, not but wanting if you didn't, to. Then you, you could get that extra one point in the third tier of a different talent tree. Me, I don't know if it yeah, yeah, would I know, benefit a shaman. I, I, but... I, know, I know what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, is. You have to put 31 points in a tree at the moment. If you didn't, then yeah. yeah Maybe yeah, there'd yeah. be some specs where you only put 21 in. And then you started spreading it around amongst the other two trees. But 
that literally mate they can't even get the beta working of a game that they've made before uh like do you really trust them to start trying to rebalance every class and spec around allowing you to talent however you want honestly it wouldn't surprise me at this point yeah yeah just open it up to whatever because the the beta is a free-for-all just let cataclysmic be a free-for-all do whatever the fuck you want if what, it works, it works, it's the wild it doesn't, west it it's the wow well west yeah but if they if they was to have done that on the beta from the word go uh then i'd have been all right with that not the word go yeah, not yeah. gho just go you know where yeah. they just done it like straight away and was like oh we'll see what happens but it's too late now uh, yeah the beta hasn't really been so much a beta as it has just been i just go level just yeah. see what happens like there's so much about the beta that hasn't been a beta it's not even funny but we're we're still talking about Warrior very briefly, so let's wrap this one up. Um, other like new abilities, real key changes amongst the specs. I mentioned mentioned critical block earlier when we were talking about paladins. Um, so you know Warrior is the highest block class in terms of the amount of damage you can block. It's very luck based. You know a paladin can always be using well not always, but you know we're, we're, they can say right I want to block fifty percent and use holy shield you know a, a warrior is very rng dependent or heavy mastery dependent where when you're about to block it does a new roll and then goes oh was that a crit or was it not and then potentially you can block 60 percent. so I, I like higher damage mitigation but more rng dependent um yeah 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 so critical block is protection fury just increases uh, benefit uh, ability uh, sorry increases the benefit of abilities that cause or require you to be enraged so it increases the damage of things like uh rage and blow and yeah things where you can only use them when you're enraged and then arms just <laughs> just gives you a t well a percentage chance for your melee attacks to instantly trigger an additional melee attack for 100% damage and I laugh when I said it because, like, even in my shit gear on this, it's twenty six percent. One in four is going to get a free attack over over one in four. Um, like pretty, pretty, pretty messed up. Uh, in terms of new abilities, we covered Colossus Smash. We spoke about uh heroic leap, uh deadly calm. We spoke about deadly calm, but that's a talent anyway. Uh, we need to cover the defensive, which is somewhere when I actually find it is it actually class of fury uh rally rally and cry so temporarily grants you and all party or raid members within 30 yards 20 percent maximum health now you kind of get punished a little bit if you're a protection warrior uh again which sucks when prop warriors could do with a little bit of helping catter because you can't stack it with last stand and I know that, that, that's like, well, why, why would you be able to? But, you know, they're two completely different abilities. It's like you're the tank. If you want to increase your own health and then increase your health and everybody else's, like the fact that they don't stack is a little bit shit. Uh, I would kind of say outside of that, that's every... Oh, Enrage Regeneration as well. Uh, so you regenerate 36% of your total health, but that's because I've actually got talents. Ordinarily, it's thirty percent of your total health over ten seconds. Uh, you you basically consume your enrage, and while you're healing, you can't get an enrage. But a thirty percent max health, uh, or thirty six if you've got uh field dressing, which increases self healing by six percent. Like that, you know, it, it's massive. Honestly, I I think like arms warriors PvP PVE gonna have a really good time. Uh, you can't use both. Yeah, it's not that they don't stack you. You just can't use both. So Victory Rush was bugged early on in the beta. Before the level 80 to 85 was opened up, I tried to kill a warrior, and they just they just demolished me with Victory Rush. Like, they killed something, and they were, like, topped. Like, so the healing that warriors get in Cataclysm, I know it was a bug, but even still, like, it still Victory does a Rush... Lot. It's, it's a 20% of your maximum deal. HP. And then so, there's also like second wind as well. So yeah, like warriors, they're pretty tanky in my opinion. But that was a good, a good segue. So yeah, victory rush. You know, obviously victory rush at the moment is just a free attack after you kill something that grants honor or XP. Uh, now it's a heal as well. 
you know, there's no, there's no fucking downtime. Like leveling as a warrior, it's just like charge, nuke, victory rush, boom, full elf again. Next one, charge, hit something, victory rush again, boom. Like it, it, like it, it's just fun, man. I sound like I, I, I've almost sold myself on playing a warrior in Kata. Because now I've just like is, started remembering I'm... how much fun I had on this warrior. Like it really is good. Because I'm with you. I leveled a warrior properly for the first time in Kata uh, when the game launched. The first thing I did, I made a Worgen warrior, and I got that thing to 85. And I had some issues with arms at max level. A because of all the macros you needed at the time, and me being a piddly ass ten year old. But getting to that stage was amazing. Like you say, you literally. Just decimated the open world you couldn't because i had a warrior he got up to level 20 and a big issue i had was i i die a lot i i have no healing you know i'd come from playing a hunter and then a dk where dying wasn't really a thing and you play a warrior when you have next to nothing to keep you alive and then you go into cat a warrior and it's like oh different beast entirely it's like death strike on steroids and less punishing to use like it is a beautiful thing for leveling. Why are you why are you arguing with someone in in chat though? I've only I've only just picked not, up on it. No, no, I'm I'm not arguing with anybody. Oh, okay. Uh, Been fun yeah. to watch. No, we're we're good. We're good. Uh, so we <laughs> we've covered warrior. We've covered lock, mage, rogue, druid, shaman, paladin. There's two classes left to go over. There's the death knight and the priest. Well, I mean, is it our choice? Was there no super chat that decided this? No, no, neither. Nobody has super chatted in favor of Death Knight or Priest for us to discover first over the other class. So, oh, is that that probably sounds like I'm peeing? It does. Oh, it, it, it literally was, sounds I'm, like you're peeing. <laughs> I was I was pouring a, a drink there. Sorry, and I just realized I'm like, oh shit! Like, it literally sounded up. like you was pissing onto yeah. the floor. <laughs> Yeah, what? I was like, what are you talking like, I just flop it out under the desk and go, oh, so what we're going to talk about now? That is literally yeah. what it was like. Uh, I got the piss jug uh, below the table here. But no, no, it's DK and Priest. We've covered everything else. So if you just tuning in recently, everything else has been discussed. The VOD is going to be available as always. But uh, yeah, DK Priest. Two to go. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm good on Priest. I've done a lot on a Priest. Uh, and uh, I have not done a, a massive amount on a DK, so I think we should we should let I think we should let Big Carrot have his big moment, and this is it. This is we we, we go DK, and he's gonna absolutely blow our mind on everything. And yeah, yeah, I got, um, yeah, Big Carrot, let's go DK. Big Carrot. Oh, right. Okay. Well. Let's start first and foremost then, because I cannot remember how the fuck you've done it up to this point, even though I've been here the entire time, with the uh, new abilities across the board. First thing you're going to see is Festering Strike, which, if I'm honest, is a bit pointless. Basically, what it does is it's a, a melee attack which refreshes the duration of your plagues, which I will get to later because that is very important, particularly for Unholy. Um, and. Then, I think... Ah, no. You've also got Outbreak and Necrotic Strike. Now, Outbreak is just a one-minute cooldown, puts the diseases, your plagues, your whatnot, on your current target. Instead of having to waste your runes on applying Icy Touch and Plague Strike, one-minute cooldown, pop that, no rune cost. It's basically going to be your opener, so you get your, uh, your plagues on the boss as soon as you feasibly can without having to worry about lining up things like your obliterates and so on. Necrotic Strike, uh, not really going to see much use in PvE. Uh, it might do eh, on some fights if there's a really niche situation, but Necrotic Strike, it just absorbs the uh, healing done to the target for a period of time. And uh, it also reduces the casting time on said target. So. You can see how that's more a PvP thing. If you can, as we discussed earlier, line of sight, uh, a healer, maybe drop a smoke bomb, and then have your DK friend come around and spam the Chronic Strike, even if that healer gets in range, if they've got that debuff on them, they're screwed. It is a meaner version of Mortal Strike, but it doesn't have as many applications, basically. 
Okay. So uh, we're, 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 before we just carry on with abilities, I just want to get your your thoughts. You know, um, on on DK as a whole. You know, so like we will obviously uh, you, we, let, we'll say we've covered unholy because we've done outbreak, we've done necrotic strike. So like as a whole. Again, just I'm, I'm just trying to keep it in line with everything else. We've sort of spoke about the class before we went straight into the abilities, but you're really excited to talk about yeah, Death Knight. I, so you was like, right, everything yeah, we get, no, let's I go, just, let's go. Get that shit out of the way. That's the boring stuff. No, I'm going with you then. I'm going with you. Come on, let's get the boring stuff out of the way then. Let's do it. It is just that because the, all the good stuff that I need to speak about, this relates to. Right. Um, the yep. only interesting thing that DKs get is Dark Simulacrum, which um, I will touch on later because that is actually interesting. Now, the thing with DK, I love DK. DK is beautiful to me. It is honestly my all-time favorite class, but, and it is a big but, I do have some issues with it going from Wrath into Cataclysm. In that a lot of the convenience that was available in Wrath isn't in Kata. So a big part of DK is putting your diseases on a target um, and maintaining those diseases throughout the duration of a fight because those disease, diseases, apart from doing dot damage, they also increase the damage of your obliterate, your scourge strike, your, your whatever. Um, there was even a set by, I think it was Ulduar, which increased it further. And essentially my obliterates were hitting like tankers. They were insane. And in Wrath those diseases are easily maintained because you just have a glyph and that glyph reapplies them uh, for the single cost of one rune. I think it's uh, one blood rune or something like that. In Kata, it's not the case. Um, pestilence no longer does that. Um, in fact, what Pestilence does has been watered down and handed off to Festering Strike, which is really quite crap and pointless if you're anything but unholy. So I'm Frost, and we'll be going into Kata, and it's a dead ability, but because they've reworked how Pestilence works, it's not as, gr as great. Um, I now have to be spamming, well not spamming, but using my Icy Touch, my Howling Blast, my Plague Strike to get those debuffs back. And the reason Festering Strike isn't as worthwhile is because it uses two runes that you would otherwise spend on an obliterate and when you're playing a, a frost dk uh you will probably have the glyph of howling blast which will put frost fever on not just your primary target but all your targets so you're always going to have that up because as a frost dk you will have, I think, rhyme, I think it's rhyme procs or freezing fog. So that's always rolling. You're always going to get free procs of that. So you're better off he's using the one rune on Plague Strike to maintain that. That is the only real thing about DKs I cannot stand in Kata. Everything else I love. It's like you said with Pyromania. There's just that one thing that keeps it from being perfect. And for me, it is how diseases are handled. Now, if you're unholy, Festering Strike, it works. It fits into the rotation quite nicely. You can, you know, tap it every so often. It keeps them up. But as blood, as, um, as frost, don't really see the point in it. And that is just the one downside I have to the class as a whole. Because it makes something that was sort of an afterthought, something you pressed, almost muscle memory. And it turns it into a needless chore. Because if I put my dots up on, a, on a, some, something in Wrath, that's it, they're there. Unless I cock up, they are not going anywhere because Pestilence will refresh it every time I press it. And it's not a big cost. It's not anything. It just happens. Um, but now it's this really annoying little mini game that I have to focus on when I'd much rather be spamming Obliterate. Um, but yeah, that is my only real downside to, to DK. Everything else I love. I love the specs so much more in Kata than I do in Wrath because the thing with Wrath DKs, it, less so in Classic, but certainly in original Wrath, they weren't defined. They didn't have their own identities yet because you could do anything on a DK. You could DPS any spec, you could tank any spec. So because of that, 
a lot of talents in each of the specs were all over the place. You had tanking talents at random intervals of the specs. But I mean, you had DPS talents all over the place. Just nothing was necessarily as concrete. But come Cataclysm, all of that isn't the problem. Blood, oh, Blood is a beautiful bastard of a tank. When they finally decided to make Blood the proper tank, it worked. It worked so well, because one of the issues with Blood in Wrath, I find anyway, is the lack of anything to do. So you've got Death and Decay, you've got Icy Touch, but that's really all you're pressing until you get a Rune Strike proc. But you actually get Heart Strike in Kata, you get Bone Shield, you just get all this, these manner of things that you didn't otherwise have, and it becomes a spec that you were otherwise fairly inactive playing to a really proactive, yeah, no, if I don't press this, shit's going to happen. And I love that. And Unholy has always been, to me, the two-handed ghoul murder spec. And it definitely is in Kata. It is a delight to play. I cannot stand dual wield, morb, gargoyle, unholy in fucking wrath. It is not my jam. I will happily play unholy in Kata. It is delightful. Like, if you like having a pet and just managing all the debuffs and stuff, unholy is your jam. It's amazing fun. Is there any change to how runes work or runic power generation is from Wrath to Kata for Death Knights? Not that I've ever noticed. It all feels the same in that regard. The runes, you still got six runes. Um, it's a very much builder spender kind of class. So ha ha haste, will haste, have effects, haste affects runes. You, re you, oh, re yeah. Yeah, you regenerate runes faster based on haste. I don't I know if that was what you haste. was getting at, yeah. Go, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot, to be fair, I did forget about haste. It's been a long night. My You're brain good. is starting to leak out of my ears. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, other than haste, um, nah, it's all pretty standard. Though there are a lot of abilities that will just regen your runes as you go. I think runic empowerment is one, though it isn't actually working on the beta. Um, when you land a damaging shot with Death Coil, Frost Strike, or Runic Strike, you've got a 45% chance to deplete, uh, refill a depleted rune at random. So that's near enough every other hit. You're getting your runes back, which is amazing. And Runic Power is, it's like Rage, but blue. You've got it, you spend it. it, it it's as simple as that. Um, But yeah, no, that's the basis, basics of the DK. Um, the changes are just there to solidify the specs a lot more. Because, as I said, in Wrath, they were a lot more freeform. Bit different in Classic, where they had their identities. Um, but that was forged from years of playing them in private servers and even beyond Wrath. Where you see Frost, you think, no, that should be a dual wield spec. There's no two ways about it. There's no faffing around with a big two-hander. If you aren't dual wield Frost, why are you playing Frost? That sort of thing. Um, and that is kind of the case in Kata again. It, it, if you aren't dual wield Frost, why are you playing Frost? There are talents. Um, what is it? There's Might of the Frozen Wastes, which is right at the bottom, second uh, to last row for Frost, mm -hmm. which allows you to like use a two-hander i suppose it basically does the same thing that uh, the threat of thesaurian does but for a two-hander the issue is uh frost kind of re relies on having uh the rune of razor ice and the rune of the fallen crusader if you've not got that you are an inherent disadvantage because razor ice uh increases frost damage taken and you will be doing a lot of frost damage so, yeah, you have the option to do two-handed Frost. You're never really going to take it. Um, yeah, that's, those be the basics. As for the specs themselves, I think we've covered a fair amount tonight. Uh, the blood's going to be brutal. Um, it is. There's no two ways about it. I, I'm really going to enjoy blood, this expansion. I, I'm not with my favourite tank. I think Prop Paladin might be just in terms of play style. But I do vastly, vastly prefer Blood. Uh, as like I said, a lot of the talents that are in here, you will recognize from Kata if you play a DK. It's just you do have things like Blood Strike, you have Bone Shield. There are just 
abilities that you wouldn't use in Wrath that you are now. And whilst you could take them in Wrath, you would be a worse tank because of it. You wouldn't be as necessarily tanky, um, but you'd probably have more fun. But now you actually have buttons to press without waiting for them to light up. It's, it's an amazing spec. And the two DPS specs are actually fairly close. I, Unholy will pull ahead, I, I have no doubt about it. Unholy will run away. I think is it similar to Wrath, as the expansion goes on, Unholy is going to eventually pants Frost. As a Frost DK, I'm fine with that. I can live with that humiliation, that's all right. But Unholy's niche really is going to be the AoE damage it does. Not saying it's not going to do good single target, it is. The thing is, Frost has nothing resembling AoE. You've got a little bit of cleave with Howling Blast, but with how the spec works, you cannot justify the rune cost on things like Death and Decay or a Howling Blast, really, without a Freezing fo Fog proc. Um, because Frost is so reliant on its runes for Obliterate. So Unholy will kind of be the... I think if you are a guild that's pushing and wants to you know, pass and do well and all of that jazz, your DKs are probably going to be unholy. I think it's not going to be too dissimilar to Wrath in that regard. That being said, Frost is by no means a wheelchair. Uh, a good Frost, a uh, seasoned Frost, will do fine. Um, you will definitely give them a run for your money, and a good Frost will outpace a crap unholy by a mile. Um, it's not going to be, I think, like Warrior, where you look at uh, a DK and go, why are you frost? You should be unholy. Whereas with a warrior, you would be like, why are you fury? You should be arms. Um, the difference in the output isn't that big, but certainly as things go on and in AOE scenarios, unholy is going to be the king. Cool. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like that was a good breakdown. I know what it's like now to be on the receiving end of me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna send it to you scotty i had something lined up there but uh i completely forgot about it but somebody mentioned uh unknown bud mentioned unholy frenzy so yeah i, I put it on like screen still a thing okay yeah it looks like that's still a thing from what yeah I yeah tell. it is it is um at the minute it, in wrath it's a blood dk talent um and it basically just makes the the the, the receiving the recipients go a bit nuts. You would generally use it on, um, I think, because at the minute, I think it does physical damage, whereas in Catherine, it does like uh, haste. So at the minute, you chuck it on like a feral or something, and they would just piss off. Like you wouldn't have a chance of keeping up with them. But Unholy Frenzy um, in Unholy is going to be huge. Now, chances are, because it's melee and ranged haste, I imagine they're going to be dropping it on themselves. Um, but in the event that they are told otherwise by their raid leaders, uh, this would work for anyone. Like, if you stuck that on, say, I don't know, a fire mage or an elemental shaman at the start of a fight, probably going to annihilate everyone it, for it'll a good be, it'll chunk be, of time. It'll be ranged as in hunter, won't it? Not, not as in caster. So, I, I could tell Scotty had something to say there by the card. You're right. I, I misread it. Yeah. As, as soon as you said that, Garrett, like... Scotty flipped his card from hand to hand. I was like, oh, Scotty has <laughs> oh, a different shit. take. He's I can't wait to, to hear what Scotty says about this. <laughs> yeah, no, like no. I said, it's like, you've left me to last when I'm hanging out of my ass. <laughs> and it's like, ranged. Okay, yes, wizards. Yes, you are right. Um, I did fuck about with that two days ago. So but, I should yeah. know that. But, um, yeah, it's, but yeah. it, you know, it, it like, uh, uh, unholy, like, it, it, if I just talk about personal experience now, like, again, DK it is, uh, well, it's one of those classes that I've, I've never really been a fan of DK, to be honest. Um, but, like, blood DK, ridiculous. Like, absolutely ridiculous. And, yeah. uh, and the thing that makes them ridiculous is their mastery. Because it's not like... When you think about the other masteries where there's some luck involved, like critical block for a warrior. Oh, am I going to roll a critical block? That's going to reduce the damage by the next attack. Um, you know, savage defense for, for a, a, a feral tank. 
am I going to crit that's going to give me a savage defense and it's going to increase it more? Um, Like a paladin, just increasing your block chance, just flat. You know, all of it's got some RNG involved. A blood DK is like, it's going to increase the amount you heal. And not only that, so you've got guaranteed. You've got guaranteed Def defensive mechanic straight away it's like i'm gonna blood sh uh, i'm i'm gonna yeah I'm, I'm gonna blood blood fucking uh death strike and it's gonna heal me but also i'm then gonna get a massive fucking shield from it anyway so it's not like you don't need to time it where you're like oh i'm only gonna death strike when i really need healing it's like no i'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna keep death striking and stack that fucking shield up you know i i've seen blood dk's solo tank things that you just should not be able to solo tank. You know, in, in gear that you shouldn't be able to solo tank them. I, I'm, mm. I, I mean, like, I, I, honestly, it, like, well, Shannox is a, is a prime example in, uh, in Firelands. You know, we had Lee literally solo tanking with no tank swaps, taking all of the bleed stacks, and he was on 100% health the entire time. Like, a Balrock... You, you've got like a blood DK out healing your holy paladins. Uh, like it, it's it's bonkers. Uh, Frost, I gotta be honest. Like everything you said, like I, I love Frost. I've always been a, a Frost enjoyer out of all of the specs as DK. Um, not necessarily in Cata, but you know, in the first season of, um, it was Syndragosa was the name of the server. It might have been a white main server actually. Uh, I was a Frost DK all the way through Wrath uh, and, and absolutely loved it. But Unholy in 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 Kata, I think, is going to be pretty fucking vile. I, I, yeah. I genuinely think they're just going to be... They're going to be S tier. If we want to talk tier list, I think oh, Unholy yeah. DK are going to be... They're, they're going to be S tier, certainly for the first like, phase. Okay. Yeah, I have no doubt about that whatsoever. And Holy is going to trump Frost, but as I was saying with the Warrior, Frost isn't going to be as far behind Unholy as Fury is for Arms, oh, for example. Oh, uh, absolutely. Still... Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. and that's the thing. That's why I, I'm perfectly happy to go, right, I've just, well, I have just recruited a new DK for the guild, and I've gone, right, you're Unholy, I'm staying Frost, because Frost is my darling spec. I love Frost. Um, but when we were going into into cat into wrath sorry i made it very clear to to my reader and gm i was like i'm playing frost if you say play unholy i will throw a brick at you i'm not doing it um but if for reasons that be um they turned around and went yeah no we need you to play unholy tonight i'll be like fine watch me eat everyone's bastard souls i am going to be a god among men and yeah, Unholy is really going to fucking hurt. And again, especially in those AoE situations, because it's it's the only DPS DK spec that has the AoE potential. Um, because Frost just doesn't. It is, I can spread diseases, I can chuck out some stray howling blasts. At the end of the day, that's generally pretty piss poor cleave. Like, it, it isn't that strong. And well, unless the ads are non elites and just very small and clumped together. But unholy, you just fucking D and D and spread all your diseases and blood boil and all of that malarkey. They are gonna run away with everyone. I think, you know, a good unholy DK and a good arms warrior um are gonna be the things you see battling the top of the melee. Yeah, um, I, 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 chuck, I, I, I chuck a rogue in there as well, but I'm, I, I definitely yeah, think it's going to be uh, up until Firelands when people start getting staffs uh, uh, or staves. I think it's going to be a very melee, melee centric uh, damage meter in most cases. But we'll just before we move on to Breast, uh, like I personally just want to touch on a few things. So, like the the real big playstyle difference for uh, for the specs. So. Uh, like blood don't change that much you're you're maintaining diseases yeah you know, you're, you're you're death striking fucking as much as you can just to heal and get lots do, of do you lots have the same absorbs. cooldowns for like defensives uh well you, you've yeah, got one extra still, which carrot already covered yeah you've got vampiric blood still you've got ibf you've got um icebound fortune and you've got um magic shield but you've also got bone shield 
um, which will keep up, which is just beautiful. Um, and yeah, just a little barrier reduces that. Imagine a shaman shield, but made of bone. That's yeah, like kind of shield. That, yeah. And you, um, and you lost, that, that, that's and you lost Mark it. for Blood, which is like neither in or there. Yeah, you don't really notice that at all. And yeah, like I said, the, the, the general gist of Blood is the same, but you just have more buttons. So you aren't going to be feeling like, well, what do I press now? You maintain diseases, but I do get bored with the, just the icy touch, plague strike, and just wait for rune strike to come up so I can hit it. When you've got things like Blood Strike, uh, Heart Strike, sorry um there as well it just fills that gap it's very small but it fills that gap of something to press and it makes the spec feel much better it's overpowered as fuck yes like uh mentioned to the mastery it's that absorb is insane but to play the heart strike just makes it feel better by filling in a gap of something to press because the rotation always felt a bit lackluster without it yep uh, and I'd say Frost, actually, in the grand scheme of things, outside of the dot management, don't change enough for us to spend no, any more all... time on. Um, but no, un... genuinely, it, it is the same spec. Uh, yeah, but unholy. So, like, uh, the dark transformation is a, is a big one. Like, and this is where you, like, you Huge. see that it's, it's not up, and then when it is up, you just watch the DK's damage just climb disgusting amounts. Do, do you want to do, do it, Carrot? Well, basically, Unholy DK is what Beastmaster Hunter should be. Um, you funnel all of this energy into, the, into your ghoul. Um, so, yeah, he's mentioned Dark Transformation. What that is, it's a talent that when you get five charges of Shadow Infusion, which is a talent you get just above Dark Infusion, click it, your ghoul transforms into a big, angry mess. And it hurts. It is brutal. It upgrades all of its abilities... But, I mean, it just annihilates. Like, there, there's no two ways about it. You make your ghoul big and angry, and it's going to do a lot of damage. And the good thing is, you can keep this up quite often. Um, because to generate those stacks, you need to use it. You use Death Coil, which is the unholy spender. So you'll be building runic power with um, Scourge Strike and, you know, your other disease strikes to keep them going. Festering Strike as well. But you will basically be spamming Death Coil on cooldown, more or less, in between everything else. And you can get free procs on it. Yeah, Sudden Doom, I think it's called. Uh, where I... Uh, yeah, I think it's Sudden Doom. Where you just get a free, free Death Coil. Which means you are going to be generating these stacks so often that your ghoul needs to be empowered as often as possible. And if it isn't, you're going to be at a loss all the time. You need your ghoul to be constantly angry and mean. And um, it's late, but my brain isn't working, and I cannot remember for the life of me if you can generate stacks while it's already empowered. I don't think you can. No, the I thing is, so. I've been playing it. I've been. I don't think you can, but I've been playing it on the beta, and half of the DK doesn't buddy work on the beta. So I again yeah, don't think you can. But either way, even if you can't, it doesn't matter. The second that thing comes out of Dark Transformation, you're going to be generating the stacks again. And then you'll be using Dark Transformation again. It, it's amazing. Um, whereas in, in Wrath at the minute, your, your whole thing is around making sure your gargoyle hits like a tanker um, for, for that brief window. In Kata, it's about making sure your ghoul is doing your damage for you throughout the duration of a fight instead. It makes... Unholy much more consistent. Now, you've still got your gargoyle and your haste, and there will be a degree of snapshotting um, to, to make all that nasty, but the spec isn't as reliant on that burst window to be good. You can still go through a fight and be decent. You're not going to fall off the face of the planet as hard as Unholies do at the minute. Um, so in my guild, our Unholy DK at the minute starts a fight, and makes me look like a massive pansy. But as the fight goes on, he drops so hard that I've overtaken him. And we might finish around a similar stage, but I've been doing that damage consistently. He did really well for like the first 20 seconds and then falls off, and that's the weakness of Unholy. In a situation where fights die, you know, boss dies in 30 seconds, Unholy is unbeatable. 
Um, but on longer form fights and fights that require a bit more than just stand and hit, Unholy really suffers. But in Kata, it really isn't the case. And because you're using two-handers and Scourge Strike, I don't know, it just feels much more put together. Um, like, all the abilities make sense. Once you, like, make your DK and you log on, put your talent points in, and you start working out what they do, everything just falls into place quite nicely. You're not going to need a manual to work this out. It's like, okay, Scourge Strike does is the bulk of my builder damage. Uh, my diseases, I can refresh them with Festering Strike. Cool. Oh, I've got a shit of runic power. Spend it. Done. And then upgrade the ghoul and off you go. Like, it is quite an easy, like, two-step process to get from A to B. Okay, so, uh, uh, guys. No, 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 no. I appreciate it. I want you to. I want you to. Um, I was laughing at Ghost's face, like, mainly because it's quite a funny-looking face. Um, we do this time to time. Yeah, yeah, we just look at each other and we just smile. Uh, like, there's people in chat that have just joined. I don't think there'd be people in chat joining at this time. So, um, what was the first class we started with? I think we should actually just go back to the beginning um, and we'll... Shaman, I think. Shaman. Yeah, so Shaman let, and then let, Rogue. Uh, right, okay, so let's start with Shaman again. Um, I need to get their masteries off again. Uh, no. Uh, you 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 wanted to talk about something and you haven't spoke about it yet, Carrot. You wanted to talk about dark stimulacrum. Dark stimulacrum. Stimulacrum. Yeah. Where, oh where, where it's called? Uh, I don't speak English. I'm from oh. I'm from Essex. <laughs> Do you know what? I hadn't noticed. Um, yeah. So <laughs> dark stimulacrum is a beautiful, beautiful spell. Um, this expansion. So it's it's the level eighty five spell. This this expansion for this for this class. Basically, what it does is, on an enemy that uses mana, if you pop that on as they're casting a spell, and they cast that spell, you can then cast that spell as a one-time use. So, um, it requires a bit of savvy to use, but if you're in a raid or a dungeon, and there's a mob with a very nasty hard-hitting ability, and you try, right, simulacrum, you get it, and you can store it if you want, or you can just throw it in their face. But, yeah, it's just... It's a nice little spell steal of sorts. It's spell steal on steroids. It, it's not something you're going to be using every fight all of the time. Because if it's a melee or physical boss, yeah, it's got no use really. But if there's a caster boss or the boss has got ads that do some nasty shit, suddenly it's a DK, you can go, Aha, I'm going to be awkward, nick that from you, and just blow up your friend. And I love that. It just... I miss Dark Simulacrum. It is honestly a darling of a spell. I mean, I mean the, the PvP any... potential there is huge, go. That as well. That, that's but there are some limitations yeah. in PvP. No, P PvE, are there any trash like mobs that you can bring right up to a boss fight and kind of like let them live? And then it's like, okay, we're about to pull the boss. Let me use my Dark Simulacrum <laughs> and Did you have a stroke? steal... I just yeah, that's, like weird, like, that's like three <laughs> syllables, dude. Simula that's four syllables. Uh, I can only get past simulacrum. Two. Simulacrum, yeah. So, is, hey. are, are there anything like that in the like, just say the first phase of Cataclysm, where it's like, yeah, we want to pull this mob to the boss, let it kind of live, and let our DKs use dark simulacrum to steal an ability from it to have a benefit for a boss fight. I can't think of anything specifically, but... Well, then it's a shit ability, like, fuck Death Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Move on! I, I, just can't, I, I just can't think of the trash before the bosses. I tend to no, you're fine, block you're out fine. trash. Um, but yeah, in theory, that's what you could do, is just have something with a, a theoretical murder pyroblast that one-shots tanks. Nick that, keep, keep hold of it, walk up to the next boss, and just blow it at the start and just go right there you go chunk of damage done already already no, right. that, that, one shot that'll, block, that'll, that'll be, that'll be removed on warcraft logs anyway don't worry <laughs> don't start trying to get clever when you get clever and you start yeah. doing things that make sense like that gets removed from logs so it's pointless um but yeah it's just a nice little spell i like it so are we are we, are we happy with dk's have you got anything else you want to cover as I say, I, I've mostly left DK to you because there, yeah, there, there was a couple of things I threw in there, but I think overall, yeah, Blood DK, fucking insane. Frost DK, 
Eh, Carrot will play it. Unholy DK. Fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, Crofty K. Gives the spec, Carrot plays. That's the only tagline it needs. <laughs> yeah. Um... But yeah, no, Frost is untouched. Apart apart from the uh, dot management aspect, it is untouched, which I will admit does make the the class a whole lot worse. Um, but blood, you say insane, unholy, probably going to be one of the things you see at the top of the meters, uh, particularly on AOE fights. They are going to hurt, and a good DK that can manage his pets and his stacks is going to pants a lot of people. Like yeah, do not be surprised if unholy is up there as one of the big boys. So, Carrot, I would assume uh, it's reduced to uh, an acronym of DS. So does DS change your bar? Like, you press DS, and then all of a sudden that keybind gets replaced with the ability that it, hit, it has stolen? Is that Death Strike yes. you're talking how, how about? That work? Uh, dark Simulacrum, <laughs> Scotty. Thank you for making me say it. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, right. Well, it does do that, um, but it is finicky to use. So if you drop uh, the simulacrum on a mob before it casts a spell and it dies, you've lost it. So you don't get the spell they were casting and it's on cooldown. Um, it, there is a bit of skill to it in knowing when to use it. Because I was in a dungeon the other day and I was trying to use it on almost every mob I could. Just like, right, I want to fucking test simulacrum. Um, but the fucking things just die too fast. And yeah, it's a git, basically. But once you capture the spell, as it were, uh, your bar changes, it will show you what the spell does, and then you just use it. I believe the spell is instant cast when you use it. At least it was when I used it on the beta. It should be. Um, it's it, it's almost like, like yeah, you're storing it and reflecting it. Yeah, it, it I'm, fa yeah, I'm fairly it, sure. Pretty much it is. As a, as a non-DK enjoyer, I think it is. Steps. Yeah. Yeah, it is just spell with extra steps. Um, again, there's a lot about the DK that doesn't work on the beta right now. So a lot of what I'm saying is a fair degree of memory because some of the big issues of DK is, uh, funny enough, the runes. And a lot of talents and spec passives pertaining to runes just don't work. Like for Frost, Blood of the North, which permanently converts your blood runes to death runes, which are Swiss Army knife runes, doesn't work. So Frost frequently finds itself resource starved but in a world where that works um yeah that ground like if you like dk uh frost dk in particular in wrath you'll like it in kata if you like blood in wrath you'll love it in kata and if you like how unholy plays in wrath you probably won't like it in kata but mm. if you don't like how unholy plays in wrath you're probably gonna love it in kata Yo, Yo wants really? to move on so bad. I'm looking at his face and he's like, no, I don't oh, want to just, move on. Okay, oh, oh, okay. Can, we can, well, let's do another we, 45 we minutes on DK then. No, we, we, no, we no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I've had no. my five minutes. No, what, what we need to do next, you. what we need to do I, next is wait, go, uh, you can go, you can go, because I, I want to go and get a drink. So I just want to put this out here now. If you want to decide what class we do next, you need to super chat which class we're going to do next, because we've only got one left. So I want to see loads of super chats while I go and get a drink. Same priest, because because uh, there's no others to do. So if you want to have your say and you want to make sure priest is next, little super chat, one dollar fifty cents, like what, what, whatever you can do, and say priest. And then if it happens to be priest next, we'll do priest next. And now I'm gonna get a drink. So if it happens to be paladin, we'll be here until Thursday. Uh, I'm impressed by Carrot because I've gotten up to use the restroom once. Scotty's been up multiple times. I don't think Carrot's left his seat this whole time. We've been live. My we've, ass is in pain. Dude, we've been on for five plus hours, I think, at this point. So yeah, like, but, but good we, on you. But we heard you pissing under the desk, though. Yeah. <laughs> that I literally. A drink. No, you wasn't. You wasn't. You was unloading oh under the God. desk. We all heard it. <laughs> that wasn't We me. did hear it. <laughs> it, it wasn't me. I was just excited <laughs> about the topic we were talking about. <laughs> right. But okay. No. We've got, we got one class we, left, go. I don't remember what order we did it in. Uh, we've only, we we've only got three left. It was like Shaman, Hunter, it was Shaman Rogue, Rogue, Shaman Rogue, Pally, DK. Like, yeah, we, we've covered, covered everything. 
and Priest is the last one. And we're going to end with Shadow Priest because uh, somebody earlier was saying, hey, I got to go uh, walk my dog uh, in three counties over. I'll be back <laughs> in 45 minutes and we're going to respect that. So, yeah, Priest, <laughs> the last <laughs> The warlock again, yeah. Uh, yeah, priest Scotty has played priest. He was, uh, I'm not gonna, I don't want to make his head too big, but as a shadow priest in Olduar, that's when he switched from EU to NA, kind of. And when he joined our NA raid group as a shadow priest, he had no gear, but he got fed gear, and I was pissed that he got gear that I didn't get to get as a balance druid. And I was like, why are we giving this guy the loot? He just joined the raid. Like, this is a 10-man. I've worked my ass off since pre-patch. But Scotty gets the gear, but no, nah, he, he joined the raid. He pumped his ass off. Shadow Priest, to me, in Wrath, felt pretty strong on AoE, kind of decent here and there on single target fights. So uh we're, we're going to talk about the healing priest as well i'm sure but uh scotty do you want to lead us into the priest the yeah. last class to talk about the last class in i mean we labeled it correctly so no one can be bitching in the comments like oh my god guys this was meant to be a class picking guide the title is the longest class picking guide ever i don't think there is a class picking guide gonna be longer than this uh we're going for a world record um, the one thing I will say, go, is I didn't really appreciate the the actual intro into that from you. To be honest with you, uh, I think what, what, I think you could have done better. I said you pumped. <laughs> you, you no, pumped. not really. What, what do you it, want it, me to say? It didn't didn't really sound like you meant it though. <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, this guy. This guy meant, took. I meant it. This guy took all my gear and shadow. To be fair, Scott plays shadow, and yeah, I mean but on on pumped. AOE he done okay. <laughs> A single target. You were asking for innervate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> if you didn't ask for innervate and you were pumping, doing more damage than me on single target fights, like uh, what's that one that got nerfed? Uh, the big robot guy, like fourth. XT. Boss oh, XT. War. I always XT. needed your innervate. Yeah, I always yeah, needed your innervate. If you didn't ask for innervate on XT, that that still stuck with me. Yeah, I I, I, it, I couldn't I get like, through. Oh, Scotty. I couldn't get Shadow through XT without too. an innervate. No, it's a fact. Um. But to be fair, I did enjoy Shadow Priest, and yeah, like it, it, yeah, it was good. Um, and I've I've done a lot on a priest as both Shadow, Disc, Holy, Encata. Uh, this is actually one of like you're looking at it now. This is one of my favorite characters. Uh, my priest on Apollo, I I actually preferred if I'm honest, but no, we'll, we'll talk about this one. Um, oh man, priest, where do I start? Uh, like, uh, but before you start, I just want to address really quick if mm. it's okay with a uh, show in chat. They were asking, uh, where is it at? Hey, Scotty, are you guys making a video about Warrior Guide? And I personally know Scotty's edi editor that has been working on this video for, for seven at least, months, <laughs> at least three days. But yes, there there is a Warrior Top Ten changes like video coming tomorrow very soon should tomorrow, be tomorrow yeah. it should be tomorrow and yeah he, he has been editing it for i mean it does feel like a year actually but yeah it's probably only been a couple of weeks so yeah it's coming the top 10 dk all like all of the classes that miss him they're coming um and, and trust me like well well well, well researched you know there's uh, they'll, they'll be accurate so they're worth the wait hopefully but let's talk about priest, so I can go and eat breakfast priest. and go to bed, which is weird. That's the wrong order. You don't go and eat breakfast and then go <laughs> yeah. to bed. You normally wake up and then eat breakfast, but I'm doing it in reverse. Um, man, I don't actually know where to start. So, so priest, honestly, in in Kata is something special. And yeah, I know you're going to see like talents unspent and talent specs not like properly, but this is where I've been using this for video footage recently. Um, we'll start with disc. Disc is probably the one um, solid healer, like the, the staple healer that you're going to see in every group, like both 10 and 25, man. If, if you're raiding without a disc, it's going to be strange because, yeah, I mean, you get atonement. Like, atonement is, is the biggest deal. So a, a priest changes, and you're going to watch lots of people and lots of guides on YouTube 
where they've read historic content and think they they know priest and they'll be saying oh like if you like the priest healing style in wrath where you're spamming shields you can still do that in cata oh shit no you can't like just no no you can't like People tried to do it historically, and okay, you, you technically can spam shields, but like the whole point of spamming shields, as everybody who's ever played a this priest in Wrath knows, is because you can then proc Rapture from all of them and get all your mana back. That is not the case in Cata. You will only get the Rapture cost of one shield back. So like that that rules that out pretty much instantly, and then it's like, well, you, know, you can stack more in more spirit, and then be able to do more. No, 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 no. Like if you're a disc priest, you're playing atonement. Like trust me, and it is one of the most fun ways to play. Like so, when when you deal damage with smite or holy fire, you instantly heal a nearby low health friendly target within 15 yards from the enemy for a hundred percent of the damage. So it's only 15 yards, which you always need to bear in mind, and you still will be using Rapture. So Rapture, if you don't know, when Power Word Shield is done, it's got a 12-second cooldown, but when Power Word Shield is completely absorbed or dispelled, you're instantly energized with 7% of your total mana. So every 12 seconds, you still want one shield being absorbed, like, at all times, because, like, you're, you're, gonna, you're still going to be benefiting more from the, the mana that you get back from the Rapture than what you spend on the shield. Honestly, the rest of the time, you're keeping Holy Fire up and spamming a lot of smite. Uh, and on fights where a boss takes increased damage, or you get increased damage, or anything like that, so Halfus is a good example. As the ads start dying on Halfus, which is the first boss in Bastion of Twilight, he takes more damage. The more damage he takes, the more your smite does, the more it heals. The thing you need to be careful of is the 15 yards. Because... You're, you'll be spam healing and being like, why are these people not being topped up? But, you know, it's like mages, warlocks, boomies, whatever, and they're not still close enough. So, like, when you've got a disc priest, you need to almost be mindful of that as a, as a, as a caster or a healer or whatever. Just anyone who, who's ordinarily at range, you need to be mindful of that. Or if you're the priest, you need to be mindful of that. I would look and go, goes not 15 yards. You know, he's not within 15 yards. So he'll be the one. That will get my penance, for example. You know, you just need to understand that, yeah, you, you want to keep spamming smite because it's very efficient, but you also need to understand that you've only got 15 yards from the bus, uh, that, that, you know, that your people are going to get healed. Uh, but then you also get, and um, when I say you also get, this is going to be for Shadow as well and even Holy, uh, you're going to get Archangel. So this is like the, the, this is the big addition for Shadow. Actually, I, I find it far, far, far bigger for Shadow than, than Discipline. So uh, it consumes your evangelism effect, causing yeah, an effect depending on what, yeah, what type of evangelism effect you got. So uh, it'll either, as Archangel Evangelism, you're going to instantly restore 1% of your total mana and increase your healing done by 3% uh, each stack. And it lasts 18 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. Uh, or for Dark... Archangel, it's going to instantly restore 5% of your total mana and increase the damage done by your Mind Flay, Mind Spike, Mind Blast, Shadow Word Death. So your instant cast Shadow... Well, your, your direct damage, like non-dot non, non dot damage Shadow spells. Uh, and obviously, when, with two points in Evangelism, when you Smite, Holy Fire, Mind Flay, or Evangelism, it stacks up for, up to five times yeah, for 20 seconds. Uh, it either increases the damage done by your Smite, Holy Fire, and Penance. So... The more you're casting smite, the more you're healing with smite because it's doing more damage, but then you're going to consume that. Oh, and it reduces the mana cost. That's why it's so mana efficient. You're spamming smite. It's increasing the damage that your smite's doing, which is increasing the healing it's doing, but also reducing the mana cost that it's doing. Fuck off, go. Um... <clears throat> No, no, I was, I was giving you some visual, like, because we're we're gonna put this on audio as well. But it's gonna be on Spotify, Apple Music, all of those audio platforms for sure. So I was just giving something for the the visual crowd. Oh, that's it's great! Watching it's, on YouTube, it's, you're doing something amazing to job. Watch, you know? You're doing an amazing job. Usually, so please stop. You, you you give the little arm pump usually, but. That didn't really fit with what you were saying, so give I us had a to follow. Give it, I had, I had to give it the like the the cogwheel turn, you know, like yes, this is what we're getting. 
we're also getting this. We're getting this third thing. Can you stop now so I can carry on talking? I, yeah, I'm glad you just let me have five seconds there for a second. That yeah, well, you, you, you can have another five seconds in like 10 minutes. Now, just shh, be quiet. Um, okay, okay, yeah. So so the trade-off is you're, you're going to be losing all of that reduction in mana cost. Oh, man. You're going to be reducing, like losing the extra damage, the reduction in mana cost. I just won't look at him. Uh, and then you're, <laughs> you're, you're just going to be getting a chunk of mana back. So it's the trade-off. And the same when you're in Dark Evangelism. It's going to increase the damage done by your periodic damage spells. So while you're keeping it stacked, your dots are going to do more. But then when you consume it, you're going to get mana back, and now it's going to increase direct damage. So an example of how you'd use it... Oh, the example of how you'd use it if you was a Shadow Priest is you'd make sure all your dots are up to begin with, obviously. You're not going to Archangel and then know that you need to pop like like refresh dots you're going to make sure you've got max duration on dots then you're going to use it so while you're then mind blasting mind flaying all of that is building back up before you have to refresh your dots again um and the same way if you're going to pop it uh if you're if you're a healer you're obviously then that's going to be the time where you'll consume it and then start using like prayer of healing or something you know like you're, you're going to want to like really take the make the most out of that 15 percent healing that you're going to have and then 15%. I, w- I want to say it's 15%. Uh, yeah, 3% right. of stack. Yeah, 15%. And then that's when you're going to want to do like your, your more direct party healing. So like that's a, a really interesting ability to sit in a disc tree, but it don't really matter. Well, I mean, holy, not so much, but like shadow disc, you're, you're going to be using it. And, and that's obviously huge. Like it, it makes such a big difference. So as a disc priest now, instead of bubbling everyone, you're playing around being able to holy fire, smite spam, timing Archangel properly, knowing when AoE damage is about to come in so you can use Archangel and then start Prayer of prayer of Healing uh, and then start stacking it back up again for really mana-efficient smites. Um, you're also going to get Power Barrier, which is like literally one of the most yeah, fucking just strongest raid cooldowns in the game. Summons a holy barrier on the target location. It reduces all damage done to friendly targets by 25%. And it lasts 10 seconds. You stack anything where you need to stack up and take reduced damage. Think Chimeron. Think Nefarian. Any, any of these fights where you can guarantee that everybody's going to be stacked up. You pop a barrier down, boom, 24%, uh, 25% damage reduction. But the overall play style of a Disc Priest will just be completely foreign if you're a disc priest in in wrath because you'll be instantly wanting to bubble people and spam penance and like using smite you're like well why would i use smite but that is literally your most mana efficient heal and you're putting damage out and trust me as a disc priest you can do reasonable damage like genuinely like reasonable damage um holy is is very different like holy you're using chakras so you go from like a single target healing chakra a damage a dam- more damage orientated chakra which as a holy priest you will never use because there is literally no benefit to it whatsoever you know there's no atonement effect for a holy priest so going into the dps chakra is just like well now i'm gonna have to change chakra again at some point to go back to healing like absolutely pointless you've literally got two that you use Am I tank healing? If you're tank healing, you'll be in your tank healing chakra. chakra or am I AOE healing? In which play, uh, in which point, then you can put like an AOE healing ground effect down. Um, holy, I mean, man, I, I kind of see a place for it, but I've heard holy was good. Like I heard it was like holy and discs. Like it, it kind of didn't matter. But like, what's wrong with holy? Yeah, I, 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 I see a place for it, but I, I just I like I've I'd always take a disc over a holy. Like honestly. I, I I like I don't the whole purpose of this is not to put people off playing specs or say this spec's better than that. You know, I, I like I, I wanna be really open to everything, including obviously carrot playing frost, DK. Um <laughs> you, you know, like I'm very accepting of everything, but <laughs> Yeah, I, I've played both, and maybe it's a skill issue. Let's let's call it a skill issue. Like I, 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 I found holy far more mana intensive, 
less output. I'm not doing any damage. You know, like, I, I couldn't really justify me being holy when, as disc, I was actually making the boss die faster. No one was dying. I'm doing, like, like my mana was a lot more manageable. And then I go holy where it's like, okay, let's say I was doing 1k HPS more or something like that. Great, but where's the damage to the boss? You know, where's the big raid cooldown? Like, when we're stacked. You know, like, there's, there's none of that. All right, you've got Guardian Spirit. You can save someone. I'm not saying in certain circumstances we might find holy being particularly useful, like, uh, in a niche circumstance. But I don't, I don't see it as, like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's fun. Like, it's fun to play with the, the chakra swapping and being like, right, I can heal, you know, a, a big, heal, big single target heals, or I can AoE heal. Um, but it's just not got the, the overall raid benefits that a Disc Priest has got. As I say, in terms of damage brought to the boss, mana efficiency, power barrier. It's like if Guardian Spirit done something where it was more AoE based, you know, where it was a, like, you know, reducing damage, you put it on someone that reduces the damage from everyone around them or something, then, then you know, there could be an argument to be made. But it, it just, oh, and you haven't got PI, you know, either. Like, you, you're just, you're losing so much. And I don't feel like you're gaining anything. Uh, but Holy changes massively anyway. Like, if you, if you are like a, a fan of playing Holy Priest particularly, uh, then obviously play Holy Priest again. Don't let me put you off. But overall, it's not. It's outside of the fact that you're just you're using chakras to go between AOE and single target. You're still using circular healing. You're still using a lot of renews, you know. And your renews are doing instant heals and reducing the global cooldown. So you're putting lots of renews around. It, it, it's just not. Uh, I, I don't know. It's not for me. But I'm not so allowed for... to move on to shadow at the moment, am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Noth is back. Uh, Shadow is perfectly fine to cover. And with Shadow Priest, from what I've seen in Wrath, it was like they were hit or miss on single target, but AoE on trash packs is when I would see Shadow Priest shine. So does that change into Cataclysm where they have a little bit more single target DPS? Are they still kind of better off with AoE boss fights or trash packs? if uh, the tank can pull 10 plus mobs or how does shadow piece work um well shadow i, I was going to cover new abilities first but the, the the real big key difference for shadow is aoe is mindless so at the moment obviously in wrath you ideally want to be my mind searing the the mob on the highest health like you always yeah. go for the one on the highest health uh and then it's just going to go on for longer and you're not going to have to constantly refresh it uh, in Wrath, you can mind seer on the tank, you know, so you can literally just mind seer on the tank, and they can just run around, and you're just gonna fuck everything up that they they go near. It's not it's not like the strongest AOE. It's decent, you know. It, uh, yeah, obviously, the more there are, the the better it is. But it's still, yeah. I mean, you're not taking a shadow priest for their AOE damage because it is, it's okay at best. Like, honestly, it's okay at best. Uh, but uh, from, from a minor convenience. Wrath, like, Olduar in, uh, what was it, Vezex? The Vezex trash. It was me as a boomy, uh, Feral Druid, Table Slam, shout out Table Slam, with uh, Berserk up, and it was like a Shadow Priest. It was you and Gracious. Like, we were the ones pumping on the trash to Vezex, and that's just my memory of AoE damage and how it felt in Wrath. Uh, there were some trash packs in like ICC, but even still, that was kind of different. But it was like Shadow Priests were pumping. And even in ICC, I remember like Shadow Priests having their shine on a trash pack. But you are talking so trash packs where there's like like 20 plus mobs we're talking like yeah big big trash packs maybe maybe or, or, yeah. or, 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 or let's say 10 but like nothing mm, yeah nothing better nothing's gonna compare to a fire mage actually using you know combustion and then spreading that and the ignites and the pyros all to all of those like 
Fire Mage, like in terms of big AOE, like uh, uh, everything else is fair. Well, outside no. of Warriors, Blade Storm, everything's fairly insignificant. Combustion has a cooldown. Mind Seer. Yeah, Mind Seer don't have a cooldown. Pack after pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 I think. It's I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, com yeah. Compared to other AOE, like I wouldn't be like, yeah, we're taking a mage for AOE. Like I would say, no, uh, mage priest. We're not taking a priest for AOE. We're taking a priest for single target because their single target sustain is actually very good. Not, not. Uh, okay. I, it takes a while for them to ramp up. You know, as in, I don't see them being particularly strong in the first phase. I think it is gonna, you know, gonna take until sort of mid mid to end Firelands before it's like, man, priests are fucking pumping. And that's not just getting the legendary stuff. I just mean generally getting enough haste to be able to hit those haste breakpoints. And that's gonna be the same for any dot caster. You know, when you're reliant on on, on a decent amount of haste to hit breakpoints to get more more ticks, obviously it's gonna be more noticeable. Um but Shadow Priest and this might not go down well with any shadow priest in chat, but like I mean this in the nicest way possible. As as Goes already said, as someone who has spent a, a, a decent amount of time playing a shadow priest, uh, and this this character was a sh shadow priest the whole time I was raiding on it. Well, shadow disc, you know, either or. It's very much of the same. If you like shadow priest in Wrath, as in you like the way it plays in Wrath, you're not going to see a massive play style change in cat you're still maintaining your dots mind phase your filler you're using mind blast on cooldown uh the only difference is once all of your dots are up and refreshed and you're full stacked um uh, as in full stack with evangelism you're going to use archangel and then pump while you build the stacks back up ready to refresh your dots yeah, you're gonna have you know like homunculi type things from from <laughs> class uh, sod running into the uh, boss. Those suckers haunt my nightmares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's exactly why I wanted to say homunculi because I just wanted to bring sod into the cat podcast. Um, but uh, honestly, I I have played a lot. Like I'm down playing a bit. I've played a lot of Shadow Priest in in Wrath and Cata, and I really don't feel like there's much of a difference in play style it's it's archangel is it that is literally the the, the change where you have to think are all my dots up yeah oh, i got five stacks of evangelism cool i'm gonna pop archangel and then you just carry on like everything else is exactly the same the only thing that we've not mentioned all night actually this is a big one i don't know why it's taken me this long to actually think about this is the way you manage dots because dot, dot, like how you manage dots has changed massively in Kata. Um, and that's the only thing you'll notice. Well, we didn't cover affliction in, in massive amounts of detail. So that's why when I'm thinking about Shadow Priest and my rotation and what changed, um, you know, you don't wait till a dot falls off to refresh it anymore. You you want to carry over the last tick. So instead of like you trying to time it so as vt vampiric touch falls off i should say the full words for non-priests um as vampiric touch is going to fall off you'll vampiric touch again to put it up nearly nearly at the same time as it falls off now you don't want to do that you want to put it on between the penultimate tick and the ultimate tick you want to put it on in between and then that last tick will carry over so it will turn your 13 second dot into a 15 second dot that's kind of the only thing that you're gonna to have to get used to outside of your archangel usage is don't be scared to clip dots you're like you're meant to clip dots it's perfectly fine to clip dots uh because they just change how the dot system works in general um and and understanding your haste breakpoints and knowing like not stacking haste because haste is the best stat like no it, it might not be it depends on the levels of haste that you can actually achieve if you if you if you can't get to a haste break point and you're stacking haste past the previous break point you're literally you could have put those into crit you could have put it into like whatever mastery 
I'd say that's an overview of, of, of all the specs. Uh, and while I'm on a roll and you two are more or less falling asleep, uh, I might as well cover... I, I feel like I should cover the, the best ability ever introduced to the game. And we left it till last. We left it till the last class to talk about the best ability ever added to World of Warcraft. It was perfect. It was almost like we planned it that way. Yeah, although the stream controlled it with their super chats. So, leap of faith. Oh, here we go. Uh, is that the one where the priest can grab somebody from the raid group? Life grip. Life grip. Sure? Yeah. Life grip? Okay. I was like, wait, it wasn't leap of faith. Like, that sounds like a priest jumping somewhere. But uh, now that you said the other term for it, when a priest can grip somebody to them, yeah, that, that was that was a cool thing, kind of. Best ability ever added to the game, honestly. <laughs> Be, being able to watch someone clearly just holding their W key and running forward and then positioning yourself next to a ledge and then life gripping them and watching them run off to their death. Nothing is better than that. I don't care. If that's not enough to make everyone want to play Priest, I can't sell it to you any better. Because honestly, you do not understand how rewarding it feels. Forget topping damage meters, healing meters, being a 99 passer. Forget all that shit. There's nothing better than life gripping your friend and watching them walk off of a ledge to their death. Like, honestly. Life grip spec, yeah. It is the best thing in the world. And I absolutely love it. And Jay's done it to me on, on the beta. Um, and it's it, it's only for the fact that I spent 90% of my time my AFK while I'm on the beta. That, that it's not killed me yet. But like he life grips me. And I'm like, oh, hello. I forgot about that. Uh, but it is, it's it's fantastic. But it is, it's got its uses. Like to actually use for PvE purposes outside of killing people, obviously. Um, but we don't care about those because... Like, that's not why you go priest. You don't go priest to use Leap of Faith to help people. You go priest to Leap of Faith your friends into lava. I know it's big for PvP. Like, one of your melee is getting, like, stun locked or something, and then as soon as the stun goes off, you can grip them out of that stun lock away from the 3v3 team. Like, I, PvP wise, I know it's huge, but PvP or PvE wise, it sounds like it's just. A, a grief mechanic so how can you use it in a pve scenario for it to actually benefit your raid and oh, not it, grief it, somebody if your tank save the shitters well yeah, we'll save the shitters but it also if your tank was uh like immobilized or stunned or something and he's got something wailing on him yeah. you know you you buy him a lot of time by life gripping him to you the boss has now got to run to you while he he stun wears off and then he runs it back in position, th th there is actually good uses of it. Um, but again, it's one, it's a bit like smoke bomb. When I spoke about smoke bomb er earlier, it's one of those where it has no notoriously been a grief mechanic. I look forward to seeing what we do in classic. Like on private servers, you don't use it for jack shit, but you know for a fact we're gonna see like one guild that have done nothing but sit on the PTR like raid testing firelands over and over and over again and someone will use fire uh, with someone will use life grip in a way that will all go fucking hell that was good that's the tactic let's get that on the raid <laughs> assignment sheet right so who's on first life grip you know it's gonna happen yeah could you do that could you like stack threat into your tank and just chain life grip the tank around the perimeter of a, a boss room and but it's got it's got a hefty it's got a hefty cool it's got, go a hefty, the tank. it's got a hefty cooldown but i mean yeah <laughs> yeah but like what's what's the range if you had like say two priests 40 yards. and one 40 yards. one priest is way well, yeah, up one priest is 40 yards from the the tank and another priest is lined up 40 yards from that other priest and then all of a sudden you have 80 yards of like movement from the boss where none of the damage from the boss is going to matter because it's going to be out of range of the tank the whole time yeah i mean it might be a good enrage save yeah an enrage save exactly i mean i'm sure we will see it get used in creative ways trust me but yeah uh, like off the top of me i i couldn't tell you a single time where we've gone right you leap of faith during this you know because you know, we all talk about playing on private servers, but like it never, it never gets to to that 
like that extent you know where it's like if we clear the content cool is the content harder than it will be on classic yeah cool but that it, it don't get to the nitty gritty where how we min max the the shit out of every boss where it's like right let's one tank one heal this and let's have i don't know we need five bks for this this to be able to get 99 so you know it don't get to that but i do think we will see again leap of faith and smoke bomb mark my words they look like you know they look like they'll be useless in pve but i guarantee in you know eight eight nine weeks whatever it's going to be when we're, we're we're raiding blackwing descent and bastion of twilight i bet we're using them in ways that we wouldn't have even thought about during this podcast that's how open-minded i am now you know yeah, I, I thought yeah. i knew it i thought i knew it all i played all them tbc private servers and then before tbc came out i thought i knew everything and then tbc came out I, and i, I saw what we was doing everything. in things no 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 honestly i i am so much more like i can't wait to see you know rather than like nah, nah that's that's shit that's shit nah, we're gonna do nothing with that you know that was what i was like during tbc because i've done private service i thought i knew it all whereas now i'm like ah mate like fuck me there was things we done in nax that i wouldn't have dreamt of, uh, you know dreamt of doing on on private servers and that was nax you know with dog shit difficulty where nothing mattered so no, I do. Yeah. I look at things, and I'm a little bit more like oh, this is going to be exciting. Um, in in terms of other priest stuff, uh, like uh, uh, another cool one is uh, like mind spike. So actually having some really good single target nuke without worrying about dots. So when you mind spike, obviously it's going to do just instant shadow damage. It's not like this is going to be a rotation. Although in later tier, in a later tier. There is a rotation where you uh, you're a dotless shadow priest, and all you use is mind spark, mind spike, and mind blast. Whether that will be a thing again, we'll see. Um, but mind spike also increases the critical strike chance of your next mind blast on a target by thirty percent. Stacks three times. Um, it should also reduce the cast time, so it ends up being instant cast. But I'm not in shadow at the moment, so maybe that's a talent. Um, but essentially, you just go like mind, mind spike, mind spike, mind spike, mind blast, rinse and repeat. I just just keep going over and over again. Uh, but it's a nice way on ads where at the moment as a shadow priest, if you mind blast on cooldown, uh, oh, there's nothing you can do. And shadow word death is your way of getting mana back as well. By the way, uh, so shadow word death. Um, again, I think I need to be in shadow specs to see exactly what it does, or do I just need to show you the talent? Uh, I, I can I can read the talent. Uh, word of dark binding that inflicts some shadow damage to the target deals Mas three times as much damage as uh, to targets below twenty five percent health. And then if the target is not killed, the caster takes damage equal to the damage inflicted by the target. Yeah, but it's masochism. So when you take a damage and attack e okay. equal to or greater than ten percent of your total health or damage for yourself. Your shadow word death, yeah, from your shadow word death, you instantly get five percent total mana, but and then it ends up being ten percent mana. So yeah, like where, when you're using it as a non-execute, it's your way of getting mana back as a shadow priest. As I say, normally I'm in shadow and disc, but I, that's why I've got holy with so many un, unspent talent points. I clearly went on here to like get footage for a video for whatever I was doing at the time. Um, if I go to holy, it will be all shadow glyphs. Yeah, mind flay, shadow word death, shadow word pain, like. Um, but yeah, I don't think I missed anything for priest that that's overly important. I was no, it all sounds there. Yeah, you know, I was scrolling through, and everything kind of looks the same. They still have fear word, ward. They have mana burn. They have their shadow fiend. They have palm. They have like prayer of mending. They've got a divine him is still there. But a lot of these in, uh, in a, in a new will abilities that we've. I forgot inner will. There, there inner was will. one. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, speaking of inner will, there's a lot of these uh, new abilities that we've touched on tonight that are only level eighty plus. So, you might not see these in the pre patch. It's you're gonna have to wait until you've leveled up to eighty five, and inner will is eighty three. So, uh, a, a lot of stuff for each of these specs is brand new that you haven't seen before. 
and you have to unlock after the pre-patch after cataclysm launches <laughs> can you imagine mentioning that mentioning that five hours and 47 minutes in <laughs> have we been Everybody going at launch it's nearly <laughs> it's nearly <laughs> six o'clock in There's... the morning <laughs> oh yeah no the sun is starting to rise it's gone blue outside <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody watches God. the full vod everybody's what do you mean people just like tune in and just leave no everybody watches the whole show everybody that watches the vod watches the whole vod what do you what do you mean Every, I mean, everybody knows what I just said right there. But we did just cover all specs in one sitting. And I, and I feel like we actually went into more detail than I wanted to. And, and there will be people I'm in the sure. comments that are like, you didn't mention this uh, about certain specs. I mean, it was meant to be an overview uh, of each spec. It was never meant to go into this much detail like uh, on, on any of them. And we may have gone into more detail on, on, on some more than others, but but like, quite honestly, I feel like we kind of went above and beyond. I, I don't think we missed a single new ability for any classes. The only way we could have dragged this out for another three hours is if we did look at glyphs for all of them. But that's why I didn't want to do that because, of course, that 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 would have that would have made it go a bit longer. I can't wait to have breakfast and go to bed. Yeah, yeah, that that's gonna be fucking grand. My yeah. bed's over there. It's calling to me. Yeah, we wouldn't know because you you've got the background blurred out because of all the pornography you've got. <laughs> yeah, you know the um the racks and the whips and the dildos and all that bollocks. <laughs> uh, the doll on the bed. <laughs> well, I mean, all, all all I all I really want to do is thank everyone for the, the super chats and even the people that have, have joined as a member tonight as well. Like amazing. I I, I think there was one or maybe two. Um, which you should all absolutely do now. Like everybody watching, you should all just join as a member. One ninety nine. Why not? What have you got to lose other than one ninety nine? Yeah, I, I didn't really think about that before I finished. Uh, so go anything, carrot anything. Like I, I, I honestly feel like that was quite a overly long, extensive class picking guide, and it's only five hours long. I'll, I'll let carrot go first, and then I'll follow well, up with carrot. I think we've learned that putting you and me in the same, I'd say, room, but general area, talking about this shit is a recipe for a long fucking evening. I loved every minute uh, of it, mate. i got to be honest. I thought it was great. Uh, yeah. I'll, it was a giggle. I'll give you that. I'll say it. I think Scotty changes his accent. I, I talked about pandering earlier with you, Carrot, but I think Scotty's accent changes a little bit with you around. I think he kind of picks up on whatever kind of accent that you have. I, I, I shouldn't have this accent by right. I'm from the West Country. I should sound like a fucking hobbit, but I don't. I mean, you, you sound like James, James Ancaster at the end there, though, but I don't. I just heard James Ancaster. And he's from Kettering. <laughs> uh, yeah, my accent does all sorts. Some things I sound like a right ponce, and then others I sound a bit more normal, and others I, occasionally I've gone northern. Basically, my accent ain't got a fucking clue. Um, <laughs> I have no idea but, what he's trying to do. <laughs> yeah, it can't make up his mind. I should sound like a hobbit. I sound like everything else. That's That's the... The thing with me and my accent. Well, now we've got to the bottom of your accent. Can we round this out so I can go and eat? I mean, this is this has been a, an epic class picking guide, though. So all I'm going to say is thank you guys for watching. Like, I I, I, I take my hat off. I'm not going to because like hair. Um, but to anyone who actually watched you, all you of have it, hair. No, I'm bald. Yeah, that's there, impressive. There, there's not hair under there, Scotty. Like, no. Everybody says you're bald. I, I mean, there's hair. I'm bald. That's why I'm not taking it off because lack of hair. That's exactly what I said. He's uh, got like two, hmm. and they can't agree which direction to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but if anybody did watch from start to finish, uh, and th this is in, oh, I, I, let's do it. We've got to do it before we go. If you're watching the VOD, and you watch from start to finish, you have to say that Go smells. No, I, we've done that. that. That's an old gag, Scotty. We have to come up with something new. We have to, because maybe they watched a different file. They got it mixed up with which video they were watching. So instead of saying Go smells, what we really have to say is I've got a huge carrot. Or what about Country Road? <laughs> Country Rose, take me home. 
Because apparently <laughs> that's all I know about you. I was literally in the car with Laura the other day. Um, and I was like, no, it was today on the way back from her sister's. And, and like obviously there's the motorway route or the country roads route. I was like, I'm going to go country roads on the way home because like the traffic's a nightmare. And she went, that's a song, isn't it? I was like, yes, yeah, goes song. She went, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, what, country yeah, roads? What do you mean? West Virginia? I'm not in West Virginia. Are you in Virginia? I'm in Virginia. Oh, but yeah. how, how fucking close I'm do you want me to get? Virginia. Oh, uh, oh, it's, it's oh. a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Well, where where am I go? At least I know roughly where you are. Where am I? Uh, Don't say England. That's not going to count. <laughs> no, it starts with an L. You used to un uh, intentionally Lincolnshire think, put it in your. Uh, no, I didn't unintentionally. Yeah. No, no, I always put it there. Oh, yeah, but intentionally. Uh, but you can either yeah. you can either tag your location or put hashtags. I realised mm. you can only do one or the other, and then was like, I don't really know what one's for the best, so I'll just make it up and see what happens. I'm going, man. I need to eat carrot. You've been a legend. Same. Go. You've been Thanks here. Thanks for having me again. I feel like Go's uh, moments are shiny. Done really well in the in the boomy I'm part, trying. though. You've done well in the I'm boomy trying. part. So uh, I'm gonna post. Carrots YouTube, check him out. He had a video posted today earlier. It's, I guess, I say today, but it's probably been twenty hours since almost twenty four hours ago. Yes, yeah, a lot of a lot of beta talk, uh, which is great, which is fantastic, which I completely agreed with. Uh, the criticism of Blizzard and their lack of communication and lack of uh, updating stuff in the beta. But a huge knowledge of Cataclysm and what we should expect from there. So uh, I'll send this link to you too, Scotty, but I'm going to post it in the chat here really quick for I'm how going for a to piss. check out to how to <laughs> check out Carrot. Don't check out my Carrot. Only my wife's allowed there to see go. that. There. Oh, oh, check out his plums. We're, we're checking out Carrot's <laughs> plums. <laughs> Come they're, fondle me plums. They're blue. He's an Alliance player. It makes sense to have blue plums. <laughs> blue faction. <laughs> no, uh, Carrot, it was great to have you back on. And yeah, like Scotty said, I'm sure we'll have you back on. And uh, one more time before we go, uh, what should people expect if they go to the what is it called the 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 magic carrot i'm sorry the mighty carrot yeah the, the i I, I can't name shit for shit apparently but um mostly cat crap at the minute uh beta focus because there's a lot of that and i'm trying to get a lot of stuff done on the beta um but yeah that classic and if anything interesting happens elsewhere i'm sure i'll cover that at some point but mainly just yeah cat classic and hopefully beyond um because season of discovery is essentially akin to poison to me at this stage so you're not going to see much of that i'm afraid and we we don't have to worry about seeing any retail garbage over there right no i might make a comparison once in a while but other than i tend to keep retail locked away in some hey like sloth from the goonies that that's basically how i treat retail now locked locked away in some distant cavern that only some weird fat child can find amusing. Me? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure. Um, everyone in chat, legends, we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. We'll see you today. We'll see you later. We'll see you later for the second part of the <laughs> Paladin team dive. Three time. hours from yeah, now. <laughs> literally, literally, we'll see you later. Like, it's so bad when I think about it like that. Uh, a podcast is meant to be weekly, and we've done like six this week. Um, we ain't finished yet. We've got, we've got to carry on later. <laughs> yeah. uh, so peace out, guys. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're still live, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give it a minute. Oh, cause sometimes, well, sometimes <laughs> it's a little bit behind, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it a minute, and then mm. like we'll just mumble away and go, oh, that was, that was good, wasn't it? That was hot. So oh, I enjoyed I that. I can't shit talk that bloke earlier that you tried to bring up, Scotty. I, I, I can't 